And we're going to come back on the air. This is James Spann with Taylor Sorello. We're live in the ABC 3340 Weather Center. We have a tornado warning in effect now for northern Winston County. Uh, there's also a warning up here in Lawrence County. That's in the Huntsville television market. We'll focus on the warning for Winston. And you can see the possible tornadic circulation is now about uh, four or five miles southeast of Haleyville. Haleyville, you are not at risk from this tornado. It's southeast of you, and this will be passing north of U.S. Highway 278. So Double Springs, you are not in this polygon. It does include the community of Ash Ridge right here. And again, uh, this will be for areas north of U.S. Highway 278. That's Alabama 33 that runs from Double Springs uh, up to uh, Moulton here. And obviously, we encourage no travel along any of these highways north of Double Springs. So this is a fairly small part of Winston County. This does not include Haleyville. Uh, Haleyville, you're not at risk here. Uh, this does not include Double Springs. It does not include Smith Lake. This is for the far northern part of Winston County. So, uh, and uh, Taylor, let's see, the warning is in effect until? It is in effect until nine. Okay, nine o'clock this morning. And this is going to be a day where within this long line of storms, we could see these tornadic circulations. And again, there's evidence that debris is being lofted now within this uh, potential tornado that is southeast of Haleyville. Uh, so again, if you're north of Double Springs in Winston County, anywhere north of U.S. 278, U.S. 278 is that main east-west highway through Winston County, we want you to be in a safe place. And these are some of the approximate arrival times and again, you see Addison listed here in that uh, fan, but the Addison really is not in the polygon. These are some of the communities that are. And if you're in any of these places, that's the approximate arrival time as this will be moving pretty rapidly to the northeast. And again, we much like the event we had a couple of weeks ago where we had the, the brief tornadic circulations, it's going to be the same kind of thing today. These are not going to last for a long time, but still, it, it, and I say this all the time, Every tornado is dangerous. It doesn't matter if it's a uh, an EF zero or one of the huge EF fives. They're all dangerous and just be very weather aware today. And we could see other warnings like this. Now, this is the only warning for our television market. I understand that a lot of you are getting maybe some small hail, tremendous amounts of rain, thunder and lightning. But this is the one warning, the one warning we have in effect for our market. So we're focusing on this in just a few minutes. We'll show you the big view, but I want to again make it perfectly clear. We have evidence that a tornado is down right now uh, in the uh, northwestern part of Winston County. And that tornadic circulation is moving towards the northeast, and this will be staying north of US 278. So again, if you're in Double Springs, downtown Double Springs, around the Winston County Courthouse, the school, you're not in the polygon. It's for areas north of Double Springs, okay? And again, uh, the, the object here is to be out of cars and out of mobile homes. The two worst possible places you can be would be a car or a trailer in a situation like this. And if you live in a mobile home, hopefully you, you have a nearby shelter. If not, just go to a fast food joint, a, a gas station, some place that's open that will give you a shelter uh, from this uh, particular thunderstorm, uh, this particular tornadic circulation. And again, obviously no cars. And if you live in a site built home, we want you in a small room on the lowest floor near the center and uh, away from windows. Uh, that would be the preference in a situation like this. Uh, uh, and again, uh, as this uh, uh, tornadic circulation continues, it's going to be uh, moving generally uh, to the northeast in a pretty rapid clip. And we've got debris being lofted. We're just going to keep this TDS on. There's a lot of products we can show you here, but whenever we can see debris being lofted, that means that we've got a tornado down here. And, and the debris probably in this case would be tree limbs and branches and things like that. But in some cases, when you've got structural damage, you might wind up with boards and bricks and glass and nails and things like that. So a TDS, a tornado debris signature, is located uh, just off to the uh, uh, south east of Haleyville. And again, I want to stress here that we do not have uh, Haleyville in this polygon. There, there's no danger to Haleyville. Haleyville is over here, and this is well past you. Now, it, and understand, for a lot of people up here, you got rain and thunder and lightning. We're focusing on the tornadic danger here. And again, in Double Springs, the same thing. Downtown Double Springs, you are not in this polygon. This will be passing north of U.S. Highway 278. And that's the uh, uh, key message here today. So, uh, and again, this is going to be a fast-moving 
line of storms. It's going to be mainly a morning, early afternoon type event. For most of you, this will be over uh, by probably uh, early afternoon. Uh, some of the storms could linger in East Alabama, uh, possibly through uh, mid-afternoon, around 3 o'clock or so. But I think by 4 or 5 o'clock, all of this stuff is going to be into uh, Georgia. So we're focusing on the northern part of Winston County. Uh, if you're just joining us here, we have a tornadic circulation. There's a tornado warning in effect now for that part of Winston County. And again, this is for areas north of U.S. Highway 278. This thing's about to cross Alabama Highway 195 right here. Uh, that is the road that runs out of Double Springs, running up into Franklin County, up to Russellville. So obviously nobody should be traveling along uh, Alabama Highway 195 at this point north of Double Springs, and nobody should be driving along Alabama Highway 33, uh, which is running north out of Double Springs. And again, uh, you can see clearly that TDS is down near the community of Ashridge. And again, uh, Ashridge is about eight miles north, northwest of Double Springs, and that's in the process of uh, uh, crossing over uh, uh, roughly Alabama Highway 195 right now. This is Highway 195 here, runs out of Double Springs back up toward Ashridge. And again, this is Alabama Highway 33 right here that runs from Double Springs back up toward Moulton. Uh, so nobody should be along Alabama Highway 195, Alabama Highway 33 uh, until this passes. And again, we have debris that is being lofted. So again, uh, this is a confirmed tornado that is currently down and uh, we encourage everybody to stay sheltered. So Taylor, any reports of damage from your end. I've I'll been check monitoring. Social here. Haven't seen anything yet on social media. I'm looking at our Slack chat with all of our sky watchers and also uh, monitoring the NWS chat. Um, it, it does sound like I don't have any details, but of course we have debris being lofted and it sounds like there might be some damage reports that are going to start to be coming in here pretty soon. And I've got one report of damage okay. on uh, County Road 471 in Winston County. And again, I don't know if that's directly related to this possible tornado. Oh my goodness, look at that debris ball. Yeah, th this is a, a very dangerous storm, a uh, very dangerous storm. So again, uh, the, the situation is this. We have a uh, uh, what is a very well-defined debris signature along Alabama 195, about uh, five miles north of Double Springs. At the, the core of the Ash Ridge community is right here. And again, that's about to cross over Alabama Highway 33. This is a very, very dangerous storm here, very dangerous. You've got to be sheltered. And again, the danger from this tornado, it's north of US 278, north of Double Springs. And again, nobody should be driving along Highway 33. And again, this is going to be coming up into the uh, north eastern part of Winston County. The community of Moreland is right here. Uh, so again, uh, everybody north of Double Springs, you've got to be sheltered. Take this really, really seriously. This is a dangerous storm. Again, we've had some uh, reports of damage coming in already, and a lot of folks are getting hail. Most all the, the videos I'm seeing are from hail, and again, we'll show some of that later. But again, the core threat, it's the tornado right here. And again, uh, uh, you've got these communities up here, and again, Moreland, uh, which is located right here up in the uh, north far northern part of Winston County. Uh, this is passing north of Smith Lake. This is, again, Haleyville. This is way east of you. There's no danger for you. This is north of Double Springs. There's no danger for you. If you're down toward Natural Bridge, this is far, far north of you. This, again, this is for the uh, far northern part of, of Winston County. Lynn, this does not affect you. <clears throat> but again, a very, very dangerous, well-defined TDS, a tornado debris signature. This is debris that's being lofted. And again, uh, that's uh, what you do not want to see on radar. So this is a confirmed tornado uh, because of the TDS on uh, radar. We're getting some reports of uh, damage in already as we speak. And again, this has been going through a fairly sparsely populated part, but the debris on radar is up to 8,000 feet now. Uh, and the Weather Service in Birmingham getting reports of uh, damage as well. Uh, so again, uh, uh, debris being lofted now to about 8,000 feet on radar, which is very significant. We probably have, when you start to see that lowering of the correlation coefficient, that probably means we could have some uh, structural damage. We could see parts of buildings being lofted at this point. <clears throat> but again, uh, we have a tornadic circulation that's on Alabama Highway 33. This is, again, 33 is the road between Double Springs and Moulton. This is about five, six, seven miles north of downtown Double Springs. And uh, again, next up, it'll be coming up toward the community of Moreland. Let's pop on the velocity real quick, Taylor, and see what that looks like. And again, I, I had a funny feeling that might be the case. It looks like the tornado could be in the process of dissipating. Uh, and, and again, 
It looked really, really good a few minutes ago, but I, I think we're going to have this during the course of the day today. These circulations pop up. They look really good, and then they're going to go away after 5, 10, 15 minutes, and I think that's going to be the pattern we'll see today. So again, the circulation really starting to broaden out here, uh, again, north of Double Springs, and I stress this is not the Rock Creek west of Birmingham and western Jefferson. This is the Rock Creek in Winston County, north of Double Springs. Uh, so again, We've got broad circulation here, and, and it could be that the tornado is dissipating, which is the best possible case. But there is no doubt this was on the ground and produced probably some significant damage in through here in this part of Winston County near the community of Ash Ridge or close to that. Uh, in fact, we can back it up, and again, you can see the velocities really uh, max out right in through here. Watch these velocities and the couplet coming through, and then once it crosses over uh, Highway uh, 157 over toward 33, it weakens a good bit. So the tornadic circulation uh, seems to have weakened at this point. Uh, but again, the Weather Service in Birmingham, they're indicating they're going to keep the warning going in case it ramps back up. And these are, sometimes are cyclic where you'll have this occlusion process and the tornado goes away and then it uh, reorganizes and it develops again. So the Weather Service is going to keep this. That What they're going to do is watch for the next several volume scans. But clearly at this point, we do not have evidence of a tornado. We did five minutes ago, ten minutes ago, but at this point we don't. We have broad circulation now that is east of Alabama Highway 33. Uh, and again, uh, this is, let, let's look at a big picture, Taylor, since the tornadic circulation's kind of dissipated. This is the big picture. And again, you can see that we have that band of storms across the northwestern part of the state, running from Winston County, from Alar Lamar County, Vernon, Sullivan, into parts of Marion and Fayette counties, uh, Winfield, Ewan, uh, Hubbardville, then back up into Winston County, then back up into the Tennessee Valley. And again, we stress that if you're in some place like Winfield or Ewan, or Sullivan or Vernon, the weather's horrible. Uh, it's pouring rain, you've got thunder, lightning, it's gusty winds, you've probably got some hail falling, but the, the storms are not severe. Remember, our severe definition, one inch diameter hail or larger, that's the size of a quarter, or 58 mile per hour winds or greater. And there's no evidence of that anywhere in this batch. The only warning we have in effect for our market, it's this warning right here. And let's bump it up a little bit to the Tennessee Valley. Wanted to show what's happening up here. This is the warning that's in effect for parts of Lawrence, Morgan, and Limestone counties. And again, this is in the Huntsville television market. Let's pop on the velocity real quick while we're looking at this same view. And we'll just kind of see. This is a, both of these are pretty broad circulations at this point. The northern circulation and the southern circulation, they're relatively broad. Uh, this circulation came pretty close to Moulton. This is now east of Moulton. That's moving in the general direction of Decatur. Athens is here. This is Limestone County, and this is Morgan County. Uh, but again, that's a pretty broad look right there. I, I wouldn't say that's a classic tornado signature, but still, remember, respect the polygons. So if you're in a polygon, you still respect that because these can come and they go. And what the Weather Service, what they don't want to do is just cancel a warning, then reissue it and cancel it and reissue it if these things are cycling today, if they're cyclic. Uh, but again, both of these circulate, the circulation in Winston County is gone. Uh, I'll just say there is, at this moment, there is no tornado down in Winston County. The one that was down earlier has lifted. But the Weather Service, they're going to keep this warning in effect for a little longer to see if it tries to come back. And uh, up here in the Tennessee Valley, kind of the same thing for the circulation here in the uh, eastern part of Lawrence County. Uh, that'll be coming up toward, uh, uh, again, Decatur and the Tennessee River here shortly. That's pretty broad, and we'll see if that can ultimately tighten up again. So it's 824, and again, this is going to be a morning, midday type event. This is not going to be some all-nighter. Once this line of storms passes, that's it. It's basically going to be a one and done. Um, but uh, again, we're getting multiple reports from the community of, uh, of Del Mar uh, that a tornado has hit there in uh, Winston County, or at least there is significant damage. And again, uh, uh, we're kind of watching some of the reports coming out of there. And uh, for those that don't know, uh, uh, Del Mar is between Natural Bridge and Haleyville. That's on uh, Highway 13. And that would be at about the time the warning uh, was issued by the Weather Service. And again, that, that's going to be the deal. These um, tornadoes are going to get down really quick. 
But again, multiple reports of damage coming in from Del Mar, which is south of Haleyville and the community near the community of Ash Ridge. And we all know that the tornado was down. We saw the debris being lofted. Uh, we're getting some reports of uh, uh, entrapment as well uh, with people perhaps trapped in homes. But typically when that happens, that's because of falling trees. Uh, we don't know specifically of uh, any uh, injuries uh, from any of these uh, tornadoes that we've seen so far today in the state. Uh, but again, uh, we have uh, potential for uh, structural damage in Winston County with this storm. This is the tornado watch, by the way, and you can see the counties in yellow. This is until 1 o'clock this afternoon. This includes uh, Anniston, Gadsden, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, basically the northern half of the state. So let's go back to our uh, Winston County storm, and the tornado has dissipated uh, at this point. Uh, which is uh, a, a good thing. Uh, but again, we all know that uh, we certainly have had uh, uh, some uh, tornado damage up and through here. Uh, if we can take WEX 05, I don't know who's punching the back in the back today, but from time to time, we're going to be showing some uh, viewer video. Uh, thank you, Vic. Let's take it, if we can, uh, WEX 05. This is what it looked like uh, coming through Haleyville. And again, you can see hail falling, and the tornadic circulation was south of Haleyville in Winston County. Uh, there's no damage in Haleyville. There was no uh, tornado uh, activity there, but this is uh, an example of some of the hail that has been falling in many places across the state today. So let's go back to the uh, radar. It's 827, and we still have a tornado warning in effect for Winston County, but the tornadic circulation has dissipated. At this moment, there is no tornado, but we still want people to stay sheltered if you're in this polygon. And this is for a small part of Winston County that is north of US 278. US 278 is right here. Double Springs over to Addison. Uh, and again, that's your polygon right here, a relatively small part of northern Winston County. But uh, Taylor, if we could put the, uh, let's back it up. I want to show the uh, debris signature again uh, with this as it came through. Uh, Winston County. So we might want to, if we can back this up a little bit. And again, uh, some of the, the first reports of damage are coming in from right here around the community of Del Mar. Uh, this is where we started to see the damage reports and watch the debris right here being lofted. And again, there's Del Mar right here. We had tornado damage here and now the debris is being lofted and you can see it coming right over uh, uh, areas north of Double Springs. And uh, again, ultimately it dissipates. So clearly we've got uh, damage in this broad zone right in through here from Del Mar back over to Ash Ridge. And uh, again, at the moment, we don't have any sign of any tornado activity uh, that has pretty much ended. So uh, there's a look at the velocity. And again, uh, that's the tornado. Again, it came through Del Mar right here and it'll come right through Ash Ridge, which is located right here along 157. And then uh, it dissipates really before it gets to uh, Alabama Highway 33. And at this point, we have no evidence of a tornado here, just a very broad, weak circulation. Uh, but uh, the Weather Service will keep this. Any reports on your end, Taylor? Uh, seeing kind of the same thing that you've been saying, reports in the Del Mar community of damage coming in along uh, 471 is where I've seen uh, those damage reports coming from. Haven't seen any photo evidence or anything like that yet but we do know there was a tornado on the ground of course it takes some time after this tornado moves through everybody's kind of trying to collect themselves and figure out what's going on and as soon as we get more photos or uh, videos we'll be sharing those with you all on the air but what you do need to know is that yes we did have a tornado touchdown and this is going to be a day where we've got this line moving through and we could see more tornado warnings before the day is over that's why we do have that tornado watch in place through 1 p.m. And there are a lot of locations that are dealing with strong thunderstorms at this point. And worth noting, there is now a severe thunderstorm warning that includes a very small part of northern Coleman County uh, that is going to be near South Vinemont, uh, also near Central Centerville in uh, Coleman County. That is for this thunderstorm as it keeps moving eastward. Uh, so the National Weather Service is extending this as a severe thunderstorm warning because that rotation has weakened. So it's not showing current evidence of a tornado, <coughs> but just know you're going to get some strong winds and you're also going to get the potential for some hail. We've seen some reports of hail with these storms so far this morning.
Heavy rain falling now, but this is going to be a fairly quick moving system, so we're not anticipating flooding to be too much of an issue today. Uh, once this line moves through your location, you're done. We're not going to get multiple rounds of storms or anything like that. This is one line of thunderstorms that's going to move through and likely be moving out of our part of the state by the afternoon hours. Uh, but I did just want to show you here, Lamar County, you've got strong winds, very heavy rain, likely some small hail with this as well, a lot of lightning, some thunder, but this is below severe limits. You don't have a severe thunderstorm warning at this point. You have uh, just a really strong thunderstorm moving through your area. And the reason we're on the air is because we did have that tornado warning for Winston County, evidence that a tornado did touch down at one point. The rotation within that thunderstorm has weakened significantly and it is going to be continued as a severe thunderstorm warning uh, as it keeps on moving northeastward. But this is going to be a day where we're going to be here watching the radar all throughout the day, uh, just making sure that we can monitor any kind of circulations that might show up within this strong line of thunderstorms. And it's a day where we're not going to have long track tornadoes. These are going to be rain wrapped tornadoes within this line. And it's going to be a day where sometimes, you know, you're not going to get as much lead time as maybe you would like with these warnings because they can happen really quickly when we have a linear storm mode like this, when we have these circulations developing within that bigger line of storms. Uh, so overall right now, uh, we're still watching as well some stronger storms in Mississippi. Uh, this storm just across the border is severe warning, not a tornado warning, but it is a severe thunderstorm warning, and that's going to keep moving northeastward at about 45 miles per hour, and that will eventually put this storm into parts of Pickens County and Greene County. Uh, so everybody's going to get some thunderstorms today. Oh, by the we'll way, they're canceling that warning. Okay, Taylor. good. That's that's good news. That means that yeah, that I want you to draw that X on that map. All right, I will draw <laughs> when, the X. When you draw that X, it makes everybody happy. So uh, I just wanted to, the reason we want people to know quickly is that you, you can now resume your activities. So again, the tornado warning has been canceled for Winston County. There's no tornadic circulation there. The Weather Service waited for a little bit to see if it would come back, and it's gone. Uh, but uh, again, we're getting multiple reports of very significant damage in Winston County in the broad zone from Del Mar, which is south of Haleyville, to Ash Ridge. We've had reports of entrapment, uh, people that are trapped in their homes. Typically, when that happens, it's because of fallen trees. But again, uh, uh, we're just getting many reports from very reliable, credible sources that there's very significant damage from that tornado in the northern part of Winston County. And again, it's in this zone right in through here uh, from near Del Mar back up to about Ash Ridge. This is all north of 278 and uh, south of Haleyville, kind of in that broad zone between Haleyville and uh, Double Springs. And uh, we have a crew that is on the way to that area right now. And again, uh, as soon as we get additional information or photos, we'll, we'll pass that on uh, to you. Uh, and again, so many reports are summing in quickly. And again, what we do, we kind of process things on the fly. We try and pass along what we think is credible. But as soon as we get additional credible information on the tornado that's come through Winston County, we'll let you know. So again, on the reset here, let me just say we have no active warnings for any part of our area except for a small part of Cullman County. So uh, the, the, what's coming through uh, Winston right now and Southern Marion and Fayette and Lamar and Pickens. Uh, under, I understand you've got some small hail and the winds are really strong. The winds are strong today even away from storms, thunder and lightning and heavy rain. But again, there's no evidence of a tornado. There's no evidence of hail greater than one inch in diameter. There's no evidence of winds 58 miles per hour or greater. That's our severe criteria. But let's look at uh, Northern Cullman real quick here, Taylor, just to show uh, the warnings we have in effect uh, up here. And again, this is a, a warning that affects a small part of northern Cullman. And this is not a tornado warning. There's no tornado here, but there's a good chance hail is falling. In fact, I can pretty much tell you hail is falling here in this storm that's located near West Point. That's Highway 157. You got battleground in West Point here, and uh, that'll be going pretty much very close to the school at West Point. Not a tornado, but hail. And again, that uh, hail shaft will likely be crossing I-65 and US-31, probably a tad north of uh, Vinemont or near Vinemont in the next 15 minutes. Uh, in, in Coleman, yes, I understand you've got small hail right now, but this is the warning polygon here. And this is the warning from Morgan and Northern Coleman. There's no warning in effect for the city of Coleman, but again, uh, small hail, yes. Uh, gusty winds, yes. Heavy rain, yes. The weather is not good, uh, but the uh, warning is up here for the northern part of Coleman County back into parts of Morgan County. 
So the, the plan for those logistically in the building here, we're going to stay with this for just a little longer to see if we have any additional tornado warnings. And we'll probably plan on going back to regular programming since we don't have any tornado warnings for our market in the vicinity of 845 in about 10 minutes. We're going to give it about 10 minutes. Uh, and again, let's go up north. I wanted to show the tornado warning in effect because a lot of people are watching us online. And uh, again, we're in the new digital world. Uh, it really doesn't matter where you are. You can watch us anywhere. And you can see we have a tornado warning in effect now for parts of uh, Morgan, parts of Limestone, and parts of Madison counties up here in the Tennessee Valley. This is for a possible tornadic circulation near Decatur. And it's fairly broad. Uh, it's not the most classic signature that we've seen today. Uh, but still, as a course of least regret, the Weather Service in Birmingham or in Huntsville believes a, a warning is uh, required here. And uh, you can see that this tornadic circulation is going to be crossing Interstate 65 south of Athens and north of Priceville. Uh, the Tennessee River Bridge is right here along I-65. Uh, so again, the object here is not to be driving on either US-31 or I-65 until this circulation passes. And that's going to take about uh, 15 minutes to do that. So if you're listening to us or watching us, if you know anybody that happens to be driving, we would advise no driving along Interstate 65 uh, from uh, Athens down to Priceville for about the next 15 minutes. And the tornado warning extends over to the town of Madison here. This is uh, US 72. This is Interstate 565. And the warning polygon does include most all of I-65 right up to the Space and Rocket Center, which is right here. This is downtown Huntsville here. So again, this is in the Tennessee Valley. Uh, but just be aware there's a tornado warning in effect now for parts of Limestone, Morgan, and Madison counties for that storm that is moving in the general direction uh, the town of Madison. And again, it's a fairly broad circulation. Okay, there's a, the latest volume scan. And again, you can see it's pretty broad here. That's not really your classic tornadic signature, but respect the polygon. And if you're in it, you need to stay sheltered. And we have had tornado damage today in Winston County. So these storms, I, I like to tell people the first storms of the day in an event like this will talk to you. They'll tell you a story. And since we've already had some tornado damage, You've still got to take these seriously. But again, clearly the rotation is quite broad north of Decatur, but that broad rotation about to cross over Highway 31 and I-65. So let's go back to the uh, big picture, if we can. Um, and uh, this is kind of where we stand. Uh, uh, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Gadsden, these storms should be along Interstate 59 probably by 10 o'clock or so this morning in about 90 minutes, and uh, this is what you'll deal with. And again, if you're in Lamar or Fayette or Marion or Winston at the moment, we have no evidence of a tornado, no evidence of damaging straight line winds. There is some small hail, yes. Uh, gusty winds, yes. But uh, again, there are no warnings in effect for this line segment here. Uh, the only part of our television market in any kind of a warning, it's the extreme northern part of Cullman County for that line segment there. But the tornado warnings currently are up in the Tennessee Valley. And even there, they're fairly uh, broad uh, at this point. Uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, kind of confirming what we've been telling you earlier. This is coming from the Weather Service in Birmingham. They're reporting uh, tornado damage. This is from the 911 call center in Winston County at 807 uh, at Del Mar, which is south of Haleyville. Reports of storm damage with people trapped uh, in that western part of Winston County. And again, this all happened again 807 about uh, 30 minutes ago. Um, and let's take a look at uh, Fayette County closely, Taylor, if we can. Let's look at the velocity. And we're, we're going to see these small embedded circulations today. And again, no evidence of a tornado at this point. Strong winds, yes. Tornado, no, uh, which is a good thing. And we have no tornado warnings in effect. But uh, I, I just want to say this um, um, about the, the way these tornadoes are going to be today. These are going to be short-lived tornadoes. They're going to get down. They'll stay down for 5, 10, 15 minutes, and they're gone. And providing a long lead time, it's almost impossible. And in some cases, there's no lead time. I mean, the tornado's got to start somewhere. And uh, again, so just be very weather aware today and stay plugged in with us this morning as the storms pass. And uh, 
uh, as the warnings are issued, we'll let you know here and we'll stay with the coverage here. We have tornado warnings in effect, but you've got to be weather aware even if there are no active warnings in effect because these things can drop out of these lines just like that. And they just don't last long. These tornadoes in a day like today, not long at all. You know, like a tick on a hot rock that they come and they go real quick. So you got to be very weather aware. So let's put the reflectivity back on. And again, just a, a big mass of rain and storms over parts of Fayette, Winston, northwestern Walker County, down into parts of Lamar and Pickens counties in West Alabama. And again, all of this will be coming through uh, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Anniston, Gadsden later this morning. Let's look at our tornado warning up here in the Tennessee Valley. And we should mention, that's a good point, we have a tornado warning now in effect for uh, eastern Mississippi. And that rotation could be entering West Alabama in either northern Sumter or southern Pickens here fairly soon. Uh, that uh, warning... Uh, looks like it popped up here fairly recently. That is, uh, let's see, that is going to be in effect for parts of Noxaby and Kemper counties in eastern Mississippi, and that's in effect until uh, 945 this morning. They issued that at uh, 838 just a couple of minutes ago. So uh, we're going to stay with this as long as we have that, uh, in that uh, if we see an extension, that could be a tornado warning required into parts of either Sumter or Pickens counties in West Alabama. That possible tornadic circulation is near Scuba. It's going to pass just north of Scuba, Mississippi. It's basically crossing uh, Highway 45 right now. It doesn't look overly impressive at this point in the Columbus, Mississippi uh, next rad. And, and again, it, I'll tell you, it's a frustrating day to work a warning desk. Anybody can work a day like April 27, 2011. Those were easy warnings. These are tough trying to pull a trigger on warnings. And if you warn every time there's a broad circulation, you'll have your false alarm ratio will be 95%. 95% of the warnings are false and you can't have that. Uh, so again, you're gonna just be aware that a tornado might get down today without a warning. And where the warnings are issued, these things probably will not be lasting especially long. But again, uh, that tornado warning in effect for parts of Noxaby and uh, Kemper counties in Mississippi, uh, we'll watch that carefully to see if it's extended over into either parts of Pickens or Sumter counties in West Alabama. And again, Taylor's uh, showing a, a, a potential track on this thing. It's about 22 Which, miles from Aliceville, so okay. it would be there in about 30 minutes. Okay. The, uh, this this warned storm. We'll see if it can hold together, but that would be an approximate arrival for the city of Aliceville. All right, and again, uh, I'm going to show some images here in just a uh, second. Looks like uh, there has been some damage up in uh, Decatur from this particular uh, storm up in the Tennessee Valley. In fact, uh, let's go to WEX 05 if we can real quick. And again, uh, this is uh, apparently uh, north of Decatur as that circulation came through. And again, you can see uh, debris in the road and it looks like there might be a vehicle that is overturned. And if I had to guess, that might be uh, US Highway 31. Again, uh, yeah, it looks like a truck has been overturned in the road. This is up in Morgan County, and this is where we have that uh, circulation up in the Tennessee Valley. Uh, warnings continue for parts of Morgan, Limestone, and Madison counties. And again, uh, this is an example of what uh, we can certainly have happened today. Uh, this is uh, from Moulton. This is from Lawrence County High School. That's the tornadic circulation that was coming through Lawrence County earlier today. And again, you can see off behind that tree line potential for a tornado. These are going to be really hard to see today. These are uh, rain wrapped and you just are not going to be able to see much. It's awfully frustrating. And this, by the way, I want to say was taken from uh, Double Springs looking back into the circulation near Ash Ridge in Winston County earlier today. But again, uh, <coughs> go back and show you what it looks like in, uh, in Decatur. Uh, up in uh, Morgan County, and, and this is what can happen uh, today along that line, uh, in that we can have these uh, tornadoes like that that come through, and again, the warning process is going to be a challenge today because these are going to be short-lived, and they get down and they go back up uh, pretty quickly. Um, but again, uh, that was uh, in Decatur, in uh, Morgan County, up in the Tennessee Valley. Uh, this uh, is at McPherson Oil, and the report uh, is from Jerry Jones, and he says, cars flipped and lines are down. So let's go back to the uh, radar. Again, uh, we're going to keep it here uh, in that uh, we have two warnings in effect now. This one 
uh, certainly is the more significant one, and that could be moving into West Alabama soon. So again, if you're in anywhere in this part of West Alabama, just be very weather aware this morning, and it, it's beginning to look like this system could be an overachiever and that it might outproduce its potentials. Based on what we've seen so far, we've had significant tornado damage in Winston County today in the broad area between Double Springs and Haleyville. Uh, Del Mar back over toward Ash Ridge. And again, as soon as we get more photos from that area, we'll pass that along. Uh, so again, we're going to keep this here as long as we have these tornado warnings in effect uh, near the Alabama Mississippi state line. But let's go to the Tennessee Valley real quick, Taylor. I want to show folks that are watching up here. And again, we're kind of bouncing back between multiple tornadic circulations today. We'll put on the high top radar and take a look at the circulation here and see if it's dissipated. Uh, uh, it probably, I can't say that it has. Again, uh, the circulation is right here, but we can give an all clear to I-65. So if you need to travel from, say, uh, Elkmont and the Tennessee state line down to Decatur on I-65 or US-31, we'll give you an all clear. Uh, but again, we've had uh, uh, some tornado damage near just north of Decatur, and that circulation is going to be crossing the line. This is Morgan County, and this is Madison County. Uh, this is I-65. The tornadic circulation is north of I-65, or not north of 565. Uh, 565 is the spur that runs into uh, downtown Huntsville from I-65. Tornadic circulation is going to be staying north of I-565, passing up here toward Capshaw, uh, the northern part of Madison, and that will likely take it up across the northern part of Madison County, north of Huntsville, if this thing stays intact. Uh, so again, that's the situation there. So Taylor, any word on the Mississippi uh, storms? Any reports of damage there? I'm not seeing any reports of damage yet, but that's a pretty strong indication of rotation that we're seeing. Uh, with that cell that looks like it's moving into eventually Sumter County. Now, the northern circulation, the original one that we were looking at, that would potentially be moving into parts of Pickens County and into Greene County, this circulation right here appears to be broadening out. It might be that that southern circulation is now becoming the more dominant circulation. I'm going to put back on the yeah, Columbus radar here. Is there still evidence of rotation? A little bit, but it's a, a definitely more broad. You can see this this circulation here is turning into the the more uh, the more dominant circulation and that's about 40 ish minutes from reaching the state line so we'll keep watching that uh, as it gets closer but for now that does appear to be a pretty strong indication of rotation kind of noisy we're looking so high up in the storm it's going to be hard to pick out a debris ball from that columbus radar but a strong indication that there could be definitely something going on, definitely very suspicious looking, at least in the velocity uh, here from the Columbus radar in that Mississippi storm. And it looks like they are continuing the uh, tornado warning for that storm as well. We'll see if it's extended into Alabama. Remember, this is about 40 minutes away, so we've got a lot of time to monitor the storm. And as we've seen with the tornado warnings so far today, these typically aren't lasting very long. These aren't staying on the ground for a really long time. These are the types of storms that often cycle. They'll spin up. You'll get a, maybe a tornado on the ground briefly, and then they dissipate and go away. So we'll have to monitor the trends on that. I can say with these latest uh, velocity scans on that northern circulation, that definitely looks to be broadening with that southern circulation taking over. Uh, but for the time being, the only warning we have within our viewing area, actually that was just Drop. So we no longer have a severe thunderstorm warning for Coleman County. We don't have any warnings at this point in our television viewing market. However, there are tornado warnings to our southwest. There are There is a tornado warning to our north in the Huntsville viewing area. And so we're watching this line of thunderstorms. It's going to slowly march eastward during the day today. And as it does... This is kind of the game we're going to be playing, watching these little circulations within that line, and then also monitoring for just broader severe thunderstorms. The chance of some strong winds with these. We've got some really strong winds a little bit higher up in the atmosphere, and so that gives it some energy for those to, that wind energy for these storms to pull down to the surface, especially since they're moving so quickly. So that is going to be something to watch as well, along with some heavy rain, not really a flooding threat for us, but there will be some heavy rain and then some small hail as well. We've already had quite a few reports of small hail in some of these thunderstorms. Here's some more reports coming in. Uh, and again, this is concerning the damage in Winston County earlier this morning. This happened between about uh, uh, 8.07 and 825 uh, from uh, volunteer fire person there, uh, uh, 
They report that many roads are blocked because of trees and they have multiple reports of injuries and entrapment. Again, this is in Winston County in that broad zone between uh, Haleyville and Double Springs. There's no damage in Haleyville that we know of. This was down toward Del Mar, which is south of Haleyville, over toward Ash Ridge, which is north of Double Springs. And again, this all happened within the hour uh, between about 8.05 and 8.30. Um, and uh, again, uh, front, Valerie Bell is on the way with Bill Castle to the damage up there. Uh, we have reports of roofs off houses. Um, reports of entrapment, some reports of injuries, power lines down, roads blocked with trees. And uh, again, it's very chaotic at this point. And obviously, the first concern is to get the people that might be injured, to get them to where they can be treated and uh, remove anybody from a house where there might be some entrapment going on. But again, this is up in uh, uh, Winston County. And a reminder that uh, uh, the, that storm meant business. And that's the reason we went on with this tornado warning for Winston earlier. But again, I want to stress that if you're in uh, right now Pickens, Fayette, Winston, Marion, Walker, uh, Cullman, the weather's not good at all. It's just rough. But there, there are no warnings in effect, no tornado warnings here. Uh, let's go up to the uh, Tennessee Valley real quick, uh, Taylor, and see if that is still up. And uh, yes, we still have a tornado warning. This is the one tornado warning for our state. And again, this is in effect for uh, parts of Limestone and Madison counties. And uh, let's look at the velocity. And this is really broadened out. Uh, that's not really a tornadic signature. And uh, again, I would assume that at this point, uh, uh, the Weather Service will probably not extend that over into northern uh, Madison. Just very broad uh, rotation here. And that did produce some damage at Decatur earlier. And uh, that uh, tornadic circulation was pretty close to Moulton uh, earlier uh, today. And in fact, we can. Let's go back to WEX 05 real quick. If you missed it, this is what this storm did. Uh, this is some of the damage near Decatur. Uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, you can see debris in the road and notice that uh, truck that has been overturned in the road. And apparently uh, that is from a, a small tornado that uh, was in the northern part of Decatur within the hour. All of this happened within the hour. And again, this was uh, a look at uh, that rotation from uh, Lawrence County High School in Moulton behind that tree line. And it's very possible a tornado was down. Lawrence County was under a tornado warning with that, obviously, as was Morgan. Uh, and again, uh, that was uh, captured uh, earlier this morning. And uh, this was taken uh, looking back toward Del Mar and Ash Ridge from uh, Double Springs. And again, you just can't see much. We're not going to be able to show you tornadoes today because they're rain wrapped. Uh, and in a situation like this, this is some video from uh, Haleyville. And again, you can see hail falling and we've had uh, no reports of any damage in Haleyville. The damage is about uh, six, seven miles south of Haleyville down toward Del Mar. Uh, and again, uh, hail has been uh, fairly prevalent today. The air aloft is very cold, a very dynamic system. The air aloft is cold. Uh, and again, we've uh, had that uh, hail falling from time to time within these storms. So let's go back and again, uh, uh, we're going to kind of hold it here until the top of the hour at nine o'clock and we will plan on going to talk of Alabama at nine unless a tornado warning is issued for parts of West Alabama. So let's go back and look at our uh, storms coming out of Mississippi. Uh, Taylor, we have uh, a couple of tornado warnings here. We'll pop the velocity on here. And uh, again, as Taylor's talked about the southern circulation is dominant and that's uh, you know, pretty significant right there. That looks like a uh, a uh, significant tornado could be down uh, near uh, DeKalb, Mississippi. Uh, and again, uh, uh, these storms today will be producing tornadoes that will likely be short-lived. Uh, but the uh, tornado warning is in effect here for parts of Newton, Kemper, Neshoba, and La Lauderdale counties in eastern Mississippi for this one here. And if it stays on that current track, it will likely move into northern Sumter County. This is U uh, Interstate 5920, York and Livingston down here, Alabama Highway 17 here going up to Aliceville. But again, this northern circulation, it's just pretty much gone away. I don't think there's any need for a warning into Alabama for that. But there could be a need for a warning for that circulation that is currently uh, southwest uh, of the Cab, Mississippi. And again, uh, you can see it's about 25 miles away from the state line. Uh, Taylor, any more uh, damage reports on your end over there? No, just seeing more and more coming in from the earlier storms that we had. 
uh, in parts of North Alabama, seeing reports coming in from Morgan County. We've been talking about Winston County. Um, sounds like we've got some trees down with some of these storms. Uh, so we have reports of some wind damage. Also, uh, looking at different, uh, so Morgan County again. So it looks like in North Alabama, in the Huntsville television market, there have been quite a few reports of some damage. And we had that one tornado warning early this morning across the line near Aberdeen in Mississippi. And I saw some, some photographs of some damage from that warned storm as well. So these have been putting down either tornadoes or strong enough winds to cause damage. So should you go under a warning today, take it seriously. These storms now have a history of producing damage across parts of North Alabama back into also Mississippi. And of course that tornado that we've already had touched down in our television market in Winston County near the city of near the community of Del Mar is where we had that for the time being looking over these storms. There's nothing of immediate concern. These are strong storms, but uh, we don't have any severe thunderstorm warnings for the time being in our television market or any tornado warnings. Next up is going to be these storms, though, that are going to be crossing over into Sumter County. That that storm is still showing very strong indications of rotation, um, and there could be a tornado on the ground in Mississippi with that storm, and we'll have to see if it holds together as it moves towards Sumter County. That would be our next area of concern. And then from there on, would eventually potentially be into Greene County, but these have been fairly short lived. So we're not looking at really long track tornadoes today. The couple tornadoes that we have had have touched down briefly, lifted and then dissipated. And that's going to be kind of uh, the, the case throughout the day today. Uh, so at this point, we are seeing uh, no immediate issues. Although, once again, it's raining heavily, there's a lot of thunder, we've got small hail being reported as well. And pretty soon here, as this line keeps moving east, we may be able to start uh, kind of removing some of our northwesternmost communities from that severe threat. Once this line moves through your location, you're done with the severe threat for the day. And I guess I should go back and just show that we do have a tornado watch. Uh, for those right, who are just let me tuning in. And for one logistical note here, Taylor, we're going to end our coverage since we have no active warnings in our market uh, here at, uh, and, and y'all count me down back in the back when it's time to, to hit the uh, break. We're going to have a quick break, go straight to Talk of Alabama at the top of the hour at 9 o'clock. Now, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we'll, uh, Taylor's going to be doing updates during Talk of Alabama, and if we have a tornado warning, we're we going to come. It looks like we are going to see a tornado warning here in a minute okay. issued. If that's the case, Sumter uh, and Green. Okay, guys, we have to hold it here. I'm sorry. Are we going to have to hold it here? We cannot go to talk of Alabama. Tornado warning is coming for Green and Sumter uh, in uh, West Alabama. So again, uh, we have to hold it here. The Weather Service is posting a tornado warning for parts of Green and Sumter counties in West Alabama. The, the uh, and again, we are on. Uh, National Weather Service chat with Weather Service offices. We have a Slack session with our sky watchers. We're watching a lot of communication information here, but the Weather Service in Birmingham is basically telling us don't go back to programming yet because we have a tornado warning that is about to be issued for parts of Sumter and Greene counties in West Alabama. Uh, so again, uh, that will prompt us to stay on the air here as we approach the nine o'clock hour. Um, and uh, again, uh, uh, the uh, um, we'll hit this warning in just a second. Again, we're seeing more reports of damage, uh, and I've had conflicting reports of injuries. I've heard from one paramedic that is working in Winston. This paramedic has not seen any injuries yet, and we hope that's the case. We've heard of other reports of injuries. It's always a little chaotic after something like this uh, happens. Um, uh, but again, uh, uh, while we're waiting on that, let's go up to the Tennessee Valley real quick. Uh, people are asking about Huntsville. A lot of people are watching us in Huntsville. And uh, once we get that warning for West Alabama, we'll show that. I don't but know let's why go. it's not showing up. It's, I've, I've seen it tweeted. Okay, here it goes. I think they're about to pop on that. Okay. I don't know why it's taking so long to get into our system. So we'll hold it here for just a second. Taylor's drawing the, the approximate polygon here. And th there it goes. Bingo. Boy, you're good. <laughs> I mean, you're good. Uh, so that's the uh, tornado warning polygon. So let's explain who's in and who's out. Uh, this will include Northern Sumter. Okay. And again, this is not including York or Livingston. Uh, Livingston is here. Campus of the University of West Alabama is here. This is York. This is for Northern Sumter. The town of Gainesville is here. Uh, Emel is right over here. 
Uh, so that is the northern part of Sumter County. This is the Tom Bigby River. This separates Sumter from Greene County, and this includes uh, Greene County, including the city of Utah. Utah, of course, is the county seat. They've had tornado issues here in recent months, and they know it very well. Uh, so again, we have a tornado warning in effect now for the northern part of Sumter and a pretty good chunk of Greene counties. And the warning butts right up to Tuscaloosa County. Tuscaloosa County is not involved in this, but uh, we'll see if this thing can hold together. So a tornado warning in effect now for parts of northern Sumter and a pretty good chunk of uh, Greene counties in, uh, in West Alabama. And because of that, we're going to have to hold it here. Uh, the warning is going to be in effect until 10 o'clock for about the next hour. All right, so that's the situation there. So, and again, this rotation is over in eastern Mississippi. It's going to be a little bit before it crosses the state line. There's going to be a long lead time for this. This is the tornadic circulation there, and that's nasty looking. That, that's a really dangerous looking tornadic circulation. And you can see it's about uh, 20 miles from the Alabama Mississippi state line. So it's going to take a little while for that to get in through here. So you got plenty of time. So one of the things that we try to do is give a little lead time. So if you live in a mobile home, you can go to a site built home. Uh, if you're in a car, you can adjust your travel schedule or get into a, a, a restaurant or some place that offers shelter. Uh, but again, a pretty dangerous storm is going to be crossing into parts of northern Sumter and Greene County. So let's go to the Tennessee Valley real quick. Taylor, I want to take a look at Huntsville real quick for our friends that are there. Uh, this uh, tornado warning has been canceled up here, and I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, the tornadic circulation has gone away. I just wanted to make that clear. A lot of people are sheltered up here. You you now have no tornado warnings in effect for the Tennessee Valley. These are severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for parts of Morgan, for parts of Madison County. Again, we've got two different uh, severe thunderstorm warning polygons here and for a small part of uh, northwestern Marshall County. So uh, no tornado warnings up in the Tennessee Valley. If you're in Huntsville or Madison County, the tornado warnings have gone away. The tornado circulations have gone away. Uh, so that's the good news. So let's go back to uh, West Alabama. And uh, while we're kind of waiting for that storm to arrive, uh, let's go to, let's see, tell you what, let's look at WEX 05 real quick. I wanted to show that there's been some damage to a uh, hospital in Aberdeen, Mississippi uh, earlier this morning. And again, uh, this is... Uh, some video that you will see right here, and apparently uh, we're not able to show that. Let's take a look at that. Uh, I tell you what, let's go back to uh, uh, the radar with me for just a second, Vic, if you can. Thank you. Um, we are here in that we have a tornado warning in effect for parts of Sumter and Greene counties in West Alabama. And uh, these are thunderstorms that... Uh, are typically going to produce some uh, short-lived tornadoes today, uh, but they have been very potent. We have damage in Winston County, and you can clearly see the reason for the warning here for this tornadic circulation south of DeKalb, Mississippi. This is US 45 uh, in Scuba, Mississippi, and again, that tornadic circulation will be crossing into Sumter County, Alabama. And again, we stress we do not have any uh, tornado warnings in effect for the southern part of Sumter County. So again, if you're down here at Livingston, UWA campus, uh, York, Cuba, Bellamy, Belmont, this is all north of you. Uh, and again, you've got uh, Geiger and Emel. These are the two communities on Highway 17. That's the main north-south highway that runs through uh, uh, the western part of uh, Sumter County. And obviously, you've got to be sheltered in through here and then over into uh, Greene County. And the Greene County warning does include uh, Utah, Bology, Interstate 5920, uh, from Bology back up to the Knoxville exit. So again, the object of this is not to be traveling along Interstate 5920 uh, in Greene County in West Alabama for about the next hour. This warning is in effect until 10 o'clock uh, Central Time uh, this morning. Hopefully, hopefully that circulation in Mississippi will fizzle before it reaches the Alabama-Mississippi state line. That could happen. We really don't expect these to last especially long today. But still, uh, we've got to uh, pay close attention to these. And if you're in a polygon, just be sure and uh, respect that. Now, let's go back to WEX 05. Wanted to show, again, uh, some of the uh, damage that has happened earlier today. This is in uh, Decatur. And that should be uh, US 72, a little to the uh, west of Decatur. And again, you can see uh, emergency vehicles. You can see uh, power poles that are down. And there's a truck that is overturned in the road there. 
Uh, and obviously a lot of folks are watching. We like those shirts there. And uh, thanks to our cat friends for watching as well. But again, uh, there's been uh, great to see the school kids watching, Taylor. I like that. You know, we got a lot of kids hey. in school today. And if you're watching us in a classroom, we'll try and teach you some science today. We'll try and throw in some science content for the uh, schools today. Again, this is some of the damage over at the uh, hospital in, um, in uh, I want to say this is Aberdeen, Mississippi. And again, this is some of the damage a uh, little west of Decatur that happened uh, earlier this morning about one hour ago as a circulation passed through there. And uh, again, in our area, some of the most significant damage has been in uh, parts of uh, Winston County. And again, uh, a lot of low hanging clouds today. And uh, again, the tornado is going to be very, very hard to see. So let's go back to the uh, radar. We are here because we have a tornado warning in effect now for parts of northern Sumter and Greene counties in West Alabama. Uh, this in effect until 10 o'clock tonight for this tornadic circulation that is currently in the uh, eastern part of uh, Mississippi. And again, uh, this uh, circulation still looks very impressive on radar. And if this thing holds together, uh, it will inevitably uh, come into that part of West Alabama. That's the reason for that warning that's currently uh, in effect there. Um, and the northern circulation, we should say, is dissipated. This uh, what prompted the warning here. If you're in Pickens County, uh, no evidence of any uh, circulation there. Uh, but uh, this thing that's uh, just to the uh, southeast of DeKalb, Mississippi, looks pretty impressive. Uh, the tornado warning uh, remains in effect for uh, Kemper County. Uh, in Mississippi. This is Kemper County, Mississippi. This is Sumter County, Alabama, Greene County. And uh, again, you got plenty of time. Uh, if you live in a mobile home, you need to get out, go to a shelter, go to a, a fast food restaurant, a gas station, any place that's a site built structure that offers shelter in a site built home, small room, lowest floor near the center away from windows. I want you wearing a helmet, a bicycle helmet, a batting helmet, uh, and that's for everybody, not just for kids. Most of the injuries from tornadoes come from blunt force trauma to the skull, uh, head, neck region. Uh, and that uh, helmet is very important. And obviously nobody driving, especially along Interstate 5920 and here through parts of Green and northern Sumter counties. And again, we, we advise no travel along Interstate 59 from Knoxville uh, down to the uh, Sumter County line until at least 10 o'clock. We can we'll give you an all clear when that time happens. But uh, Taylor, the circulation getting pretty close and that thing's hanging in there so far. It is. It, it definitely looks like it, it's maintaining its strength. We've got a uh, good indication that there is definitely something suspicious going on with that cell. Um, it is moving over a location where we could maybe have some eyes on this here pretty soon and we'll get a better idea of what exactly is going on at the ground. This is kind of in an area where we're looking fairly high up within this storm, but it's been maintaining its strength, maintaining its circulation. We're seeing uh, that couplet continue. It's going to be reaching the state line in about 15 minutes or so. So at that point that will be crossing over into Sumter County, moving in the general direction of Gainesville. And then eventually, if it can maintain, which this one has been doing, this one has been uh, showing consistent signs of rotation for quite some time through Mississippi. If that continues to be the trend with this, it'll be moving in the general direction of Utah right along I-20. Uh, so we'll keep a close eye on this as it keeps moving eastward. I am getting a new warning. It's not a tornado warning, it's a severe thunderstorm warning, but it will include parts of Walker and Winston County. So we've been talking a lot about this tornado warning. This tornado or potential tornado is still across the border in Mississippi. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to that severe thunderstorm warning. And I know Winston County, you dealt with a tornado warning earlier today. This is not going to include the same locations that dealt with that tornado warning earlier this morning. This is for South Eastern Winston County, so locations south of Double Springs. This does include much of Walker County, including the city of Jasper. This is for some strong winds uh, of 60 miles per hour and then also some hail. So a severe thunderstorm warning, including the city of Jasper. And you can tell there's likely some hail falling right here in that pink color. This is going to keep moving eastward uh, in the general direction of Boldo. This could impact Sipsy as well. Uh, so we'll be watching this. It's going to impact Arley in Winston County. This is not the same locations that dealt with that tornado warning a little bit earlier this morning. But just wanted to let you guys know that that is out there right now. And... Within that tornado warning, I'm seeing that they, in, for some term, that tornado warning that is just the tornado circulation that's just across the border, there's also hail being reported of 
one and a quarter inch. So in addition to the possibility of a tornado, there is the possibility of large hail with this as well. And as we continue to get more and more of these radar scans in, I mean, that, that's showing good signs of rotation still. Yeah, let, let's go to WEX05 real quick. I wanted to show some uh, images uh, coming in. Um, and hang on, let me press the right button here. We'll be able to see that through the switcher back there. And uh, we've got some damage in Moulton. This is up in Lawrence County earlier today. Uh, and this is damage from the uh, uh, hospital in, in Moulton earlier today. Uh, and this is the circulation that uh, came through. Uh, this is the Lawrence Medical Center in Moulton. And you can see uh, uh, quite a bit of damage uh, to the uh, hospital. Um, and again, this happened about one hour ago, and that circulation came up through the western part of Decatur, the northern part of Decatur, causing some damage there. But again, just wanted to show uh, that we, again, getting more and more reports of damage like this from earlier today. And again, these uh, photographs coming in from the Lawrence Medical Center in Moulton, which is in Lawrence County, up in the uh, <coughs> Tennessee Valley. So let's go back to the radar here. It's 9-11. If you're just watching us, I'm James Spann with Taylor Sorello. We're live in the Weather Center, and we have a pretty dangerous storm. You can see the tornadic circulation about to cross Highway 45 uh, south of Scuba, Mississippi, and uh, that will be crossing into northern Sumter. So nobody should be traveling along Alabama Highway 17 up here toward Geiger and Emel. And all of this is going to be happening north of York, north of Livingston. This is northern Sumter. Uh, the circulation, if it holds together, will be crossing the Tom Bigby River, which is right here, then crossing over into Greene County, which is right here. That's Interstate 5920. This is U.S. 11. Uh, Utah is here. That's U.S. 43 going down toward Forkland. Uh, this is the Tuscaloosa County line right here. We're not expecting longer track tornadoes today, but uh, one of the great legends in this uh, science, uh, Al Mohler, uh, taught me years ago, and I, I remember this line, I remember it so well. I was very young, but he said, when it comes to thunderstorms, expect the unexpected. And he is so right to this day that uh, rings true. And uh, we'll see if this one can maybe last longer than a few minutes. So far, the tornadoes that came through uh, Morgan and Winston earlier today, uh, counties, those were fairly short-lived, but they packed a punch. I mean, they have produced structural damage. They've been a real problem. And uh, again, uh, we've got to be really careful with dealing with these things. Thankfully, this will not be an all-day, all-nighter. Once this line passes, you're done with it. Uh, it's a one-and-done kind of day today. Uh, but that tornadic circulation here is about to cross the Alabama-Mississippi state line, which is here. That's Alabama Highway 17. Geiger is here. Emel is here. Gainesville is here. Then it's going to cross over into Green. That's Alabama 14, the road from Utah back up to Aliceville. Uh, and again, uh, Interstate 5920 is here. U.S. 43, U.S. 11 right here. All these places we're calling out. You are in the polygon. On the days like today, you have to respect the polygon. So what I want to do is show a big picture real quick before this thing gets into Alabama. A big picture showing the whole northern half of the state. And uh, let's kind of expand it out a little bit. First off, in the Tennessee Valley, uh, we have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect now for parts of Madison, Morgan, and Marshall counties. Uh, the issue here, strong straight line winds. Uh, let's look at our warning to the south. This is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for parts of Walker and Winston counties. And there could be some large hail involved in this. And that's approaching Jasper. So maybe we can punch that sky cam in Jasper quick, Taylor, and take a look at that. Again, one of the things that we understand from social science studies is that people like to see actual reviews of weather. So let's point that thing back off to the west and up toward the sky. We'll see what it looks like as the line approaches uh, Jasper. Uh, this uh, camera is on top of the King Building in Walker County and downtown Jasper. But we know that you react better when you see the weather. And again, Evan Chickvera is out in the field. Uh, Evan, uh, his live stream should be up uh, pretty soon. We've got Valerie Bell, Bill Castle out in the field. And, and again, this is I wanted to show you that because this is what you're going to see and that's nothing. Uh, I, I know that uh, if, you, uh, if you're a weather dweeb and you watch the weather coverage in Kansas and Oklahoma and, and you see these things, this, this is not Kansas. This is Alabama. Our tornadoes are rain wrapped. We have hills. We have trees. This is a beautiful state. But trying to see a tornado here on a day like today, it's almost impossible. And again, I want to stress there are no tornado warnings in effect here. That's a severe thunderstorm warning. But even it's hard to see a shelf cloud on a day like today. So let's go back to the uh, radar. And again, we do have uh, a severe thunderstorm warning in effect now for southern Winston 
And for Walker County, the severe weather threat is over for Haleyville, Hamilton, Russellville. You're done with it. No more severe weather issues for you. Uh, again, the tornado damage is right in through here. Del Mar back over to Ash Ridge. Very significant tornado damage earlier today. But now we've got large hail falling uh, that will be coming across the southern part of Smith Lake down toward the Smith Lake Dam, then curving down toward uh, Curry and Jasper. So be aware of that. Also, that cluster could produce some strong straight line winds. So a severe thunderstorm warning in effect now for southern Winston and much of Walker County and parts of Northwest Alabama. But let's go back to our tornado warning. And again, uh, the reason we are here, it's this, uh, the tornado warning polygon that stretches across northern Sumter and Greene counties in West Alabama. And let me just say, if you're in Tuscaloosa County, you have no problems here. It's about to get wet and it's got to get breezy and you might see some small hail, but uh, we just don't see any evidence of problems in Tuscaloosa County at this point. Now, we're going to watch this thing, and if this continues, it might wind up affecting parts of Hale County here, uh, south of Tuscaloosa. But again, uh, uh, the greatest concern in the short term, it's northern Sumter and Green. And this is uh, an unusually long lead time. The Weather Service posted this a ways back, and that's one of the debates in the weather enterprise, is, is a long lead time too much? in some cases where people are waiting and waiting and waiting on something to happen. But just understand, uh, we do this primarily for people that live in manufactured housing. For a lot of those people, they have to drive to a shelter. And you don't want to be in a car either, and you want to get there way before this happens. So this is an ample opportunity for those of you that live in mobile homes to get out and get to a community shelter. If there's no community shelter, you still can't stay in that mobile home. Go to a, a gas station, a, a restaurant, any business that would open their doors and offer shelter to you, and most businesses will. Believe it or not, there's some really good people left in the world today, and they will offer shelter until this passes. And again, this is not going to be an all-day kind of thing. It's uh, once the line passes, you're done with it. But the call to action is for those that are in northern Sumter and Green to be sheltered. Uh, and this is time to get out of the mobile home, to, to stop driving. <clears throat> the two worst possible places to be would be a car and a mobile home. And Taylor, I'm looking for damage over in. Uh, We've got a new tornado warning. Okay. A very small warning, but it does include parts <clears throat> of Walker and parts of Winston counties. Okay. So this is a new tornadic circulation that has just popped up here. This is north of Jasper. All right. This is Arley. This is Smith Lake. And that tornadic circulation would be right in through here. It's coming through the town of Curry. Uh, so again, we have a possible tornadic circulation along Highway 257 near Curry. And again, this is Winston County and this is Walker County, and this is going to be passing very close to the Smith Lake Dam. And this is a really small polygon here because it's a uh, more than likely this is a very short lived circulation. So just be aware that we have a tornado warning in effect now for areas near the southern tip of Smith Lake right down through here. So if you're anywhere near the town of Curry, the southern part of Smith Lake, uh, you see Arley, you're not in the polygon. Jasper, you're not in the polygon. Some of the older legacy warning systems sound countywide. And remember, we stopped issuing warnings by counties years ago. W tornadoes are small. Counties are big. You don't need to warn a whole county. We use the polygon system, small geometric shapes. <clears throat> so again, uh, this is a tornado warning now for a small part of northeastern Walker and southeastern Winston. Uh, and again, that's uh, 257 right there that runs from Arley back down toward Jasper. And again, that possible circulation is near Curry. And again, this is going to be a uh, probably a, a pretty short-lived warning. The uh, warning is in effect until 945 uh, for the next 30 minutes, and it'll be long gone by 945. So a possible tornado at Curry, uh, eight miles north of Jasper, moving east at 55 miles an hour. And th there are some reports of damage with this storm, including a tree down possibly on a house. And I think that's one reason that the Weather Service possibly uh, uh, issued the warning on this. Uh, so again, uh, tornado warning in effect for a small part of northern Walker in extreme southeastern Winston, the town of Curry back over toward the Smith Lake Dam. <clears throat> now this is Coleman County. Brushy Pond is right here. Wilburn and Bug Tussle right here, and we'll see if that circulation continues and if the warning needs to be extended into southwestern Coleman County. At this point, it's not, and the circulation does not look especially vivid on radar here, but still, just be aware that uh, for the next few minutes, if you're in that polygon, be sheltered. So again, a tornado warning for that part of Walker and Winston counties. Let's go back down to Sumter and Green. 
And I would say of the two, this is the more significant circulation we're seeing here. And that circulation is pretty much on the state line right now. Uh, you can see it here that's on the state line that's uh, to the south of uh, Geiger that'll be coming in toward Emel. This is Highway 17 right here. Community of Sledge is right here. But again, nobody should be on Highway 17. That's the main e north-south highway in the western part of Sumter County. Uh, and that's going to be coming up here in the direction of Gainesville, which is right here. This is the Tom Bigby River here. This is Green County. The Tom Bigby separates Sumter from Green Counties. So again, we have a tornado warning that is in effect now for parts of northern Sumter and much of Green Counties. And uh, again, uh, uh, watching more of the damage reports coming in. And we're seeing a lot of trees down and some lines down in different parts of the state. And of course, the more significant condition, the damage was in parts of De Decatur and Morgan County and parts of Winston County around Ash Ridge and Del Mar uh, earlier today. And I think we might have our first uh, look at some of the damage up and through here. So uh, uh, let's see if we can. Let's go to WEX 05 really quickly and uh, want to uh, take this. And uh, this is going to be north of Double Springs. And uh, you can see, looks like some tin is out there in that field. And uh, again, oh yeah, we're starting to see more, uh, of course, a lot of flooding there. That's more of a water. Uh, but again, this is uh, north of Double Springs, uh, uh, taken uh, within the past uh, 15 minutes or so. And watching to see if we see any uh, more damage from this. And um, oh yeah, goodness, uh, that looks fairly significant there. Um, and again, this would be near Del Mar and Ash Ridge, taken earlier today. We, we've got uh, a crew that's on the way. And again, we'll go back to the uh, radar here. And as soon as we get uh, our crew up there, of course, we'll have uh, much more. Uh, but again, that's some of the uh, damage coming in from uh, uh, Winston earlier this morning. Uh, Taylor, any reports of damage from this one so far in Mississippi? I have not seen anything. Nothing yet, uh, but we are it's certainly looking at what appears to be still pretty good indication of rotation. The one the one report we did have was hail of one and one quarter inch with this storm back a little while ago. A little while ago, so. In addition to the possibility of rotation within the storm, we are looking at the possibility of some large hail as this storm moves eastward. And that, that still looks likely with this as we take a look at the uh, reflectivity. I mean, check this out. We've got the pinks showing up, a little bit of the gray within that. That's going to be moving through Geiger, just south of Geiger. So not only is it going to be raining heavily, it's going to be very windy. We're monitoring for the possibility of a tornado within this. And then on top of that, you're dealing with the hail. So we're talking about wind blown hail and large hail at that. So this is a very dangerous storm that's beginning to move into Sumter County. Now it's just crossing over. <coughs> Uh, the state line as we speak into Sumter County. It's going to be moving uh, just south of Geiger in the general direction of Gainesville, and then it will be continuing into Greene County. We still have that tornado warning. And uh, we are, I'm just monitoring these chats here to see if I can uh, see anything here. And it looks like I haven't seen any ground reports of damage from this cell yet. But based on the current velocity signature, that's a very tight couplet. That is probably some of the best indication of rotation we've seen with this storm. So just now crossing over, it's basically right on the state line now. This is to the south of Geiger. It's about to move over 17, and then it's headed uh, next towards the city of Gainesville, uh, Mount Hebron, Clinton, and it's going to be crossing over I-20. Uh, in the next few minutes or so. They have updated the timeline on this. So the time frame looks to be it's moving towards the east at about 50 miles an hour. So moving just a touch slower. And I'll do another one of those arrow tracks on this and put it to I-20. So this particular storm is about 17 miles from I-20. And it's going to be there in about 20 minutes. So we don't want you driving on I-59-20 for any reason. Uh, in Greene County, any between, uh, say, Fowler 
or Knoxville because this circulation is moving east and so eventually this will move over I-20 if it holds together. Uh, so I've been monitoring, let's see here, for any kind of damage reports from this. And still not seeing any damage confirmed yet with this, but based on the velocity, it looks even more kind of impressive than it did just a few minutes ago. We're looking pretty high up in the storm, very noisy on correlation coefficient. Of course, as you all know, that's our debris tracker. That's what we use to uh, monitor for any kind of lofted debris. And I'll switch radar sites here to see if we can get a more clear picture and just is not going to happen with where this storm is located at this point. So we'll continue on with the uh, velocity here. There's that couplet. It's about to cross over uh, 17 here pretty soon. And we'll keep watching this closely as it continues on that eastward track. Let's go back up to that uh, Walker Winston warning and see if that thing is still in effect, Taylor. A lot of questions about that. Uh, again, we're working two tornado warnings at the same time today. <coughs> that and, was uh, canceled. Yeah, pretty I, I was about to say after yeah, that was that's gone. The, the, if there was a tornado there, there was clearly some tree and power line damage and it could have been straight line winds, maybe a brief tornado. But we have severe thunderstorm warnings in effect now for uh, extreme southeastern Walker, northeastern, uh, I'm sorry, southeastern Winston, northeastern Walker and southern Cullman counties uh, for that line segment that has produced some wind damage in the form of downed trees. So again, uh, the, the severe thunderstorm warning polygon for Cullman County is for areas basically from downtown Cullman South. Cullman is sitting right there. That's Good Hope. That's Dodge City. That's I-65. So let's put the reflectivity back on. That's the velocity. No sign of any tornado there. But I wanted to show this is the line segment that's going to be coming through. You can expect large hail, strong straight line winds, and tremendous amounts of rain. Uh, and again, the severe thunderstorm warning polygons, southeast Eastern Winston, Northeastern Walker, and from downtown Cullman South, the southern half of Cullman County. Uh, these are severe thunderstorm warning polygons in effect here. No tornado warning, but severe thunderstorm warning polygons. And again, on our coverage, we have to focus on the tornado warnings. That's the higher priority. So I wanted to show that and just be aware of that. But let's go back down into Northern Sumter and we'll work both of these storms. And again, for Tuscaloosa, you got that line coming in, but there's no evidence of any severe weather at this point and, and by that large hail or damaging wind uh, affecting the city of Tuscaloosa here. You're about to get the line but so far so good. The concern it's down here. So let's take a look at the velocity and uh, again uh, <clears throat> you can you'll be able to see a very tight velocity couplet that's been there for a pretty long time and uh, you can see that it's located near Alabama Highway 17 to the south of Geiger not too far from Emil. and again this is far north of York and well to the north of Livingston. Want to stress that York and Livingston, you're not in the polygon here. This is for the northern part of Sumter County. And this is the Tom Bigby River here. This is Gainesville. And that circulation is going to be crossing over into Green County. Uh, so again, northern Sumter, pretty good chunk of Green County. Now, southern Green, you're not in this warning. If you're from Forkland South, no, this is all north of you. <clears throat> but again, the town of Utah is here. This is the county seat of Green County, the largest town in the county. And this will be passing near or just north of Utah. So again, if you're in Utah, you need to be sheltered. I know that so many people have tornado fatigue and that Utah was hit not that far back with a tornado. And uh, we have another potential tornado that's going to be close to Utah, maybe passing a little north of there. <clears throat> but uh, again, now the bottom line is if you're in this polygon, no cars, no mobile homes in a site built home, you're going to go to a small room on the lowest floor near the center away from windows, hall, closet, bathroom. You're going to wear a helmet. Uh, and if you know anybody in this polygon, you can be part of the warning process. You can be a hero in the warning process by calling or texting them. If you know anybody in Northern Sumter or parts of Greene County here, because a lot of people are busy. We understand people don't have time to sit around and watch television all day. And maybe they don't have a weather radio and maybe they think they're going to hear a siren. They have no idea this is happening. You can help us by calling them or texting them. If you know somebody in any, this uh, polygon you see here in northern Sumter or Green counties in West Alabama, because that's a very, very significant signature here. Let's look at the uh, debris uh, the tracker, if we will, the correlation coefficient. It's a dual polarization product. And let's see if we have any. There, I think is that yeah. now showing up? Well, the, the thing is, th this Noisy. beam is pretty high yeah. and often storms are tilted. And sometimes the debris can be a little displaced from where the low level circulation might be. So we're starting to see a CC drop in here. And again, that's the radar telling us 
there's something there that doesn't correlate with everything else. Uh, hydrometeors, rain, hail, uh, precipitation, that correlates pretty well. But if you've got tree branches or boards or bricks being lofted, that doesn't correlate with rain. And you'll have a lowered correlation coefficient value there, and that represents debris being lofted. So we'll keep a close eye on that to see if that continues. But we can now give an all clear to Highway 17. Geiger, Imel, the tornadic circulation is now past you. It's east of you. So along Highway 17, we're given all clear. But again, the concern is next up going to be for Gainesville and uh, the area in uh, the eastern part of uh, Sumter County. And uh, obviously, we want folks there to be uh, sheltered. Uh, this uh, circulation has been very, very persistent. I'll say that. Some of the tornadic circulations uh, have not lasted long today, but this one has lasted a fairly uh, long time. Uh, and again, uh, uh, it's probably pretty formidable here. Uh, so, um, th by the way, this is Alabama Highway 39 right here, Gainesville. It runs down to uh, US 11. So we encourage no travel along uh, Alabama Highway 39. And if you're anywhere near Gainesville, you've got to be sheltered. Gainesville is a, a lovely little hamlet that's sitting on the banks of the Tom Bigby. A lot of history here. And that'll be crossing over into uh, Greene County. This is Highway 14. Uh, no travel along Highway 14 between Utah and the Pickens County line. No travel along Interstate 5920 between Knoxville and Bology. And I'd say the same thing for US 11. There's a decent chance this tornadic circulation might stay a little north of the interstate, but it could very well intersect the interstate around Utah. Uh, the bottom line, that's why we have polygons. It, it, it's, that's the danger zone. And if you're in it, you've got to respect it. You've got to go to a safe place. If you're not in it, you know, just watch it and you're okay. But uh, again, we're seeing evidence of a lowered correlation coefficient that might be debris being lofted here uh, near... Uh, a little to the south of Geiger, and these are some of the arrival times. You can see we've got Bology here at 937. This is going to be part, most likely passing north of Bology. Uh, Utah, it'll be close to Utah about 957. And uh, again, if, the, uh, if it stays down, a warning could be required for parts of Hale County <clears throat> and maybe, maybe extreme southern Tuscaloosa County. I think if this continues, it's going to stay south of the city of uh, Tuscaloosa. And again, we are uh, uh, watching many, many reports coming in from uh, our viewers, and we are thankful for that of damage. And a lot of the damage has been coming in from Limestone, Morgan, Winston counties up in uh, North Alabama. And we are focusing primarily on this right now. And again, as time allows, we'll be passing along uh, specific damage reports. Uh, but there's been a lot of damage in parts of Winston County between Double Springs and Haleyville. We've had reports of damage around Moulton and Decatur as well, uh, and also in parts of southern Limestone County up in the Tennessee Valley, and that's from most likely smaller tornadoes. And the Weather Service will send in the survey teams. We'll get the results from those in coming days. But again, we have to stay focused on the ongoing dangerous weather. And again, we have a dangerous storm that is located about 10 to 12 miles north of Livingston in Sumter County. And it's crossed east now of Highway 17. And next up will be Alabama Highway 39, which is this road right here in the community of Gainesville. And from there, the tornadic circulation will be crossing the Tom Bigby into uh, Greene County. And again, everybody from Utah to Bology, back up to Clinton, Union, Snotty, you've got to be sheltered. Uh, any of these places we've called out, uh, in that this is a, a very uh, dangerous uh, thunderstorm here. Uh, so we are going to stay with this. And again, I apologize. I know that we have the talk of Alabama folks that we're hoping to be on television today, but sometimes it happens. And again, we have to stay with this, and uh, we're going to stay with it as long as we have active tornado warnings in effect. Uh, Taylor, any damage coming out of Sumter so far? Not yet, but it, it does look like we are starting to see uh, evidence of a tornado debris signature, which would signify that this is on the ground or has been on the ground. Uh, we're getting a little bit better evidence. We've been monitoring that circulation as it moves eastward and with each scan. It, it, this now is pretty, pretty co-located with where we are 
seeing those indications of rotation. So at this point, it does <coughs> appear that we either have a tornado on the ground or we've had a tornado on the ground with this. Uh, so we could start to see uh, some damage reports coming out of Sumter County uh, as this storm crossed over 17 south of Geiger. This is headed towards Gainesville. So this is going to be moving through Gainesville. That's going to be our next city in the path of this, this tornado warning. And now the uh, National Weather Service uh, has now believed that they also are seeing that tornado debris signature. So they're calling this an observed tornado. Uh, so it does appear that we now have a tornado on the ground with this. So if you weren't maybe moving as urgently before, now is the time to move urgently. Now you need to make sure you are in that safe place. We have ground confirmation or at least confirmation that this has been on the ground from a radar uh, looking at a debris signature on that radar there. So I'm going to zoom us down a little bit. We're going to talk some more about some of the roads that are in the path of this. This is going to be moving over 39, as James was mentioning. Yeah, we've we've actually here. got somebody along 39. Let's take a look at WEX 05 real quick. Oh. Uh, Taylor, uh, if we can, uh, in fact, I might have to press a button. That's my fault. Let me press the right button. And I uh, want to show an image coming from Alabama Highway 39. All right, we can take it now. And it looks like it might be a rain wrap, but uh, the, our observers there believe that that could very well be the tornado that is moving through uh, the eastern part of Sumter County in West Alabama. Uh, and again, I'll get their specific location here in just a second. They are uh, sitting on Alabama Highway 39 and County Road 20 in Sumter County. Uh, and uh, they are observing the storm. They believe that it's a rain wrap tornado. Uh, so again, that's a look into it, and that's what Alabama tornadoes look like. They're, they're wrapped in rain, and, and, and of course the problem, we really don't know if there's one in there, but based on the radar signature, the debris signature, Taylor, we do think there's one there. Yeah, it, it looks like, you know, we're, we're still seeing that drop in CC co-located with where we've got those indications of rotation. So this is likely a tornado on the ground, as James was just showing you. You're not going to be able to see it. Don't try to go to your window. Don't try to go to your door. Take, uh, take this chance to get down to a safe place, get to wherever you need to be, whether that be a lower level of your your uh, your home, wherever you usually shelter for tornadoes. I know you've been thinking about your plan. We have already had a couple different events this year where we've told you to go over that plan. So at this point, you should be uh, fairly familiar with where you would go if a tornado is issued. <coughs> Right now, the call to action is going to be for Gainesville, as this is going to pass just south of the city of Gainesville. It's going to be moving over State Route 39, County Road 21. You can see uh, that tornado debris signature with this newest radar scan is moving eastward. So this is getting closer to 39. I'm going to circle right there where we believe that this, this uh, tornado is. And it, it's moving towards I-20. It's 5920. It's going to be moving towards 5920 here pretty soon. So please do not travel along 5920 in Greene County. This is going to be uh, moving up towards Crawford Fork and then eventually crossing <coughs> over uh, I-20 in the general direction. This might pass in between Clinton and Utah. We'll have to just keep watching at each scan to see whether or not this is moving due east. I think it's moving a little north of east uh, in the general direction of Crawford Fork. So I'm going to put a track on here just to give us an approximate arrival time on this moving towards I-20. This is about 10 minutes from moving across the interstate. Um, so if this stays down, keeps looking the way it does right now, this has been our longest lived tornado warning so far of the day. Uh, and as we look towards the uh, velocity, it still shows indications that this, this could still be on the ground. Now let's go to WEX 05 real quick. I wanted to show some of the damage coming in from uh, Winston County. Again, this is some of the damage around Del Mar and Ash Ridge in uh, Winston County. These uh, photographs were taken within the hour. This tornado came through between about 8.05 and 8.30 uh, this morning. And again, uh, crews are in the field uh, working on uh, <clears throat> trying to assist people. And uh, uh, Valerie Bell and Bill Castle of our staff, they are up in there. And as soon as we get uh, their live shot, we'll, we'll take them for more details of what's happened up in there. But again, I wanted to show some of the damage specifically in parts of Winston County earlier today. And again, that's our storm right now that we're looking at in uh, Sumter County that is possibly producing a tornado. And it looks like that might be a, a rain wrap tornado. And that photograph was taken from Alabama Highway 39. So let's go really quickly back to the uh, radar. And again, uh, the possible TDS is right on Highway 39, just south of Gainesville. And it's about to cross the Tom Bigby. 
Uh, and again, uh, you can see that this tornadic circulation is about 60 miles, 65 miles southwest of Birmingham. And the line of storms is coming into Tuscaloosa. It's coming through Cullman. And again, we see no evidence of any severe weather in that segment, Tuscaloosa to Cullman. So far, so good. Uh, we talked about isolated tornadoes, and that's what we've had today. And again, we have this one hot spot down here in Greene County and Sumter County. So again, if this stays intact, this most likely will move into northern Hale County. So if you're in places like Havana Junction, Stewart, Akron, Moundville, just kind of keep an eye on this very carefully as it uh, approaches. And again, the warning does not include any part of Hale County at this point. Uh, but again, we had a tornado a couple of months ago that came through Utah, came across the Warrior, and came out here toward the community of Stewart and uh, produced a lot of damage. And that same broad area is kind of in the risk area again for this potential uh, tornado uh, at this point. So it's 940. The tornado warning continues in effect until 10 o'clock this morning. And uh, we again, we're watching many uh, damage reports. Uh, coming in from different uh, places across the state. The, the most of the damage specifically has been from Winston, Morgan, Lawrence, and Limestone counties from tornado activity earlier today. But again, we have to focus on the ongoing threat, and it's this storm right here that's basically on the Tom Bigby. And uh, again, as we get closer and closer to the Shelby County radar, we'll get a better low-level slice. This is kind of in that spot in West Alabama, where the radar beams are very high, whether you're looking at Columbus Air Force Base, Shelby County Airport, <coughs> Jackson, or Mobile, your beam is six, seven, eight thousand feet off the ground. As it gets closer to the Shelby County Airport, we get a better low level look at these storms, which really helps us in trying to identify if we have a tornado down. But uh, for a pretty good chunk of Sumter County, the danger is ended. In fact, we can give an all clear now to Alabama Highway 39. Uh, anybody along 39 from Gainesville down to US 11, uh, you can travel on that road <clears throat> as the tornadic circulation is now crossing the Tom Bigby. And for just a moment, if it's down, it's a water spout as it crosses the Tom Bigby. Uh, but that will last for just a matter of seconds. And then the circulation comes out into green. And to get your bearing straight, this is the town of Utah here. This is the <clears throat> largest town in the uh, Greene County. That's Highway 14 going up toward Aliceville. This is Interstate 5920 right here. This is US 11, US 43, and then both of those uh, roads are on the same road here. US 11 and 43 join north of Utah coming up toward Knoxville, and this is the Tuscaloosa County line. Community of Ralph is located right here. So uh, the polygon does include Utah, Bology, and includes Union, Clinton. We advise no travel on Alabama Highway 14 between Utah and the Pickens County line. No travel along Interstate 5920 anywhere in Greene County for about the next 30 minutes. And again, we can give we'll give you an all clear as we can. Uh, but again, for those of you in Sumter County, we can give you an all clear. The danger is ended now for Sumter County. The problem is exclusively into uh, uh, Greene County uh, at this point. So uh, while we just got a second. Let's take some images real quick. I want to go back to WEX 05 and uh, show some of the damage coming in from Decatur. Uh, this is damage that uh, occurred in Decatur earlier. This uh, tornadic circulation came through Morgan County after passing through uh, Moulton and uh, produced some pretty significant damage there. And again, uh, this is all looks like it's near the uh, Tennessee River. So again, just wanted to show that we've had a lot of damage today up in uh, parts of North Alabama, and that's some more examples of that. All right, Taylor, back to you. Any uh, late uh, I've heard of no damage from Sumter so far, which is good. I have heard that fire units are responding, but there's no details yet. Uh, so we're seeing reports that Sumter fire units are responding. So we're not sure where, we're not sure what exactly has happened, but there are units that are uh, being deployed for what could possibly be damage from this, this storm that we've been tracking that showed that debris signature at one point. And uh, we do have now, I'm just seeing here that we're getting some power outages. This is not from a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning, but there are some power outages being reported for just from some gusty winds within that line in Tuscaloosa County uh, near Buell. So even if you're not included in one of these warnings, there are, are some gusty winds out there, and we've also got a wind advisory in place. So even if it's not storming where you are, it's pretty windy out there with winds gusting as high as 40 miles per hour. Uh, but the reason we're focusing on this storm right here is because it potentially has a tornado on the ground with it. At times, we've seen that debris signature uh, evident 
right now hard to pick it out but it doesn't mean that it's not there it's just because it's right in between radar sites so we don't have really good coverage uh, to see that debris signature but we are still seeing the indications of rotation here uh, as it's crossing over the Tom Bigby it is moving closer to I-20 and uh, hasn't hasn't looked right now in the last couple of scans quite as tight of a rotation like it's quite of a tight rotation as it was just back in uh, Sumter County but there is definitely still something going on with this storm so we're going to keep watching it carefully and as I mentioned we are seeing reports that uh, there could be something going on in Sumter County we don't exactly have uh, any details on what damage has occurred or where that damage is being reported uh, but we do know that the fire units are responding to uh, to Sumter County at this point so we'll have to keep watching this storm carefully worth noting i will take us over to show you that tuscaloosa storm notice no warning here we don't have a severe thunderstorm warning we don't have a tornado warning uh, but some gusty winds within this storm here uh, just this general thunderstorm a strong thunderstorm not a severe thunderstorm has uh, caused some power outages in parts of the buell community in tuscaloosa county so we are monitoring all of these storms carefully haven't seen any new reports coming in. Um, Let's take Wexo 5 real quick. This is a look at a, a shelf cloud down at Bology. This is in uh, Greene County. The tornadic circulation is passing north of that site. But again, uh, this is coming from Bology. <clears throat> taken a few minutes ago. And uh, again, the, the tornadoes today, they're going to be rain wrapped. It's going to be almost impossible to see them. So let's go back to the uh, radar. If you're just joining us here, it's 946. I'm James Spam with Taylor Sorello. And let me just say again, let, let's go to our warning up here. Wanted to show the Coleman County warning. And again, this is not a tornado warning. This is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect now for parts of Coleman County that continues. This includes Coleman, Hansville, Holly Pond, Good Hope, Baileyton. Uh, this includes Dodge City. This includes Colony. And again, that's for the storm coming through Coleman County. The chance of hail and damaging straight line winds. There's no evidence of any tornadic circulation in Coleman County. So again, <clears throat> for Coleman County, this is a severe thunderstorm warning. In effect, I just wanted to show that. Now let's go back down the line. The storms are, are coming through Tuscaloosa, and really, so far so good for the uh, Druid City. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, line Taylor down toward Tuscaloosa and Jasper, and uh, you can see that uh, Jasper, you're done with it. The line is coming into Tuscaloosa, and if we can go to one of the cameras, maybe, and take a look at what this thing looks like coming in to the city of Tuscaloosa. And, and remember, to be severe, you've got to have one inch diameter hail or larger or 58 mile per hour winds or greater. And we probably have small hail, we have gusty winds, maybe gusting to 35, 40 miles an hour, but we see no evidence of severe criteria hail or wind here. And that's the shelf cloud coming into Tuscaloosa. And again, the rain's going to get heavy and it's going to be windy, but there's no tornado warning, no severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Tuscaloosa. So we'll go back to the radar. The tornado warning is for this segment of the storm down here. All right. And that's coming through northern green. And if this continues, it will affect northern hail. So let's take a look at our velocity product and see what that looks like. This is coming from the Shelby County Airport. And again, you can see our rotation, which is located just north of Interstate 5920. And uh, this circulation will be really close to the interstate uh, soon. Now, I will say in the last couple of volume scans, it is starting to get broader, which is a great sign. And I am very surprised how long this thing has lasted. It's been hanging in there for a long time, but the rotation is getting a little broader, but still, you got to stay sheltered here, and there still could be a tornado down. We've heard of no specific damage coming from Sumter County so far, but again, it's very early, and often what happens if you've got tornado damage, the cell service goes out and people can't get images out, and we don't know for a while. So there could be some damage in Sumter County. We just don't know about that. Uh, but again, uh, we have had damage earlier today in other circulations that look just like this in parts of Winston and Lawrence and Morgan and Limestone counties. And that still looks pretty good. I mean, that's pretty good looking circulation right here. So you got to stay sheltered. Utah, uh, Union, you're technically out of this. That's a small community. Jenna, you're on the edge of this. 
Uh, but again, everybody should be sheltered along Interstate 5920, the town of Utah, until at least 10 o'clock. And we'll see if the Weather Service extends the warning. And if it looks like that, they probably will. Is that Columbus, Taylor? The this is Columbus. Yeah, it, it looks better on the Columbus radar. Sometimes you get a better sample by looking at other radar products. And this is coming from Columbus Air Force Base in uh, eastern Mississippi. And you can see that uh, tornadic, that's Birmingham, that's Columbus. It looks a lot better on the Columbus display. But uh, that'll be crossing <clears throat> Highway 14 very soon. And uh, again, that's just going to be uh, problematic. By the way, d does Evan have his live stream up? Out of curio curiosity here, I was looking to see some of the live shots here. I think he's probably in Bessemer waiting on the storms to get he to Birmingham. He has right? moved to Brent. Okay. All right. So again, once the line gets closer to Evan, we'll be able to take his live shot. Uh, but again, we're watching a potential tornadic circulation that's about 10 miles west of the town of Utah in uh, Greene County. And uh, that uh, circulation continues moving to the northeast at about 55 miles an hour. And uh, again, we're, we really don't see a strong lowering of the correlation coefficient or debris being lofted. But again, the circulation is clearly there. Uh, and again, for those of you in northern hail, just keep a close eye on this. We are looking at a new tornado warning yeah, issued and, here pretty soon based on these last couple of radar scans. Yeah, and, and I think that's right. And, and the warning will be for northern hail county and maybe for a sliver of southern Tuscaloosa county. I, I think this circulation will be staying well to the south of the city of Tuscaloosa. If you're down here in Duncanville, it might be close to you. Uh, but again, for Tuscaloosa, you've got the line of storms coming in right now. Not severe. They're sub severe with gusty winds and heavy rain and thunder lightning. But the greatest concern, it's that tornadic circulation right there, which is in Greene County, that'll be crossing over into the northern part of Hale. So if the Weather Service issues a new warning, it will be for the northern part of Hale, well to the north of Greensboro. Greensboro, this is far north of you. And if there's any part of Tuscaloosa County involved, it's going to be the southern part of the county, south of the city of Tuscaloosa. And again, uh, the Weather Service will make that decision here uh, pretty soon uh, in a few minutes. They have issued the warning. There we go. All right. And there's our new uh, tornado warning. And uh, let's see. I've got one image I'd like to show real quick. Let's take a look at WEX 05. This is coming from Bology looking down into this. And again, I can't tell you there's a tornado there. There might be one. Uh, but again, that is from Greene County looking into this storm from uh, Bology, and uh, that's what folks are dealing with. So let's go right back to the radar and let's show the new tornado warning polygon. And understand this will include a small part of southern Tuscaloosa County around Duncanville. Uh, this tornado warning polygon does not include the cities of Tuscaloosa or Northport. It does not include the campus of the University of Alabama. This includes the far southern part of uh, Tuscaloosa County. So down here toward Duncanville, this is on US 82. And then in Hale County, the warning is in effect uh, basically from Wedgworth North. This will include Stewart, Akron, Havana Junction, Moundville. And of course, the Talladega National Forest is here. Uh, so uh, anybody in northern Hale, this is north of Greensboro, north of Greensboro. Uh, this does include Moundville, Stewart, Akron, Havana Junction in Tuscaloosa County. Uh, it's down here below Taylorville. Uh, this includes areas near the Hale County line. And then coming down US 82, the polygon begins around Duncanville. Uh, so uh, Hagler's down here. So for Tuscaloosa County, this is the far, far southern part of the county. Again, the older legacy systems that warn countywide, you might hear uh, a, an alarm here for the city of Tuscaloosa. Please understand Tuscaloosa, not in the polygon, Northport, not in this polygon. This is for the far southern part of the county. Duncanville, yes, you are in the polygon. Moundville, Akron, Stewart, Wedgworth. Uh, these are communities that are all north of Greensboro. And that circulation is really close to Utah. And it's, it's almost eerie, Taylor, the track this is taking, like the one we had a couple of months ago that came through Utah and then hit Stewart. All right. Uh, it, is, it is just almost eerie how close that track is to the track we had a couple of months ago. And again, now you can see the circulation here. This is Utah. Uh, it is so close to the, that same location where we had damage with the last tornado there several weeks ago. And uh, Akron here, Stewart here, this is the Black Warrior River right here. And again, if we got a tornado down for a moment, it's going to be a water spout coming across the river. And once it crosses the river, it's over here into Hale County. 
Um, any late damage reports coming in, Taylor, so far? We are seeing more damage reports coming out of uh, Sumter County in the ML area. Uh, they are on their way to, sur to survey some damage. It sounds like it was along Highway 17. There is some metal in the roadway along Highway 39 and County Road 24 in Sumter County. So this storm did have a history. Of course, we saw, we saw the TDS, so we, we knew that there was something going on, but we're starting to get more ground truth uh, to that TDS as crews get out in the field and they're, they're starting to get to some of those damage areas and see some evidence of where we probably had a tornado touchdown uh, with this same system in Sumter County. And with this last radar scan, I have to say it's looking even more organized. This is a better show of of, of uh, rotation there, and I'm going to check some of my other radar products here. Oops, that is a cut in that we usually would be doing for the morning show. That's my alarm for that. But it does look like th this is showing really, really good signs of rotation here, right along I-20. Not picking up on a debris signature, but we're, we're kind of in between radar sites right here, so it's hard for us to get that TDS to show. This is moving just just north of Utah, very, very close to the city of Utah. Uh, I'll zoom us down and we can see it's moving over where I-20 intersects with 131. That's where we have that really strong indication of radar or of rotation right now on the radar. This is going to be moving uh, in the general direction here of Stewart, of Akron. And I'll put a time on this based on the latest uh, speed. It's moving east at 50. This will be moving in the general direction of Akron. It'll be there in about 13 minutes, moving through Utah now. Uh, at this point, it does look like it's just crossing over I-20. I keep looking for, to see if we can find any kind of debris, sig debris signature, but uh, looks like potentially something going on there. It's just really hard when we're looking that high up in the, the storm to pick out a really clear indication of debris being lofted, but what we do see is a pretty good indication here that we've got something going on right on I-20 right now. We likely have uh, that strong rotation. Now let's look from the Birmingham radar, and that's kind of showing that rotation a little bit farther to the northeast than where we were looking at from that Columbus radar. So if you live anywhere near Utah, you need to be in that safe place. You need to be sheltered. We've got strong indications of rotation that are gonna be crossing over into Hale County here pretty soon. So uh, we're gonna keep an eye on this. I'm looking in the chat, not seeing any new updates of any kind of uh, damage coming from Greene County yet, but this is just now moving through. So it can sometimes take a little while for us to get those damage reports in. This will be crossing over into Northern Hale County shortly here, uh, moving close to Stewart, moving close to Moundville, and then from there on, it'll likely be crossing over into southern Tuscaloosa County. But as we've been saying, this does not include the city of Tuscaloosa. This does not include downtown Tuscaloosa. This is going to stay south of I-20 in Tuscaloosa County. However, it did just cross I-20 in Greene County, and it's going to continue moving eastward at about 50 miles per hour. So let's take another look. Let's, let's, let's take a look at Wexo 5 real quick. Uh, this is going to be some video coming from Utah. This is... Uh, at the intersection of Interstate 5920 and Alabama Highway 14. Uh, this is at the Love's truck stop, and uh, that is our best look at this <clears throat> potential tornadic circulation that is coming up into uh, Utah. And again, uh, this was taken uh, just not that long ago, probably about five to ten minutes ago, and that is the part of the storm that is likely producing a tornado. And again, it's very, very similar to the track that we saw uh, a couple of months ago that where a tornado hit uh, Utah, then it crossed the river and went over into Hale County at Stewart. And uh, for the, anybody affected by that tornado, understand this one's taking a very, very, very similar track. And again, that's uh, clearly the best look we have seen at this. And again, this uh, is video coming from uh, the Love's Truck Stop at the intersection of Alabama 14 and Interstate 5920, uh, just north of downtown uh, Utah. And uh, this was taken within the past uh, five to ten minutes. And that uh, circulation is coming through Utah right now. And it could very well be a tornado down. And uh, again, that's going to be crossing over into 
uh, uh, Hale County at this point. So again, uh, that's the best visual I can give you. And again, we have learned over and over from social scientists that we need to be showing this so people will do something. And remember, most of our tornadoes we can't show you because uh, they're rain wrapped or, you know, we just don't have a camera there. So again, the, the circulation is located here. This is Utah. It's, it seems like the circulation is passing a little north of Utah, maybe a little north of that track from a couple of months ago. <clears throat> but the circulation is going to be crossing over the river. This is the Black Warrior right here. So the circulation crosses the Warrior into Northern Hale. And again, Akron here, Stewart here. And again, uh, Stewart had that significant damage from the tornado here a couple of months ago. And that's going to be moving up in the same general direction and then ultimately crossing Alabama Highway 69, which is right here. This is Highway 69 coming south out of Moundville. This is the split. Havana Junction is here. That's Alabama 60, and this is Alabama 69. Uh, 69 goes down to Greensboro. Highway 60 uh, goes down toward uh, Wedgworth. And again, that uh, tornadic circulation is clearly going to be coming up here, crossing the river, uh, ultimately moving toward perhaps Stewart or maybe Moundville. So again, uh, Moundville down to Stewart, Akron. You've got to be sheltered here in northern Hale County. This is uh, uh, this thing has been here a long time. Uh, it has um, had amazing staying power. And again, the velocity signature looks very good at this point. Uh, so again, uh, please understand there's a chance we've got a tornado down. And in a few minutes, we can give an all clear to Greene County. I can't do that yet. Uh, that circulation seems to be on U.S. 11 or maybe just east of U.S. 11, about three miles north of downtown Utah. Uh, it's not too far from the uh, Green Track facility right here. Uh, Green Track is located right here where my finger is. And again, that uh, tornadic circulation is really between downtown Utah and Green Track. And then crossing the river, coming over here into northern Hale County. Uh, so again, uh, this uh, circulation looks good. And one more time, let's go back to that. I want to show that video one more time. This is what it looked like from the Love's Truck Stop in Utah. And again, this was about 15 minutes ago. Uh, this is from U.S. Uh, or sorry, uh, Alabama Highway 14 and Interstate 5920. And these things are going to be rain wrapped today. We, we cannot show you a lot of these tornadoes, but again, I have reason to believe there's probably a tornado down in that video. Can't guarantee that, but I think based on the radar signatures, that certainly is going to be the uh, case. And um, again, um, we do have one report of a mobile home destroyed in Emel up in Sumter County, and uh, that uh, trailer was possibly occupied. The rescue units are on the way to investigate, and that's the same tornado that came through uh, Sumter County, uh, north of York and Livingston uh, in uh, Emel. So we've had reports of damage there, and we could easily have the same kind of reports of damage in, <clears throat> in Green and, and Hale County. So again, let's go back to the radar. Uh, this is our tornadic circulation right here. Uh, we can now give an all clear to Interstate 5920. Uh, if you need to travel on Interstate 5920 between Tuscaloosa and Meridian, you're okay from this particular tornadic circulation. It's now well to the east of Interstate 5920, which is here. It's east of US 11, which is right here. And it's about to cross over the river. And again, Stewart is here. Moundville is here. And uh, really, everybody in this whole polygon should be sheltered, but uh, we don't want anybody in a trailer, in a mobile home you got to get out. And this has been a long, long lead warning here. Hopefully people have had plenty of time to do that, but you can't be in a mobile home. You've got to be in a shelter or a gas station or a fast food restaurant, any place that offers shelter from this particular storm. And in a site built home, you're going to be in a bathroom, a closet, a hallway, lowest floor near the center, no windows, wearing a helmet, a bicycle helmet, a batting helmet, football helmet that offers great protection. Uh, and again, this is all way south of Tuscaloosa. And a, a small part of Tuscaloosa County is in the polygon. This would include uh, Hull on 69 south into Hale County, Duncanville on US 82 uh, down to the Bibb County line. Hagler is right here. Uh, technically, the Mercedes plant is right on the far edge of this polygon. Uh, so just be aware of that. If you're uh, in the Mercedes plant, you've got to watch this really carefully. But uh, tornadic circulation now is right here. And again, it's, it's got a clear northeastward trajectory on this. 
And uh, again, crossing the river, coming up here, I'd say in the direction of Stewart and Moundville, right in through here. Stewart had the damage recently. Moundville is right here. Moundville's had a long history of dealing with tornadoes, going way, way back in history. Uh, any late uh, updates on damage, Taylor, from your end here? Uh, the last I saw was the uh, mobile home that was destroyed in the Amel area uh, from this same system. That's the last report that I have seen thus far. Um, been monitoring social media. I've also been monitoring uh, our Slack chat. And uh, the, the focus at this point continues to be this circulation still showing pretty good signs of rotation. And it could be that we have uh, a tornado either imminent or already on the ground. Hard to pick out any kind of correlation coefficient drop, but that doesn't mean that this is not on the ground. And this is a pretty good indication when you see those reds and those greens, they're very close to each other. So this is a pretty strong indica indication of uh, consistent rotation within this storm. It's not just one scan showing rotation, the next scan broadening out. This has been consistent, clear rotation within this thunderstorm. And based on that compelling video that we saw just a few minutes ago that James was showing us, uh, there's, there's something suspicious going on with this thunderstorm, which could be uh, it trying to get its act together and drop a tornado if it hasn't already at this point. Uh, so moving in the general direction of Stewart, of Cypress, of Moundville, uh, we are getting a new update that this is going to continue this tornado warning and it, it's now confirmed, uh, confirmed tornado observed very close to Akron. So now we have, let's see if that was based on correlation coefficient. There it is. Yeah, we now have a clear debris signature. So we've been waiting and watching for that. And now we have the confirmation based on radar debris signature that this is a tornado on the ground, very close to Akron. Very let's look close at WEXO 5 real quick, Taylor. Uh, this is from Utah a little earlier. Oh, man. <clears throat> from the Piggly Wiggly, and that's your tornado. Uh, again, this was taken from downtown Utah, the Piggly Wiggly. Uh, you can see the water tower there on the right and the tornado in the center of that uh, screen there. So again, uh, this is what's crossing over into, uh, into hail. So let's go back to the uh, radar here. And again, uh, we have uh, uh, clearly a tornado that is down uh, that is located a little to the east of Utah. And that's in the process of crossing the Warrior. This is the Warrior River right here. All right. And that's going to be crossing into hail. And again, the town of Akron is here. The community of Stewart is here. Uh, most likely this tornado is going to be north of Akron, but it's going to be very close to Stewart, maybe close to Moundville. That's the greatest concern here. So in northern Hale, and again, all of this, all of this is far north of Greensboro. You're not involved in this at all. Uh, but if you are in the communities of Stewart, Cypress, Moundville, you got to be in a safe place. It's coming across the river right now. The Warrior. Next up will be Stewart. And again, we had a lot of severe damage in Stewart a few weeks ago. And the same area is uh, going to deal with it uh, right now. And in Tuscaloosa County, Duncanville, US 82, Hull on 69 South down here toward Moundville. And, and again, we want to stress for mamas and daddies that have kids at the University of Alabama. This, this is close, but it does not involve Tuscaloosa or the University of Alabama. This is all south of there. Uh, by about uh, 25 miles or so. <clears throat> so a possible tornadic circulation. Utah, you're all clear. All clear for Utah. You're out of the polygon. In fact, I would say most all of Greene County will give you an all clear. Greene County, all clear. The concern now, it's northern Hale County. And again, that uh, tornado is on the river right now. And, and often where you see the debris being lofted like that, uh, again, that's, you're looking at tree limbs, maybe parts of buildings. Uh, I don't have any specific damage ports coming in from uh, Utah at this point. Um, We're still getting a lot of Sumter County damage reports in. Yeah. Um, she, th this is um, a report. Uh, my sister in Utah, no power, no cell service. Tornado was on the ground when it went through. She said it was really close to her. Um, And uh, again, uh, looking at all these uh, videos that are coming in here, and uh, there's pretty good sign. There's no doubt that it's down. Uh, and, we, and we hope that it's out in the woods. This is a fairly sparsely populated part of the state now, but there's a lot of folks that do live over here on the river. 
Uh, they have boat houses. They have vacation homes there. Folks live there permanently, and it's a marvelous place to live. Again, this is the Warrior River south of Tuscaloosa, north of Demopolis. And again, that's uh, moving into the northern part of Hale County. Uh, again, this is going to be passing north of Akron. The old Akron School is, is about where that A is right there. Uh, this is the community of Stewart, and that'll be close to Stewart. It might be passing a little south of Moundville, but it's really close. And again, if you're in Moundville, you've got to be sheltered. Many of the schools are in session today. And listen, for, for a lot of, let me just, the, the school thing is hard. It is really hard about, do you dismiss schools? Do you keep kids in school? But in so many cases, a school building is a better shelter for a lot of children. In some cases, kids are sent home to a mobile home by themselves. I, I would rather kids be in school uh, quite frankly, on days like this in many, many, many systems, okay? It's different for every system. I understand that. Uh, but some systems are closing early, and you get all the notifications, and, and we really don't need to do that anymore here. But uh, again, for those that are uh, in school, those buildings are pretty good. Uh, of course, the new school buildings are tornado shelters, but even the old ones are pretty good. So I would imagine the uh, kids are sheltered here at uh, the elementary school in Malville, Hale County High School. Uh, I imagine they're sheltered at this point. If they're in session, I think they are. Uh, but again, there's a possible tornado that is approaching Highway 69. Again, to get your bearings straight, that's Alabama 69 right here. Howell Field, where uh, Hale County plays their football games. It's right there at my fingertip. And this is the split. Uh, this is Havana Junction. 69 goes down to Greensboro. Highway 60 goes down to Wedgworth. And this Tornadic circulation most likely is going to be north of the junction here, and it'll be crossing Highway 69 near or south of Moundville. And again, it's basically coming through the community of Stewart uh, right now. And uh, this has been a very, an amazingly long-lasting signature here. But the good news, Taylor, it looks like the thing might be broadening out a little bit, but still, you know, even with that being the case, you've got to stay, uh, you've got to stay uh, sheltered here. Um, and... Uh, as we look, the, the one thing, uh, and again, there's so many reports coming in. We've had no fatalities today, to my knowledge. We've had reports of injuries in Winston County, but, but we've not had really confirmed reports of injuries from there. We've got Valerie Bell and Bill Castle in Winston County, Delmar Ashridge, where the tornado came through about 8.15 this morning. Well, and as soon as we can, we'll go to them. We, we have to stay with this information now. And once we get the tornado warnings out of the way, we can start to cover the damage. Uh, but again, uh, this is a possible tornado that's coming up in the community of Cypress here. Uh, and again, Highway 69 is right here. So everybody in Moundville, you've got to be sheltered. You've got to be sheltered now. And if you can't pop on a helmet, a bicycle helmet, if your kids play sports, a batting helmet, motorcycle helmet, football helmet. That really makes you safe. And if you know anybody that lives in these places, we call out. You can help us. You can be a part of the process by calling them or texting them and telling them to turn on the coverage here and watch. And if they can't watch, you tell them what we're saying uh, and that we have a tornado that is down in Hale County near the community of Stewart. That'll be crossing Highway 69 near or south of Moundville in about five minutes. And then coming out in the general direction of Duncanville and southeastern Tuscaloosa County uh, near the Bibb County line. This is all south of the city of Tuscaloosa. Uh, and again, if you are in uh, Tuscaloosa, uh, this is all south of you. Looks like Tuscaloosa is going to come away unscathed today. But the SPC's put out a, a mesoscale update indicating that this is really where the best uh, uh, environment will be for tornadoes. Uh, this area in the broad zone between Tuscaloosa and Linden and Butler in west and southwest Alabama. This is where the better combination of instability uh, or buoyancy and shear will be for the next couple of hours. Uh, and the tornado watch is in effect until one. But really quickly, Taylor, let's go to a broad view. I want to show the big picture reflectivity and show people what's happening in other parts of the state. We're focusing on this because it is the only <clears throat> tornado warning we have in the whole state right now. We might have another one. Okay. There we go. All right, so this is our new tornado warning. So this is going to be farther south. And let's pop the velocity on. Uh, this is going to be, yeah, okay. So there's your second circulation here. And this one is just south of Livingston, uh, south of the University of West Alabama. And this circulation is going to be affecting southern, the southern tip of green, 
the southern half of Hale, the northern part of Marengo. Okay, so some of the communities involved in this polygon would be Greensboro, Newburn, Galleon, Demopolis, Forkland, Belmont, and Bellamy. Uh, those communities. So we now have a second tornado warning in effect for parts of West Alabama for a second circulation that is about maybe four or five miles south, southwest of Livingston. Uh, York is not involved in this. The circulation is east of York. Uh, so this is circulation number one near Moundville and uh, Hale County, northern Hale County. Circulation number two is south of Livingston in Sumter County. So for the northern circulation, we have a tornado warning in effect for northern Hale, southeastern Tuscaloosa counties. For the southern circulation, we have a tornado warning in effect for eastern Sumter, southern Green, the southern half of Hale County, extreme northern Marengo County. Uh, as that moves on to the east. Uh, so two circulations we're working now, and these are the two warnings we have in the state in terms of tornadoes. I understand for some of you it's raining, there's thunder, lightning, but understand we have to focus on the storms that are life-threatening, and these are the two we have uh, in progress uh, at this point. Um, so, uh, Duncanville to Moundville. You've got to be sheltered for this northern circulation here. This one has been down for a long time. It, it has been out there for a very long time. And let me turn all this off. Goodness gracious. Um, Taylor, I'll let you pick it up for just one second here. All right. Sounds like World War V has broken out over here. <laughs> well, so as James has been saying, we've been tracking these two tornado circulations. This, this new one just south of Livingston, moving in the general direction of Forkland and Demopolis. And we have our camera in Demopolis, so we're going to be watching that carefully as this circulation gets closer. Not showing much there right now, obviously, as this storm is still well off to the west. But uh, headed in your direction, and then we've got that second circulation near Mount Volm. And uh, we're going to continue watching that move through northern Hale County. I wanted to go ahead and put on the correlation coefficient here. And we are still showing a lowering of the CC with that northern circulation that's just south of Mount Volm. Uh, so that could mean that that tornado we knew it was on the ground because we saw that debris signature because it's not as clear of a picture in the debris signature as it was earlier that tornado may have lifted and what might be going on is that we might be seeing the southern circulation become the dominant circulation uh, so we'll keep an eye on it of course if you are sheltered in northern Hale or extreme southeastern Tuscaloosa County stay there. You're still under a tornado warning, but what might be going on here is that this southern circulation might be taking over as the stronger storm. So we'll watch the radar trends on that. Um, I am looking here. It looks like there's going to be a new uh, tornado watch issued uh, for locations just south of the current tornado watch. So we'll be watching that carefully as well. That would be mainly for uh, folks included in the Montgomery television market. But at this point, we have two tornado warnings. One that includes northern Hale County, southeastern Tuscaloosa County, a second one that includes parts of Sumter County, southern Greene County, and southern Hale County. Uh, and we'll be tracking these towards, I'll put a track on that, that newer one because I haven't done that yet. Uh, Put a track on this. It's moving towards the east at about 50 miles per hour, I believe. 45. No, 50. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be an approximate arrival time. So this will be arriving uh, approximately near Forkland, 10:36 a.m. And this is going to continue moving a little bit northeast. So some of these cities are going to be just south of where the circulation passes. But this latest scan doesn't quite look as well defined. So besides that one tornado warning that we've been tracking all the way back since Mississippi that went through parts of Sumter County, went through Greene County, most of the tornadoes we've seen today have been very quick. There's that one exception, and that's going to be the northernmost warning that we're watching here now, that stayed down for a while. And there have been multiple reports of damage with this uh, with this storm. Let me circle that there. Sorry, I, we're hearing a lot of different sounds. We're getting different messages within the chat. And so different messages have different sounds. Um, but there's that circulation now, just to the south of Moundville. And I'll put on the Columbus radar there. 
noisy from that radar. So we're getting a more clear picture from the Birmingham radar as the system gets closer to that radar site in Shelby County. But at this point, does it show as tight of rotation as what we've had in the past with this storm? No, but it's still rotating. It still looks very suspicious. So uh, we'll continue to track that into really crossing over into southern Tuscaloosa County here pretty soon, uh, headed in the general direction of Duncanville. At this exact moment, no clear evidence that this has a tornado on the ground with it. We're not seeing a tornado debris signature with this, uh, but this storm has had a history of producing tornadoes. So with any type of rotation within that storm, we're going to continue to uh, keep that tornado warning in play. Let's go back down to this more southern warning. Once again, we're working two separate tornado warnings in central Alabama. And we're getting a better picture of that northern circulation from our Columbus radar. This is the broad circulation near Livingston right now that's going to be crossing over very close to Forkland in between, basically, in between Forkland and Nemopolis. That northern circulation is hanging on south of Moundville. It's about to cross over 60. It has just moved through uh, the Cypress area. I will check for any kind of correlation coefficient drop. We're not seeing that there. But broad circulation still within that storm. I'm going to give us just a big picture really quickly for those who are just now tuning in. We've got this line of thunderstorms that's associated with a cold front moving through today. It has already crossed through locations north and west of Birmingham. There are a few isolated showers remaining behind that line. But uh, the main concern for any kind of severe potential is going to be right along this line. And so that means locations that are south and east of Birmingham, you haven't gotten that line yet. So you still have the threat of severe weather. And I should note that there are some counties that have been dropped from the tornado watch, actually. So Marion, Winston, Lamar, Fayette counties are no longer included within a tornado watch. You are done with the severe threat from the system. Uh, Elsewhere, we have a tornado watch that lasts through 1 p.m. for all of these counties in yellow here. And you see those flashing red polygons. We are on the air because we do have two tornado warnings at this point that we are working simultaneously. Let's go to WEX 05 real quick. I want to show some of the images coming in from Moundville. And again, I, I just we, we're not going to be able to show you tornadoes today. Uh, it's just almost impossible to do. Uh, all of these images were captured near Moundville, and they're directly in this tornado warning uh, polygon. Uh, but that's what it's uh, looking like there, uh, evidence of a shelf cloud. Uh, and by the way, this is some of the damage coming in from uh, Ash Ridge up in uh, Winston County. The, uh, you know, s somebody just called me a bonehead because there's been no damage in Alabama today, and we're scaring people. I might be a bonehead, but there's damage. If you say that's not damage, you, you need some help. I mean, we've got uh, a lot of issues in Winston County. We've had damage today in parts of Morgan and Lawrence County and Limestone County. So you've got to take these tornado warnings uh, seriously. Uh, and again, that's an example of what these things have been doing today. And again, that's coming from Valerie Bell and Bill Castle. They're up in uh, Winston County at Ash Ridge. And I want to say that was a chicken house. A lot of chicken houses up there in, in that part of the state. So let's go back to the uh, radar. And James, we just got a big dump in the chat of all kinds of damage reports all okay. coming in at once. So. Okay, we'll get those in just a second. But first off, let's take a look at our storm here in Hale County. Let's zoom in on that. And uh, we want to, again, focus on these. We'll get to the damage reports in a second with Taylor. That tornadic circulation is now east of Highway 69, so we can give an all clear to Highway 69. If you need to travel from Tuscaloosa to Greensboro, you're okay now. The tornadic circulation is just southeast of Moundville, and again, that's moving northeast. That'll be crossing US 82. That's the next major route uh, that's in the path of this tornado down here in the southeastern tip of Tuscaloosa County near Hagler, Duncanville, near the Bibb County line. So again, everybody in Duncanville, Hagler, US 82, near the Bibb County line, you need to be sheltered. This warning is for the extreme extreme southeastern corner of Tuscaloosa County for the possibility of this tornado that has just crossed Highway 69 just south of downtown Moundville. Let's go back to the second circulation. We're working two right now. Uh, the southernmost circulation is the one that's coming through extreme northern Marengo and southern Green 
and southern hail counties. And this one looks like it's really starting to broaden out down here. That does not look like a tornado signature at this point. That's Columbus. It looks a little better uh, coming from Columbus Air Force Base. And again, uh, still, even though it's broad, we want people to stay sheltered. So again, for the southernmost tornado warning, everybody in uh, Greene County from Forkland South to Demopolis, you need to be sheltered. Uh, everybody in Hale County from Greensboro South, you need to be sheltered. That's Highway 69, Highway 25, Highway 61. All those three roads going south out of Greensboro. If you're close to those, you want to be sheltered. Hopefully this will continue to broaden out and the warning can be canceled. But at this point, no, that's not the case. The warning stays in effect. So if you're in any of these places, respect the polygon and stay sheltered. Let's go back to our northern storm, which is the one that's up here in uh, the northeastern part of Hale County. And again, we've given an all clear to Highway 69 uh, and that the circulation is now east of Highway 69. And from there, it'll be coming out toward US 82 uh, near or maybe south of Duncanville. And this little segment of US 82 kind of goes east and west in here. But from Duncanville and, and again, I guess the, you know, kind of the core landmark would be the school here at Duncanville from the school down to the Bibb County line. Everybody needs to stay sheltered. And if this happens to stay intact, this could ultimately affect northern Bibb. This is northern Bibb County. West Blockton is right here. And this is Shelby County. So again, if you're in Bibb or Shelby, just be aware that there could be a tornado warning this morning. So Taylor, what about those uh, damage reports? Go. Okay, so let's see here. Let me scroll up here. Um, we are getting trees down in Walker County. Um, Let's see, a lot of hail reports. Oh, let's see what else we got here. More Sumter County damage, tree on a house along Hammer Sumterville Road. That's when we had that TDS observed. Uh, a report of a mobile home destroyed in a mill, which we've talked about that one. Um, let's see what else we got. Keeps jumping around here. Um, Blunt County, we had some hail as well, and Gainesville, we got a new tornado warning. That's what that new sound meant. Um, sorry, it's jumping around in the chat because we keep getting new messages, and uh, we now have a new tornado warning, though, that's going to be downstream from this circulation here, which has been showing consistent rotation. This is the one that's been producing, uh, has a history of producing damage at times throughout its lifetime, and this is now going to include northern Bibb County. So basically from Brent northward, that does include West Blockton. Bibbville, you're right on the edge of that polygon. Uh, but this is now is a new tornado warning that goes through 1130 AM. And we've got Evan in Brent. So he's going to be very close to the circulation uh, as it does cross just to the north of Brent. So hopefully he's going to be able to give us a clear picture of what's going on on the ground from this storm. But uh, this is a new tornado warning now. Brent, the city of Brent, you're just south of this warning. Eoline, you are included in this. West Blockton included in this. Six Mile included. Ashby included. That rotation is sitting right on the southern Tuscaloosa and uh, northern Hale County line just to the south of Duncanville. I'm going to switch radar sites just to make sure we are looking at the most clear picture of this rotation. And you can see this has had a history. This has been the one storm that has been cycling, strengthening. Sometimes it broadens out, but then it picks right back up. Some of the tornado warnings we had earlier did produce tornadoes, but after that, they just kind of dissipated. That has not been the case with this storm so far. Thus far, this storm has continued to maintain its strength as it must be riding along some kind of boundary. Um, that it's just allowing that storm to continue uh, its rotation. But this is kind of the, the bigger picture of this, this warning here. This storm is just to the southeast of Moundville. It's going to quickly cross into extreme southeastern Tuscaloosa near Hagler and then move likely through the Hagler area, moving just north of Euline in the general direction of West Blockton as it continues on that northeastward track. I want to remind you, Tuscaloosa, downtown Tuscaloosa, you are not included in this warning. This is going to stay south of your area. This will likely stay just to the south of Coling and likely just to the south of I-20. 
uh, Bibble, you're right on that line there. This is taking more of an east northeastward track, so it's headed in the general direction of Hagler and eventually will be impacting West Blockton. Uh, after that, I'll do a storm track on this. I haven't done a storm track on this system in a while. And the new update on the motion, storm motion is going to be towards the northeast at 45, and I will draw that based on that timing there. So we're looking at Eoline 1049 is the approximate arrival time for the circulation, but you should already be in that safe place now. You are now included in the tornado warning polygon. As soon as you get that, that warning, you go to that safe place. Uh, if this holds together, Centerville might stay to your south, but that would be 1056 a.m. The, the reason this fan spreads out is because as we go farther in time, there's a little bit more uncertainty in the exact track of that circulation. So that's why sometimes you'll see cities included that might not necessarily be in the exact path of that circulation. Uh, but we're just trying to call out cities. And if you live near one of those cities, you recognize the name of that city, you know, hey, that's kind of close to me. You need to be paying attention to this. And if you're within this polygon, you need to be in your safe place. We now are getting was that a new? No, that was not a new tornado warning. I have so many chats open, I keep getting all different kinds of uh, notifications here. Let's check on that southern system. That's moving very close to Forklands now. That's going to be crossing over uh, really right in between Forkland and Demopolis here pretty soon. And we have that Demopolis camera pulled up, not seeing much on it. Now let's take that Demopolis camera full screen if we can. Uh, uh, this is for the southern rotation, and again, the camera is on top of the Demopolis Civic Center. Uh, that's looking back to the west into Sumter County, and uh, that's looking to the south over toward Bluff Hall. Uh, and again, uh, the, the, it is just going to be so impossible to, uh, uh, to show tornadoes uh, today, uh, and that's typically the case with most every event we have here. Uh, there's a tug coming down the uh, river there. That's the Tom Bigby. So let's go back to the radar really quickly. And again, uh, as Taylor pointed out, there's a lot of things going on here. This is the southern potential tornado here that'll be crossing US 43 north of Demopolis up here toward Forkland. Forkland is right here. The Forkland City Hall is about where the A is on that uh, map. Of course, Demopolis is right here. And again, that'll be crossing Highway 43 soon. That's about to cross the Tom Bigby north of Demopolis, okay? So let's go back to our northern uh, warning up here. This one is a little closer to home. This one is, uh, again, you can see we have tornado warnings in effect now for uh, extreme southeastern Tuscaloosa County. This storm is riding the Hale Tuscaloosa County line, and that's going to be crossing over into Bibb County here in a matter of minutes. Uh, the tornadic circulation probably near or just south of Duncanville. Uh, that'll be cutting out here across US 82 somewhere between Bryn and Duncanville. And again, we advise nobody, nobody traveling on US 82 between Brent and Duncanville for the next 15 minutes. We'll give you an all clear soon. Uh, and the warning for Bibb, understand uh, downtown Brent is here, downtown Centerville is here. And the polygon extent is just north of Centerville and Brent. This includes West Blockton. Uh, and again, all the way up to the far northern part of the county around Caffey Junction, Bibville, uh, Bibville and Woodstock. And again, I want to stress, there's no danger to Tuscaloosa here. I, we're getting reports that some schools in Tuscaloosa and Northport are putting kids in halls. There is apps. Uh, you know, I've seen some screen grabs of apps that are telling people there's a tornado warning in the city of Tuscaloosa and Northport. There isn't. I, I just beg you to please find a good source of information. Uh, these apps are crap apps. They're horrible. Some of these that are out there. And you've got to find a reliable source of information when weather like this is happening. And you don't need to be putting kids in the hall when there's no danger because that, that's, it, it gives the illusion of false warnings and there's just a lot of problems with that. So again, if you don't like us, that's fine. But please find a reliable source of information. There's a gazillion weather apps and most of them are just horrible on a day like today. They do you no good. All right, so we have a possible TDS here, a tornado debris signature that's sitting on the uh, Hale Tuscaloosa County line. This is well to the east of Moundville, about uh, five miles south of Duncanville. And the TDS will be crossing US 82 between Duncanville and Brent in a matter of minutes. And again, out here toward Hagler, and this is near the Tuscaloosa Bibb County line. So again, the, the most urgent need at this point, it's to be sure that we have people off US 82 
between Duncanville and Brent. Nobody should be along those that highway at this point. And the next major highway this will be crossing is Alabama Highway 5. Now, the Mercedes plant is right here. Okay, A lot of people asking about that. My fingers on the Mercedes plant. You're not in the polygon. The Mercedes plant is here's the polygon edge. The Mercedes plant is here. This is US 11. That's Interstate 5920. The Mercedes plant not in this polygon. Okay, uh, But areas just to the south are. And again, this is the extreme southeastern corner of Tuscaloosa County in the northern part of Bibb County. Uh, so again, this is Alabama Highway 5. That'll be a major highway where nobody should be traveling on that between Caffey Junction and Brent over the next 30 minutes or so. Okay, so uh, again, we have right there the possibility of a tornado that is uh, lofting debris on the Tuscaloosa Hale County line, and that's about to cross over soon into uh, Bibb County. Again, this is Tuscaloosa County. This is Bibb right here, and this is US 82. So that's the uh, concern northern Bibb, north of Centerville, north of Brent. And again, Centerville, Brent, you are not in the polygon. Uh, it seems as though so many people are using these older legacy systems that that are trying to state that entire counties are under warnings. It doesn't work that way. The tornado is small. A county is big. We warn for just a small part of a county, and that's the reason we have these polygons. All this crazy this, this stuff I say, there's a reason for that. We're trying to educate people about how this works. And maybe we're not doing a good job, I don't know. But understand, an entire county is not under a tornado warning. It's a small part of a county. And again, we stress in Tuscaloosa County, Tuscaloosa is not even close to the danger here. Tuscaloosa Northport, uh, the tornadic circulation is down here south, just south of Duncanville, uh, near the Tuscaloosa-Hale County line, about to move over into a northern Bibb. So this is the... Northern storm. Let's go back to our southern storm real quick. We're working two tornado warnings today. Uh, this is the northern one. So, Taylor, let's go back down to the uh, southern warning, which is going to be the one that's not too far from Demopolis and Forkland in southern Greene County. And we're going to bounce back and forth between the two. Let's put the velocity back on here. And again, uh, that's, this is all noise. We have no TDS in here, but that tornadic circulation is located uh, about maybe eight miles north of Demopolis. Demopolis has been taken out of the polygon here, just so you'll know. The city of Demopolis not in danger. The tornadic circulation is going to be closer to Forkland. Uh, this is U.S. 43, so no travel from the Warrior River on U.S. 43. Uh, the King Bridge all the way up to uh, Forkland until this passes. Soon we can give an all clear to US 43. From there, it's going to cross the Warrior and then come over into Hale County. And again, Greensboro is in the polygon for this one. So if you're in Hale County, Greensboro, uh, Newburn is on the edge of the polygon here uh, around the old Sunshine High School, County Road 10 down here. Uh, Hale County, Southern Hale County, including Greensboro, Greensboro and Point South, you're in this polygon. So this is our second. We have two tornado warnings we're working. This is the southern warning in effect for Southern Green and Southern Hale Counties for a possible tornadic circulation on the Todd Bigby that's about to cross Highway 43 near or just south of Forkland. And again, that A is the Forkland City Hall right there. From there, it's going to cross over the Warrior, uh, pretty close to the Green County Generation Plant of Alabama Power Company. Uh, so just be aware of that. And I would assume that everybody at the plant, they are in their safe place at this point. It might be a little north of there, but boy, it's close. Uh, and from the Green County plant, it goes over into Hale County. And again, Greensboro, anybody down highways 69, 25, and 61, you've got to be sheltered. So that's our southern storm. Let's go back to our northern storm. Uh, this is going to be the second that we're watching. And uh, the good news, it looks as though the circulation is broad. We've still got the TDS here. And again, oftentimes when a tornado dissipates, the debris stays aloft for a while, but the rotation is really broadened out here. We're getting a good look at this coming from the Birmingham or Shelby County Airport radar, which is really close to this, so a good low level slice. So it looks as though the circulation near Hagler is starting to broaden out. Again, this is near the Tuscaloosa Bibb County line, the broad rotation on US 82. And if that continues, hopefully the Weather Service can uh, cancel that out. And uh, again, um, the, the dominant circulation really is becoming the southern one right now. So still, remember, the, the, the way it works with these polygons, if you're in it, you respect it and you stay sheltered. And if you're not, you're good to go, but watch the weather carefully. And if you're still, even though we have broad circulation, the thing seems to be dissipating, we still want people in West Blockton sheltered if you're in this polygon. But the dominant circulation seems to be that southern one. So let's go back to the southern circulation. This is the one that's near or just south of Forkland. And uh, this is uh, basically crossing over in a matter of minutes, uh, US 43, which is right here. 
And uh, again, everybody in the Greene County steam plant, the generation plan of Alabama Power should be sheltered. Uh, and again, from there, it's going to cross over the Warrior. Right now, it's on the Tom Bigby. The Warrior is right here. And then it crosses over into the southern part of Hale County. So uh, we got a tornadic circulation that's about to cross Highway 43. This is in southern Greene County. And again, this is well south of Utah. In this case, Utah is not in the polygon. This is in effect for the southern part of Greene County. And this is passing north of Demopolis. And let's point that camera north just to see by Taylor, if any chance, our Demopolis camera north. Let's take our sky cam and we'll point it to the north and we'll see if we can see anything. So if you guys in the back can uh, uh, let's see, Taylor, if you can hit the sky cam uh, or somebody can take that. Uh, thank you. All right, let's pan up a little bit and see. Look at the lightning. Wow. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. And maybe not. Slowly but surely. And again, we're looking north from the Demopolis Civic Center. The Demopolis Civic Center sits on the historic white bluffs of the Tom Bigby at Demopolis, looking back toward the uh, marina. And again, uh, that, if we have a tornado, it's going to be over there. Let's pan a little bit to the right again. Uh, uh, it's going to be pretty much where we saw those lightning strikes. And again, we're not expecting to see a tornado on the cameras today because these are rain wrapped. Uh, but again, uh, that's the view coming from the Civic Center in Demopolis looking north. And I would not want to be a boat out there in that river today. So, uh, Taylor, any uh, damage reports from your end over there? Not that I'm seeing yet as of recently with these two separate cells. I um, haven't seen any new reports coming in. Um, and so it appears that th this circulation here is showing fairly good rotation. It's a little bit more noisy within this last scan, but hopefully if there's something out there, we can pick that up on... Our camera view here, it's just, as you mentioned, it's really hard for us to see tornadoes on days like this when they are rain wrapped. I will take us back up to that northern circulation again and let's just kind of get a feel for what's going on and how that, that storm is evolving. Um, and let's see if we are still picking up on a, we're still showing a fairly strong uh, indication of a TDS with that, that northern circulation. That would be right here, which on the velocity, it's not super impressive. So it might just be that it's taking a little while for this, this uh, TDS to kind of go away. But uh, if we have something going on, it would be moving directly over the Hagler community at this point, moving over uh, 82, State Route 6, and it's going to be headed in the general direction of West Blockton after that. I do know that we have uh, Evan in Bibb County, so uh, hopefully He's going he's gonna to get an eye on this storm, and so we can kind of get a, get a feel for what's going on on the ground. I don't know if his live stream is available um, in the back, but oh, this, this is Evan's. And uh, do we know exactly where Evan is? Is he headed north from the Brent area? Uh, can he hear us? Can he, uh, can he hear us? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. What are you seeing out there, Evan? Hey, um, so uh, actually I was just listening, of course, been listening to you guys, and I'm really close to that uh, that CC you were just talking about near the Hagler community. Uh, it was pouring rain. It has just stopped. It's actually a very eerily calm, but I am on 82. I believe County Road 26 was right behind me. Let's see what mile marker I'm coming up on here. It looks like uh, mile marker 74. Uh, and again, this is headed uh, east towards Tuscaloosa. Uh, nothing happening now, but uh, you know, I'm tracking this on radar just like you guys are uh, in the studio. And um, it has appeared to have a consistent uh, TDS with it. Um, there's still been a lot of people uh, on the roads here, plenty of lightning with this. But I, I was trying to position myself to the south so I could inch back north. You never really want to be uh, north of one of these. And to y'all's point, um, not only is there a ton of rainfall, but there's a lot of trees too. That makes it very um, difficult as far as positioning yourself somewhere safe. I'm actually about to turn a corner here. We might get a better look um, at the base of this cell. If nothing else, it still looks like it has really impressive winds, but we should be looking about right into it based on uh, the radar as it stands now. I got people pulling off the road um, in front of me, so... Um, yeah, you can just tell by the uh, looking ahead here, visibility not great. Um, if we do have a tornado, 
it's likely going to be uh, a lot of rain. I'm trying to keep the, uh, the windshield clear here. But yeah, we're essentially looking right into it now uh, where that uh, circulation would be. Uh, not seeing anything at this moment of notice. Um, and looks Evan, nasty uh, as far as uh, the colors and everything else, but based on the uh, the latest radar scans, we're still showing a, a very clear TDS with this. I know you said you've been watching that as well, and the uh, National Weather Service in Birmingham has uh, went ahead and uh, continued this tornado warning based on the the. Uh, the TDS there and it does look suspicious what you've got going on in front of you you know you can definitely tell there's some kind of rotation going on within those clouds um, and that that TDS is now crossing just over uh, County Road 58 or 82 there and we still have what appears to be indication of that rotation and potentially a tornado that could be on the ground at this point we will look at the velocity and in the velocity you're seeing a little bit of rotation here but the TDS looks more impressive than the rotation at this point uh, with that storm. So now we just looked at that storm. We've got Evan. He's got eyes on that storm. He's going to continue tracking that for us. We can go back down to that southernmost warning again and get a check on that one. Still showing some rotation with this one as well. And I will circle that there. That'll be continuing to move in the general direction of Greensboro if this holds together. Once again, we are looking fairly high up in the storm, though, so it's it can be hard for us to get a really clear picture of what's happening at the surface. But both the Columbus and Birmingham radar sites are showing uh, quite a bit of rotation with this as it moves eastward uh, in the general direction of Greensboro. So let's go back up to that northernmost warning because that is the one that is yes, showing. So, while, we're, while we're looking TDS. at that real quick, Taylor, uh, somebody just reported that there's a tornado down at Jim Bird's farm on uh, 40. Let's go back to that southern one real quick. Uh, if we can take me with a radar behind me here. Um, yeah, so uh, we've had multiple reports of, of that producing a tornado uh, near Jim Bird. You see those hay animals on US 43. Um, and I don't know if there's been any damage there. I, I can't say that, but uh, that tornadic circulation is now near the uh, uh, Greene County steam plant over here on the river, Alabama Power Company plant. So again, we're getting, and we're also, we got reports of people trapped in Bellamy, Taylor, from this tornado when it was in Sumter County. Um, and uh, again, uh, this is uh, back probably 30 minutes ago, but I'm just re relaying these reports to let you know this is a serious situation here, all right? Uh, so this tornado, again, is near the uh, Greene County steam plant. It's about to cross over into uh, Hale County. That's 69 coming south out of Greensboro, six, uh, 25 and 61. Nobody should be driving anywhere in southern Hale County. And if you live in a mobile home, you got to be out. you got to be in a shelter, okay? you got to be in that shelter. So that's the southern tornado. We just wanted to relay those reports. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's go up to the northern circulation up here. And uh, it's just really not there. It's very broad, and we're seeing no evidence of a tornado at this point, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, again, this is northern Bib, and uh, and the TDS I guess is gone, Taylor, from this one. Uh, most likely, uh, we'll take a look at uh, it the. Was just there a few minutes ago. Yeah, and again, oftentimes when a tornado dissipates, the debris will stay aloft for a while, and you'll see that TDS, and it's still there. And again, understand as long as that polygon, that red box, is flashing. You've got to be in a safe place. You've got to be sheltered. And as soon as the Weather Service believes it's not coming back and they'll drop the warning, they'll drop the warning. And they haven't done that yet. Uh, so again, we still have a tornado warning in effect now for the northern part of Bibb County uh, for the possibility of a tornado that will be crossing Highway 5 near West Blockton soon. But again, back to the velocity. And again, you can see that there's just not much there. And uh, Evan, uh, let's bring up Evan real quick. Evan's up in this area. Evan, tell us where you are and what you've got down there now. Uh, just to the east of uh, mile marker 74 on um, Highway 82, I was looking north. It, it got windy for a bit, and um, that, that was about it. About as close as uh, I could be radar-wise to where the circulation was. But as you guys said, it really broadened out. Ended up being uh, a lot of heavy rain, some lightning. Uh, but that's about it um, besides, besides the winds. I'm going to double back. I saw a couple emergency vehicles headed in the direction of 82 West. 
And uh, so I'll probably get ahead that way and see if there was any uh, you know damage reports back with this storm. Because as Taylor pointed out, uh, there was a pretty good TDS on this thing up until it reached Highway 82. So um, I think it's past us here. Uh, West Blockton looks to be the, the next one up. But again, uh, looking like that, that uh, overall road circulation has dissipated, which is certainly good news. And now we're just seeing rain and, and not really any wind anymore on the back side of this. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Evan. We appreciate you being out in the uh, field today. And uh, again, uh, uh, it's it's tough when you're out in the field, you're working these rain wrap storms like this. It's uh, very, very uh, challenging. Uh, so again, uh, let's see, I want to go really quickly to uh, WEX 05 if we can. And I want to show you what these things have been doing today. Uh, this is damage at Emel. Uh, this is in Sumter County. This is the tornado that came through northern Sumter earlier this morning. And it looks like a mobile home has been destroyed there. And uh, we've, got, we've got considerable damage in parts of Sumter County from that one and another one that came through the southern part of Sumter County near Bellamy. Uh, so again, that's just a reminder of what these things are capable of doing today. And this is why we got to get people out of mobile homes and out of cars and into safe places until these uh, pass. So let's go back to the radar. It is now 1049. Uh, I'm James Spam with Taylor Sorello. We've been working this outbreak here for a while, say outbreak, this tornado uh, warning situation. So let's go back to the radar if we can with me uh, in front of the radar. Thank you. This is the uh, dominant storm to watch right now. This is the one coming through southern Hale County. And again, Taylor's putting on a storm track of some of the potential communities in the path of this. And all of these communities are uh, over the southern half of Greene County. Earlier, we had a warning for Moundville and Stewart and Akron, the uh, northern part of the county. Uh, these are communities in the southern part of the county uh, for this tornadic circulation that has uh, just come across the uh, warrior. And let me just say that if you're in Greene County, we'll give you an all clear now. So for southern Greene from this tornadic circulation, an all clear. The concern is for southern hail and again basically from Greensboro south. Uh, so if you're anywhere south of Greensboro, you need to be sheltered. Uh, and notice the polygon has been shrinking. That's the way it works with polygons. As the tornado gets closer, we can narrow down the danger area. And Demopolis, Galleon, uh, Fawnsdale, all those communities down to the south along US 80, you are not close to this now. So uh, this is strictly for the central and southern part of Hale County. And it's going to be pretty close to the town of Greensboro right here. Greensboro is the county seat, largest uh, community in Hale County. Everybody in Greensboro needs to be sheltered from this tornado. They've been producing damage today. And again, you've seen a lot of images, and I'll show you more as we have time to do that. But uh, we want folks to be safe and to be sheltered. The last thing we want today is any type of loss of life or serious injuries. And so far, I don't think we've had that. We've had reports of minor injuries uh, with the storm up in Winston. And uh, we've had tornado damage in parts of Sumter, parts of Morgan and Lawrence counties today, uh, Limestone County. But again, so far, no reports of any severe injuries or loss of life, which is the whole point of why we do this. But uh, clearly, if you are in Greensboro, you want to be out of a mobile home. You don't want to be in a car in a site built house. You want to be in a hall closet bathroom near the center, away from windows, wearing a helmet, a bicycle helmet, a batting helmet. And if you know anybody that maybe lives in Greensboro or any of these communities in Hale County, do us a favor and call them and just be sure that they're watching and they know about this. And if they can't watch, you tell them the situation. Uh, they're under a tornado warning. They're in the polygon. They need to do something. You can be a vital part of the warning process. You can literally be a hero in the warning process. And again, this is all happening about 35, 40 miles south of downtown Tuscaloosa. And again, I stress there is no severe weather in Tuscaloosa. In the city of Tuscaloosa, in the city of Northport, there's been some horrible, horrible misinformation floating around through these apps today. And I can't help you if that's how you get your weather information. But uh, just and if you don't like us, find a good, reliable source of information so that uh, we're, we're trying to prevent people from doing things they don't have to do. But again, Greensboro is the concern right now. And Taylor, if they cancel that other warning, let me know. We still okay. have technically the warning in effect for Northern Bibb, but the circulation up there is very broad. And again, I would not be shocked if they do uh, ultimately cancel that warning. Still, if you're in West Blockton, be sheltered. The rotation is really broad right now, but the most dominant circulation, the most dominant tornado signature on radar, it's this one. And again, this is located in the southern part of Hale County. The tornadic circulation is only about uh, five to six miles west southwest of Greensboro. And again, that's coming right for Greensboro, right for downtown Greensboro. So if you live in Greensboro, anywhere 
near Greensboro. If you have a Greensboro mailing address, we want you sheltered and in a safe place. And again, uh, we've had uh, damage. We've had reports of damage from this tornado back in Bellamy in Sum Sumter County when it came through there. Um, and uh, I would not be shocked. And we had a public report of a tornado near Jim Bird's place, the, the hay animals on US 43 north of Demopolis, south of Forkland. And uh, so we've had multiple reports that confirm this. And let's look quickly at the debris and see if we have a lowered CC with this. Uh, we do not at this point, which is a good thing. But still, forget that. You've got to be sheltered. So back to our velocity. And again, we've got clear rotation and the possibility of a tornado that's coming up on downtown Greensboro. Your time is running out if you're in Greensboro. You've got to be in that safe place now. And the schools there do a great job. Um, goodness, I, I've been at the elementary school twice this year at Greensboro Elementary School and uh, all the schools and Southern Academy, the private school. They do a very good job of sheltering students, but this is a case where you do need to have them sheltered. And uh, they've got plans. They, they are good at this. And once we get this past Greensboro, they'll go back about their business and go back about their day. And of course, if this continues, a warning could be required for parts of Bibb County over here. Now, maybe the southern part of Bibb County. We have the, the, we've got part of northern Bibb under a warning now. In fact, let's look at that second one real quick, Taylor, the, the one up here in northern Bibb, and just see if anything has changed up here. Uh, and um, we have a new warning, yeah, for parts of northern Perry, all right, for the one coming out of Hale. Yeah, um, again, there, there's just no tornadic signature here. There's broad, broad rotation in here that's located near West Blockton. But again, as long as the polygon is there, you still need to be sheltered, okay? Uh, it could come back, and that's the reason the Weather Service leaves the polygon up. So again, Northern Bib, stay sheltered. The minute we can X that thing out, we'll X that thing out. I think it's gonna happen soon, but you're still under a polygon. So let's go back to our Northern Perry County. So, so the extension of the warning for that Hale County tornado is now for Perry County. This is Northern Perry, and this is for areas north of Marion. Again, there's your tornado. It's coming right up on downtown Greensboro, right up on downtown Greensboro. You've got to be sheltered now. You should have been 30 minutes ago, but you've got to be sheltered now. Don't go out and look for this thing. Uh, be sheltered now. And from Greensboro, it's going to come right through Northern Perry. This is Highway 5. This is Highburger. This is north of Marion. So Marion is not in the polygon here. That's the largest city in Perry County. This is for the northern part of Perry County. Uh, this Highway 14 that runs from Greensboro back down toward Marion. But the next major highway, once you get past Greensboro, it's going to be five. But again, our concern is for Greensboro. And uh, again, uh, we want, don't, don't go out there and try and get pictures. Don't try and shoot YouTube videos of this. You know, get some Google AdSense money. Your life's not worth getting $5 of Google AdSense money. It's really not. Uh, we don't need pictures. We don't need photographs. We need you sheltered at this point, okay? I know it's human nature where you want to go out and look for it. I understand that. I'm a man, and man, men do some dumb things. But in this case, I don't want you doing that. I want you stayed sheltered, okay? Uh, so again, uh, this is going to be coming right through the core of uh, uh, Greensboro in a matter of minutes. And Taylor, any news on damage uh, in the last few minutes here? I've been, uh, I've been busy on the air. I've been watching. Haven't seen anything coming through on the chat or in our Slack. And I haven't been tagged on social media um, and any reports of damage from this specific cell. So I've been just kind of looking at the radar here, continuing to watch this. We still have those signs of rotation with this. And it's moving very close to Greensboro. So it's because it is moving uh, now through a fairly populated area. Unfortunately, if there is something on the ground, we'll likely find out about it here pretty soon. I'm going to update the circle on there as we get the new radar scans in on where exactly the, the strongest indication of rotation is. So in this area here is where we likely have uh, some sort of rotation going on and potentially something on the ground. So let's take a look at the correlation coefficient can't really see anything. I've just been kind of cycling through a lot of these radar products. We do all these different radar products to investigate uh, different parts of the storm and see where exactly uh, that, that the ground truth to that rotation is. Let's see here. Um, the tornado warning for Bibb has been canceled. So for those of you who are in Bibb County that were under that tornado warning we were watching earlier, that is no longer in effect. That system has weakened. So no more tornado warning there. So now we have one tornado warning in our television market, and that's going to be this, this 
tornado warning that is moving directly towards Greensboro and then continuing on into northern uh, Perry County. So this circulation is now the dominant circulation and we are watching this approach the city of Greensboro now. With each radar scan, it's getting closer. It looks like it's gonna move very close to really the city center here and it's approaching now. So you need to stay in that safe place if you're in Greensboro, I'll put on the reflectivity. Uh, likely there's some hail going on with this storm as well, or really just north of this storm. Uh, so very strong winds moving into Greensboro now. There's a lot of hail just north of the city of Greensboro uh, where you have those pink colors, the gray colors right outside, those are locations outside of that tornado warned area. You've got the hail, heavy rain, hail, strong winds. It's this area right here where we've got signs of rotation where we could potentially have a tornado moving through Greensboro right now, I'd say. That's where we're seeing the indication of rotation as we put on that velocity. Oh, that, that's where we've got. Um, right, and let's, let's say, too, a lot of people are mad at us because we're not showing other parts of the state. There are no warnings in effect, uh, tornado warnings, except for this one. That's it. Yes, I know it's windy. I know it's raining. I know there's thunder and lightning and there's small hail. We, we know that, but we have to focus on the life-threatening storms here. In fact, I want to show some uh, damage reports uh, Photographs if we can. Let's go to WEX05 real quick. Uh, these are some of the images coming in from near Moundville. Uh, this is a little south of Moundville. And uh, again, this is what these things are doing. Uh, these are dangerous tornadoes. They're not the big EF4s, EF5s, but listen, every single tornado is dangerous. And again, that's, uh, uh, again, this is south of Moundville. And again, we've heard of nobody injured in that. And again, this is the one that came up into Bibb County and dissipated. Uh, this is some debris that is on the uh, road, US 82, down around Hagler. That's we a, might have a TDS with this now as it's moving into Greensboro. Oh, great. All right, let's go back to the uh, radar here. Uh, we are uh, now in our 11 o'clock news, and uh, again, uh, right there could be a possible tornado debris signature that is uh, basically on top of Greensboro. There's a chance of tornadoes coming through Greensboro right now. And uh, again, I don't have the live camera to show you. I don't, and even if we did down here, we wouldn't be able to see it because it's all rain wrapped today. But we just hope that everybody is sheltered in Greensboro. Uh, so again, we have uh, what's looked like a, a confirmed tornado now that is uh, coming through Greensboro. And this did produce some damage uh, in uh, uh, Sumter County. We know that and probably some damage in Southern Greene County. And uh, again, that's uh, pretty much coming right up on Greensboro, which is right here, downtown Greensboro. That's Highway 69, that's 25, 61 right here, and 60, I'm sorry, uh, this is 25 here, this is 69 here, uh, 69, 25, and 61. There's the three coming south out of uh, Greensboro. This Alabama Highway 14 that goes over to Marion. Uh, and again, going north out of Greensboro, that's uh, Highway 69. And uh, the warning has been extended into, look at that, there's a TDS coming right up on Greensboro. So we'll find out here in a minute what's going on down there, and uh, we just hope and pray that everybody's okay. Uh, it's been a pretty rough morning. This is certainly overperformed in terms of its capacity today. Um, and uh, we've got m so many reports of damage that are coming in now, it's almost hard to parse out which one of these tornadoes produced the damage. We've had multiple tornadoes like this today. Um, and, um, again, we're, we're, but I don't know of any serious injuries so far. That's the one good thing that I can, uh, I can report here. Um, and watching all of the reports. And again, I just, uh, the, the good news, I don't have any reports of serious injury. That's the thing. All the, and again, we're going to parse out the damage reports once we get past this. Uh, the one thing that we do here, I understand when there's damage, you want to go show that because it's very compelling. And we need to do that at times when we can to let people know the serious nature of this. But when there's life-threatening weather in progress, we can't break away from that to do that. So we're holding with our Greensboro tornado. And again, it's coming right through Greensboro right now. And from there, it's going to exit Hale County and go through northern Perry, north of Marion in the general direction of the community of Highburger along Highway 5 between Brent and Marion. <clears throat> so again, just be aware of that. Uh, let's expand this out a little bit, Taylor. In fact, let's just show a big picture 
I want to show reflectivity. Oh, look at that. That debris signature just right on top of Greensboro. Wow. So let's go back to our big picture, and I want to show reflectivity and show everybody and show what's happening here. So storms are coming through Birmingham. Storms coming through Gadsden. These are not severe. We have no warnings in effect. I just wanted to let you know that. Um, somebody, uh, somebody sent me an ugly message a minute ago, Taylor. They, uh -oh. <laughs> bad words uh, oh, because man. we weren't showing where they live. And guys, listen. I mean, we have to focus on the weather that's life-threatening in a situation like this. I mean, I know everybody's cranky, and for some, everybody's cranky today for some reason. But uh, yes, thunder, lightning, gusty winds. But there's no evidence of any tornado activity, no evidence of any damaging wind greater than 58 miles an hour, no evidence of one inch diameter hail. And behind the line, the risk of severe weather is ended. Jasper, Fayette, Double Springs, Hamilton, Winfield, Vernon, Aliceville, Reform. Uh, the Weather Service has canceled the tornado watch up and through here, and they're going to be canceling the watch soon for Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, and Coleman. That Coleman, the risk is over. Uh, for Coleman County, you've done with the uh, severe weather threat. For most of Blunt County, you're done. The concern is out ahead of this, and the main issue, strong gusty winds, like we've talked about, but there could be an isolated tornado. So let's go back down to our storm that is at Greensboro, and this is in our television market. Now, once it moves over into Perry, that is in the Montgomery TV market, but I'll be honest with you guys, TV markets don't make much sense anymore in that anybody can watch any station anywhere online, whether you're watching on the YouTube or the face bag or whatever. And, and so we try and be cognizant of that. We, we can't just cover programming all the time, but when we can, we'll do that to accommodate you. So potential tornado debris signature near Greensboro. And the rotation is now east of downtown. We'll give Greensboro an all clear here in a few minutes. And from here, it's going to be crossing over into the northern part of Perry County. And this will be passing north of Marion, northern Perry. OK, this is north of Marion. And again, potential TDS right here east of Greensboro. Is that Birmingham or Columbus? Uh, this a, is from Birmingham. OK, so that's a lower, that's a good slice of that. And again, there's your TDS east of Greensboro crossing over into Perry. And that'll be north of Marion in Perry County, again, toward Morgan Springs and Highburger. So uh, we can now give Greensboro an all clear uh, from this. If you are in Greensboro, we can give you an all clear from this tornado. Uh, it's come on through and we don't know if there's been a tornado in Greensboro or not, but the signature went right on top of town and now it's east of town uh, near or just north of Highway 14. And from there, it's going to be crossing into uh, northern Perry up and through here. So Greensboro and points west all clear, north and west all clear. The risk of severe weather is ended for Tuscaloosa and Jasper and for much of north and west Alabama. And the storms coming through Birmingham right now, the storms are not severe, okay? Uh, the, the only warning we have in terms of a tornado warning in our area is this, but I do want to show that southern warning, the one down to the south in Marengo, uh, Taylor. We've got another tornado warning that's in effect, and the air quality in terms of the environment is probably a little more favorable for tornadoes down here. Uh, this is a tornado warning in effect for southern Marengo County. I uh, got a possible tornado that's uh, right along Highway 69 near Nanafalaya. Uh, Highway 69 comes south out of Linden. Uh, and again, that possible tornado is going to be crossing or moving pretty much along Highway 10, coming over here towards Sweetwater. So uh, obviously the schools at Sweetwater need to be in their uh, tornado uh, safety mode right now. And this tornadic circulation will be crossing US 43 south of Linden. Uh, Linden is right here. Linden is not really in the polygon here. This is for areas south of Linden. Uh, down toward uh, Dixon's Mills. Dixon's Mills is where 43 and 10 intersect right here. So uh, anybody uh, south of Linden in Marengo County, just be aware that there's a potential tornado. And if you know anybody that lives in the southern part of Marengo County, let them know, especially Sweetwater. I'm a little concerned about Sweetwater with this one. Uh, there's an excellent, excellent school here, and uh, the kids are great and love visiting there. So just be aware that if uh, folks in Sweetwater should be sheltered at this point, nobody driving along US 43 south of Linden for the next 30 minutes. This is Highway 25, Thomaston. You're in the northern part of the polygon, Magnolia right here. Same thing, US 43, Alabama. Alabama 25, no driving over South Marengo County, no driving along Highway 10 in South Marengo County between Dixon's Mills and Sweetwater for about the next 30 minutes. This is in the Montgomery television market, but I wanted to show you that because so many people watch us on the digital or the social side. So let's go back to our uh, the, the one up here, and this is the one that's in our uh, television market. And again, we have potential for a tornado east of Greensboro right now. 
And uh, any uh, word from the Weather Service on damage, Taylor, from your end over there? I've seen a report that there are, is a video, somebody has a video of the Greensboro tornado on the ground. That was from an emergency manager um, saying that one of their friends had, had a video. Haven't seen visual confirmation of that video yet, but based on the TDS, I will not be surprised if there was uh, some videos or images coming out of Greensboro now of a tornado that was on the ground. We're still seeing that TDS evident. Likely we do still have a tornado on the ground just east of the city of Greensboro. This is going to be crossing over Martin Road and then moving into Perry County there afterwards. So we'll keep uh, an eye on this. This circulation likely went right through Greensboro just a few moments ago. And we're still seeing some of that lofted debris showing up on the radar. In terms of the velocity, let's put that on there. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to really pick out a really strong indication of a tight couplet with this. But when we have that tornado debris signature, that signifies that this is either on the ground or was just on the ground recently. Uh, so we'll keep watching that. As you can see here, that TDS continues. It's moving over County Road 7 now in the general direction of Martin Road. And then eventually it will be moving over into Perry County towards uh, Morgan Springs after that. So uh, we'll keep monitoring for any kind of damage reports. I know James is checking on all his different reports here to see uh, what he's got coming in from all the, the viewers that are so good to send him pictures and videos. And we really appreciate that. We want you to do it in a safe way. Please don't put yourself in harm's way to go get a picture or a video. Uh, but when we do get those, we are very appreciative of those. We have mm, that tornado warning for Perry County that will continue through noon. And that's going to be north of the city of Marion. That does not include the city of Marion. It's going to include Highburger, uh, Ironville, Morgan Springs. And then we'll watch the circulation carefully as it moves into northern Perry County, because if it starts to take more of a northeastward track, that could eventually put it into some parts of Bibb County. But these tornadoes, with the exception of that, that previous tornado warning that lasted for a really long time, most of these have been short lived today. That was the exception, not the rule. Most of these tornado warnings are uh, coming and going. They're kind of cycling. And at this point, as we take a look at our velocity, we still see some indications of rotation with this. Not a clear cut sign. However, we do still have that TDS showing up, but sometimes it can take a little while for those TDS signatures to kind of go away once we've had a brief touchdown of a tornado. Uh, but we'll keep watching this as it's moving over Martin Road, eventually crossing over into Perry County, and we'll stay with this storm um, over the next few minutes as it does so. Um, James, are you, have you seen any reports coming in from Greensboro? I see it. Oh, you're changing your mic. Never mind. I'll continue with this. Then. <laughs> um, we are looking at, at the very least, we've got very strong winds that are crossing over into Perry County with this. And these are going to be hard to see. I know we are talking about maybe there's some video images out there, whatever, with this tornado, but they're all going to be wrapped in rain. Typically, they are when we have them in Alabama. So it's hard to really get those videos that you'd see like from out in the plains where people go and chase storms just because of the way that these storms are in our state. On top of that, we're dealing with uh, lots of trees. We've got hills in Alabama. So it's hard for us to get a visual confirmation of these tornadoes. But as we continue to get these radar scans in, one of the big things I keep looking for is that tornado debris signature. And based on that latest radar scan, we continue to see this to, this debris signature move eastward, which gives me an indication that this is likely still on the ground, about to cross over into Perry County now. Let's go to Wexo 5 for a minute, Taylor, uh, if we can. Uh, this is going to be some of the damage from Moundville uh, earlier today. And uh, again, this is the signature that came through uh, just right below Moundville, just south of Moundville, and that moved over into uh, parts of Bibb County. And again, there's a lot of damage and, and we're not going to know the extent of all of this until later today. But again, you can see some trees down and understand these are not these F4 EF5 tornadoes, but they're all very meaningful today. And there's been a lot of damage and uh, things like that. So let's go back to the radar. And again, if you're just joining us here, it's 1112. I'm James Spann with uh, Taylor Sorello. We have a uh, one tornado warning that we're working and it's this one right here. And this came right through uh, Greensboro. And uh, again, we're, we're watching that uh, tornadic circulation about to cross over into Perry County. 
Uh, and again, uh, uh, as soon as we get additional information on of what's happened in Greensboro, uh, we'll, we'll pass that information along here. But uh, we are in a process now where we're moving this tornado warning out of Hale into Perry. Uh, and this is going to be for areas north of Marion. And again, the larger community in the path of this would be Highburger along Highway 5 between Brent and Marion. But I want to go back to a big view, Taylor. Just let's look at a wide view with reflectivity and just talk about what's uh, the, whole, the big picture situation, if you will. If you're in Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Gadsden, and points north and west, the risk of severe weather is over. This is a one and done, one line of storms. That's it. There is no evidence of any severe weather in the line segment coming through southern Birmingham, the Shelby County area, northern Shelby, uh, St. Clair, Etowah, uh, up toward uh, Weiss Lake here. Thunder and lightning, yes. Maybe some small hail, gusty winds, absolutely. But again, no sign of any severe weather. We have no warnings in effect for this part of the line, none. And once the line passes, that's it. The risk of severe weather has ended. You're done with it. Uh, the concern, it's the segment down here coming into northern Perry County, and this is about 55, 60 miles southwest of downtown Birmingham. Uh, and there's also another tornado warning in effect for southern Marengo. So I just wanted to show the big picture and let you see what's happening in terms of where you are. But let's go back into that storm that is hugging the Hale-Perry County line. Now, Taylor, we'll take a look at that. This is the one that is uh, between uh, Greensboro and Highburger, if you will. Uh, and again, that's the northern one here. That's the southern one here. Let's take a look at this one first. This will be our uh, storm that's located on the uh, moving now into northern Perry County. It's really moved out of hail. In fact, we can give hail an all clear from this tornado warning. We'll put the velocity on yes. So for Hale County, the danger is ended. You're good. Hale County, the risk of the, this tornado has ended where you are. The risk is now shifted into northern Perry. So if you're in Hale County, your tornado warning, it's done. The warning is in effect for Northern Perry. And again, this is the main north-south highway through Perry County. That's Alabama Highway 5. For years, that was the main drag from uh, Birmingham to Mobile, one of the main drags, that and old US 31. But Highburger is here, and this tornado signature is going to be crossing the northern part of Perry County. And it might make a run for the far southern tip of Bibb. This is Bibb here. Brent is here. But again, for now, the warning is in effect for northern Perry. And this is far north of Marion. This will not affect the city of Marion. This is for areas north of Marion. So this is our northern tornado warning, northern Perry County, a tornado warning. And now that there's the new one for Bibb. And they just, uh, I think that's probably the right thing to do. So with a possible tornado here moving like that, the Weather Service has issued a new tornado warning for the southern part of Bibb County. This will include Centerville and Brent. Okay, Centerville, Brent. Uh, it includes uh, areas down to Pondville here where uh, Highway 25 branches off going down to Greensboro. So Centerville, Brent. Uh, six Mile, Randolph, Ashby, you are now in a tornado warning polygon. This is US 82 right here. That's 219 going down to Selma. That's uh, Alabama Highway 5 right here going down to Highburger. So uh, that is our latest tornado warning for this, uh, this rotation that went right on top of uh, Greensboro. Any other reports uh, from your end over there, Taylor, of damage? I'm monitoring and not yet. I've not seen any at least... Uh on my end of any new new damage reports coming out of uh, I, I just am seeing that one report that there was an observed tornado in Greensboro but we haven't been able to get any uh, confirmation from photos videos and you know as we always talk about sometimes when we have a tornado move through it can be hard to get cell service you know the Wi-Fi is down so it can be hard to uh, get some of that info out of some of these areas uh, but what we are looking at now is what appears to be a fairly significant tornado debris signature in northern Perry County from that same storm. So uh, this has been another one of those kind of long, longer tracked tornadoes uh, based on the uh, life cycle of this. It's, it's been on the ground at times all the way since before Greensboro. And at this point, we are seeing uh, that strong, strong indication near Morgan Springs of a tornado that's on the ground. And that's going to be moving in the general direction of Highburger moving over Highway 5 and then potentially into Southern Bibb County. Uh, we are also getting a, uh, okay, we're just getting new, new messages about the same tornado warning uh, that there is likely 
a tornado on the ground near Morgan Springs headed in the general direction of uh, really just north of Highburger and then potentially into southern Bibb County. And we've still got Evan, I think, in Bibb County. So he might be coming very close to another tornado warning at this point. He kind of was in a, in a location where he, this could be a second warning for him of the day to chase. And uh, let's take a look at the velocity and see what we got here. It looks like that rotation would be moving in the general direction now of Iron Bowl. Riding up in the general direction of Harrisburg, Abercrombie community. Um, and then very close to Brent and Centerville, based on the current track, it looks like it might hold just south of you. But of course, you're included in that polygon. That means lowest level of your home, interior location in your home, many walls is between you and the outside as you can. If you live in a mobile or manufactured home, you're on your way to a shelter or any kind of site built structure that could be a store, that could be a gas station, but you cannot stay within your mobile home or your manufactured home and it's not safe to be there. If you know family or friends that live in some of the locations that we're calling out here, if any of these cities sound familiar to you and maybe you've got friends there, give them a call, let them know, hey, there's bad weather on the way. I know not everybody pays attention to the weather all the time. We're all busy, I understand that. And so if you can give your friends in Southern Bibb County a call and let them know that they need to be turning on uh, the coverage, let them know that they need to be watching what's going on because at this point we still appear to have a tornado on the ground. And uh, that tornado is going to be moving into Southern Bibb County here pretty soon. It is still crossing through Northern Perry County. This is north of Marion and Perry County. Marion, you are not included within this tornado warning polygon, uh, but this is gonna be moving across uh, Highway 5, just north of Highburger here in the next few minutes. And by the way, let me just say uh, a lot of people in the Birmingham Metro are getting some small hail. We don't warn for small hail. It's gotta be one inch in diameter or larger and uh, again, everybody's had small hail today. That, that's fairly common in gusty winds and heavy rain. We're focusing on the storms that could produce a tornado, and we'll kind of stay focused on that. Hope you understand. It's been a rough morning. I don't know why people are so cranky today. We, I've had more trolls today than I've had in the last month. Uh, people are just not in a good mood. But if you would just please allow us to focus on these storms that are life-threatening is what we're doing. Uh, we have uh, tornado warnings in effect now for Northern Perry and North, or Southern Bibb. Uh, this does include Centerville Brent. Let's go to the velocity product on this, uh, Taylor. And again, uh, velocity will show that we've still got that well-defined rotation here that'll be coming up, probably passing north of Highburger. The, uh, again, the polygon continues to shrink and parry as it looks like it might really extend into Southern Bibb. And again, that'll be crossing Highway 5 near the Perry Bibb County line, most likely north of the community of Highburger, which is here. Uh, this is Highway 25 right here. It runs over toward uh, Pondville, which is here. The old WSR 57 radar site, the old Centerville radar site is right here. Uh, but again, that'll be crossing Highway 5 pretty soon. So no travel on Alabama Highway 5 between Brent and Highburger for the next 15 minutes. We'll give you an all clear soon on that. And again, Hale County, you're all clear from this. Uh, this is well now east of you, and uh, this will be crossing Highway 5 here in a matter of minutes near or just south of the uh, Perry Bibb County line. This is the county line right here. This is Bibb and this is Perry. Uh, Centerville and Brent, they are right up and through here. And again, that uh, potential tornado is going to move over into the southern part of Bibb County. Let's go back to the tornado debris signature, the uh, TDS, and see if we still have that correlation coefficient product. And uh, it's pretty noisy down through here. Uh, yeah. Again, what, we got debris being lofted possibly right here. Sometimes storms are tilted and you'll see the debris being displaced from the low level rotation. But the bottom line is that's a good velocity signature. So back to our velocity signature. And again, you can see uh, that we've got a well-defined signature that could represent a tornado that might be down. Uh, and again, this is in a fairly sparsely populated part of northern Perry County, but it's about to cross Highway 5 into Bibb. Uh, Centerville, Brent, you're on the far northern part of the polygon, but you are in the polygon. You are in that polygon. Uh, and again, everybody in this should be sheltered. The polygon runs up Highway 25 up to 6 Mile, up toward Briarfield, Ashby, then down toward Randolph, then back over to US 82. Nobody should be driving US 82 from Brent down to the Chilton County line. And of course, if this happens to hold together, that thing could wind up in Shelby County. So again, for those of you in the Birmingham Metro, just kind of keep an eye on this. But again, for the city of Birmingham, 
the risk of severe weather is over. The uh, risk from Birmingham north and west has ended. Uh, the risk is now to the south and east of Birmingham, where the tornado watch continues uh, in effect. Uh, so let's look at a wide view again, Taylor. I want to go back to this wide view one more time and just show everybody, if you're watching us in parts of northern Shelby, yes, you've got some small hail falling. All of these cores in here will represent small hail, gusty winds, cloud-to-ground lightning, heavy rain. The weather is not good. In fact, we do have a severe thunderstorm warning polygon for northern Shelby. Let's take a look at that. This is not a tornado warning. This is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for the northern part of Shelby County. This would include Pelham, Alabaster, uh, Chelsea, Westover, Harpersville uh, for the possibility of hail mainly, for hail and strong winds. The Weather Service believes this st storm segment might generate hail up to one inch in diameter and possibly winds that might hit 58 miles per hour or greater. That's the severe criteria. So uh, that is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect now for northern Shelby County. Taylor, until what time? Uh, probably 12 noon. 12 noon. All right, so northern Shelby County, severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 12 noon. I'll let you take us back down to our southern storm, Taylor. All right, let's go back to that uh, warning that we are tracking. And uh, we've got a tornado that at times has been confirmed on the ground based on tornado debris signatures. And we could potentially still be seeing a TDS here just to the south of Ironville. Uh, it's going to be crossing over into southern uh, Bibb County here pretty soon. So we're watching that carefully. That looks to me to be a tornado debris signature. It is co-located with where we've seen uh, those that evidence of rotation. And this has been a fairly long lived rotation. This has been rotation that was evident at times and has had a history of producing a tornado at times uh, back into parts of Greensboro. We had tornado debris signature evident in Greensboro. So uh, we are going to be, of course, monitoring to see if we get any kind of updates on any kind of damage reports from that. But there's the uh, most recent radar scan here showing this getting very close to the Bibb County line. And this is headed in the general direction of Harrisburg. Brent Centerville, this will likely stay just south of you, but you're in that polygon, so you are sheltered at this point. And then if it holds together from there, it will be moving towards Six Mile, Antioch, Ashby after that. So let's take another look at that correlation coefficient and little bit noisy, kind of hard to pick out if we have uh, really a tornado debris signature here or just some noise on the radar. But we'll go back to the velocity just because that is giving us the most clear picture at this point of what's going on within this storm. It's going to be crossing over uh, Highway 5 here pretty soon. It is moving towards, let me check on the uh, latest timing on that. And... Let's see, okay, northeast at 50. So I'll go ahead and put another timed track on this and track this into parts of Bibb County so we can kind of get, this is just a general time frame on when the circulation will arrive within your location. Don't wait until you this time to get to your safe place. If you're in that polygon, you should be in your safe place now. Uh, but we are seeing this move at the northeast at about 50 miles per hour. That's gonna put this very close to Brent Centerville. Uh, 1141. So you've got just a few minutes until that circulation arrives in your location. You should already be in that safe place now, ready to go. And with this last radar scan, this this looks like it's tightening up even more. I mean, that's a pretty that's a pretty good sign of rotation here. Where we have those bright greens and those reds coming together. This will be crossing over into Bibb County pretty soon. So don't wait, don't wait until this crosses over into Bibb County. Go ahead, take shelter now. If you have friends and family, I know we've already said it, but for those of you who are just tuning in, if you know anybody who lives in Southern Bibb County, let them know that they've got a tornado warning and they need to be sheltered now. I want to put back on that correlation coefficient. For the time being, that TDS has kind of gone, gone away for a moment. But based on some of that velocity tightening up again, I would not be surprised if we get another brief touchdown out of this tornado uh, before it crosses over from Perry County into Bibb County. So that is what's going on with that southernmost storm. And as we look a little bit farther to the north, we've got uh, strong winds moving through parts of Shelby County. This is a severe thunderstorm warning. And uh, a lot of hail with that too, a lot of yeah. hail. Yeah, we have those pinks showing up big time. So uh, you can see all these pinks here that have just moved through Alabaster. And I think, did I just see a report that they had uh, 
hail at the weather service office. Four NWS employees. Yep. So uh, uh, take, take WEX05 real quick. This is just one example. I've gotten hundreds of pictures. Uh, everybody in Shelby County is getting hail. I mean that. Uh, again, that, that's and that's the way to do it. We like when people put objects of known size in these photographs. So that's what's what's going on down there, uh, Taylor. So it's actually hailing at the National Weather Service office. Yeah, in Calera. So mm -hmm. at the Shelby County Airport. So again, let's go back to the radar. And again, the storm in uh, Shelby County producing hail and strong winds, a lot of hail. I mean, a lot of hail coming down here, one inch in diameter, gusty winds. That's the reason for the warning here. Uh, but let's focus on this storm down here that's in Southern Bibb. And again, this is. Uh, uh, very concerning in that the rotation has been getting tighter again. Let's go to our velocity product. And again, the rotation is near the Bibb Perry County line right on Highway 5. Uh, this is about uh, eight to nine miles south of Brent right down Highway 5. And again, this is Highway 25. We're at Forks off going over to Greensboro. Highway 5 goes down to Marriott. That's your tornado signature there, very close to the uh, uh, county line. And if this thing holds together, it's going to be passing. Uh, uh, just to the south of Brent, uh, the Sawmill Restaurant is right there where my fist is located. And that's going to be moving really not that far from the tornado that came through here March 25th of 2021, almost two years ago. Uh, the track is somewhat similar. And those might recall uh, if that thing stayed down, it winds up in southern Shelby County. That's the one that came through areas just south of Columbiana. Now, I'm not saying this will take the exact same track. It probably won't, but it's close. Uh, so again, if you go back to March 25th of 2021, a couple of years ago, that's a pretty good sign of the approximate track of this one. And again, uh, the evidence is there that it's down right on Highway 5 near the Bibb Perry County line. And it's kind of hugging the county line. There's the new volume scan. And again, you can see that. Let's look at the TDS, the uh, correlation coefficient product, and see if we see a debris signature. And again, it's fairly noisy at this point, which is good. We don't want to see that. But uh, we'll go back to the velocity and we'll stick with that. So for those of you in Bibb County, the greatest call to action is for those of you in Centerville, Brent, and Point South. Uh, this most likely will stay south of Centerville and south of Brent, okay, uh, over the course of the next hour or so. But uh, nobody should be on uh, 219 or uh, US 82 right here for the next 30 minutes or so. The tornadic circulation is now east of Alabama Highway 5. So if you need to drive from Brent to Marion, you can do that without concern over this tornado at this point. Uh, but again, the next concern, it's going to be uh, down uh, 219 and uh, US 82. And obviously, we recommend no uh, driving in those areas. It's 1130. We have been here for about uh, three and a half hours, and this system is certainly uh, uh, over delivered uh, today in terms of uh, severe weather. But uh, the encouragement here is just to stay in touch on a day like today. And uh, if we call out your neighborhood in a polygon, be sheltered. A lot of new people live here uh, that have moved here. And this can be horrifying. You know, they, they, they don't have tornadoes where they're from. And they turn on the TV and they see us and we're talking all these things. Maybe they don't understand. The bottom line is, if you live in these red flashing boxes, you're at risk of a tornado. That's a tornado warning. And you need to be sheltered and in a site-built house. The best place, it is a small room, a hall closet bathroom room, lowest floor near the center, no windows. We like for people to wear a helmet, a bicycle helmet, a batting helmet, a motorcycle helmet, a football helmet. That really makes you safe. And you cannot be in a car or a mobile home. Uh, those are the two worst places to be. And that's why we often say you don't need to drive from point A to point B until we give you an all clear because a car can go airborne if a tornado happens to cross over one of these highways and it looks like this one will. So for those of you just joining us, we have a tornado warning in effect now for the southern part of Bibb. This is the only county in our television market under a tornado warning. That's it. Uh, for some of you, you have hail falling, it's windy, it's, it's not very pleasant, but we're focusing on the life-threatening weather. And Taylor has got the uh, circulation circle there, and there could be some debris being lofted with that lowering couple of pixels there. But that'll be coming out here below Brent, below Centerville, and then cutting over here toward US 82. Uh, and again, maybe th this whole thing will probably stay maybe five, six, seven miles south of Centerville, Brent. Centerville is here. Brent is here. The Cahaba River separates those two cities. And again, that is a, uh, a very dangerous uh, storm. Any new uh, damage reports, Taylor? Uh, not that I'm seeing yet. Um, I know I keep saying that, uh, but uh, w once again, we had that evidence that there was potentially a tornado on the ground near Greensboro. 
Um, we had the TDS show up, but so far I haven't seen any uh, confirmation yet. I'm checking the social media channels. I'm checking our Slack chat. I've been checking uh, with the National Weather Service chat. And so far we have not seen uh, any reports coming in, but we likely had a tornado move through Greensboro. We had the tornado debris signature the entire time. We've received a report that uh, there were folks on the ground that got video of it. Uh, so we are going to continue to monitor. It might just be that it's hard to get that video out right now because of bad cell service, uh, because of power being out. And uh, so we'll keep watching. This is that same system. This is that same tornado warning, the same tornado warn cell that moved through Greensboro. And now again, we're starting to see uh, a better, clearer indication that this might either be on the ground right now or had, has just touched down again with that tornado debris signature growing right on the Perry Bibb County line. So this is going to be moving uh, towards uh, the general direction of Brent Centerville, likely to stay just south of you, but it's going to be very close. It'll be just south of Brent Centerville and then eventually moving towards Six Mile, Antioch, and then we'll have to watch this one. This one's held together for a while. If it does hold together, this could eventually be crossing over uh, into parts of northern Chilton County and then maybe even thereafter uh, Shelby County. So this is one to watch because this does have a history of having those tornado debris signatures and we're still watching for any kind of damage reports to come out from this. I suspect we will eventually get some damage reports from this system. But at this point, we likely have a tornado on the ground crossing over from Perry County into Bibb County. This is just to the south of Harrisburg. This is going to be moving uh, through the Abercrombie community, eventually crossing over uh, State Route 219 or Selma Road. And uh, thereafter moving just south of Brent and Centerville, it'll cross U.S. Highway 82 after that. And there's another update on that TDS, and it's showing even, even more of a lowering in that CC. So at this point, we, it's safe to say we ha either have a tornado on the ground or we've just had a tornado on the ground. Uh, let's look at the velocity and see how that looks. But I suspect that we likely still, yeah, based on that velocity, this tornado I, is on the ground. This is a confirmed tornado on the ground right now moving along County Road 51. It's crossing over into Southern Bibb County, just to the south of Harrisburg. It is moving really right now just over where Harrisburg Road meets County Road 51. That's where we have that couplet. That's where we have a tornado debris signature. So at this point, a confirmed tornado on the ground moving over Harrisburg Road, County Road 51. It'll be approaching State Route 219, Selma Road here pretty soon. And then after that, it's going to be moving over 82. But this 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 storm is in a strengthening phase, phase again. Uh, the rotation on this looks very strong. We've got a clear-cut TDS. And uh, this is one of those that's been kind of cycling at times, but the entire time has maintained at least some type of rotation. But we're in a phase right now where this is likely producing a tornado as we speak on the ground. Uh, with that very clear cut tornado debris signature damage is likely occurring right now in uh, southern Bibb County to the south of Brent and Centerville. So this is just to the south of you. I can actually track how far south of you it yeah, is. They're, they're calling this a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado seven miles south of Brent. So again, uh, this is a very dangerous situation. Again, the Weather Service calling this a large confirmed extremely dangerous tornado south of Brent moving east at 50. And uh, if you guys uh, can let me know where Evan is, uh, we're going to try and join him shortly. Evan is in Bibb County. But again, Brent here, Centerville here. That's your tornado. All right. And again, this is moving to the northeast. That'll be coming out here across 82. This is 219 that runs down to Selma. And uh, nobody, nobody should be on Highway 219 between Brent and the uh, county line, the, the Perry County line. And nobody should be on US 82 between Brent and the Chilton County line for the next 15, 30 minutes till we give you an all clear. Uh, so again, uh, we have a uh, what's called a PDS tornado warning, a uh, very dangerous large tornado indicated by the Weather Service. And again, I know a lot of you are getting hail and 
some other things, but we have to focus on the life-threatening danger, which is this one right here that's in our uh, television market. This is for Southern Bibb County. This is all about uh, 45 to 50 miles southwest of downtown Birmingham. Now, this is Shelby County over here. This is Chilton. This is Shelby. <clears throat> if this thing holds together, this could affect parts of northern Chilton or southern Shelby counties in They've a bit. They've just issued a new warning that will include <clears throat> northern Chilton County as kind of a downstream okay. warning for this. So that's the possible tornado right here. And it's going to be moving like this, crossing US 82, crossing Alabama 139, moving into northern Chilton. So if you're in northern Chilton County, we have a new tornado warning in effect for this uh, tornado. And again, you've got Jemison here, Thorsby here, Union Grove here. Uh, now, this does not include any part of Shelby County. In fact, uh, uh, the news for Shelby County is pretty good. I know you've had hail. I know it's been a rough ride. But in terms of the tornado threat, uh, your severe weather threat in Shelby will be ending soon. The concern is now in northern Chilton. So we have a tornado warning in effect for the southeastern part of Bibb County. This is from Centerville Brent points east and south. This would include Ashby Randolph. And then it includes the northern part of Chilton County. And again, this would include Jemison and Thorsby and Union Grove. This is for areas north of Clanton. This does not include Clanton. This is for areas north of Clanton, northern Chilton County. So we have tornado warnings in effect for the southeast part of Bibb and for the northern part of Chilton County. And you can see that very, very well-defined tornado debris signature, debris being lofted. Uh, that's located about seven, eight miles south of Brent, moving northeast, and that's going to be moving uh, again. They'll be crossing Highway 82 soon, and we've seen these at times today, and they produced some very significant damage. And this is a life-threatening storm. Uh, so if you're in any of these polygons we talk about today, respect the polygon and be sheltered. No mobile homes, no cars. In a site-built house, you're in a bathroom, a hall, a closet, near the center, no windows, wearing a helmet. And again, we'll be able to give you an all clear once the uh, tornado passes on by. But next up is going to be US 82. Next up is Alabama 139, which is right here. The community of Randolph is right here. Ashby is here. From there, it crosses into Chilton County. Posey's Crossroads is right here. Jemison here. Thorsby down here. Collins Chapel, Union Grove. Uh, any of these places we've called out, you've got to be sheltered. And again, this is north of Clanton, the northern part of Chilton County. So southeastern Bibb. Northern Chilton. And again, up here, there's a severe thunderstorm warning for the chance of hail and strong winds. This is for parts of Shelby County moving into Talladega County. The uh, new severe thunderstorm warning is in effect for northern Talladega. That will pop the uh, reflectivity back on. And again, the concern up here for places like Lincoln and Talladega, it's hail and strong winds. Uh, this segment here has produced a lot of hail in Shelby County, and it's going to produce a lot of hail in Talladega County as it continues moving on to the east. But let's expand this out really quickly, Taylor, and I just want to point out this is a one-time deal. Once you deal with the storms and they move on, you're done with it. So for the city of Birmingham, the risk of severe weather is ended. For the city of Tuscaloosa, the severe weather risk is ended. For the city of Gadsden, the severe weather risk is ended. The concern, it's south of Interstate 59. To the north and west, no severe weather, you're done with it. Uh, there could be a few snow flurries tomorrow morning, but other than that, you're done with any severe weather. Uh, the severe thunderstorm warning in effect for northern Talladega County, parts of Shelby County, County, extreme southern St. Clair County. And again, we are here because of this tornado warning for a possible tornado that is south of Brent. So uh, in, do we still have the southern Marengo warning real quick? We'll check on that one. Uh, we'll go to the south and we do. This is another possible tornado and this one is uh, going to ultimately affect perhaps Dallas County. Dallas County under a tornado warning. Uh, and that's a pretty nasty looking signature here just below Thomaston. Uh, this is Alabama Highway 25. This is Alabama Highway 28. Uh, this is a little place called Consul. Uh, that is 28 going down toward Camden. This is Alabama 66 going over here toward Safford, which is right here. And again, uh, if you're in any of these places I'm calling out, it might not mean anything to you, but if you live there, it means something to them. Uh, so if you live in any of these places we've called out, you want to be sheltered. And from eastern Marengo, that tornado is going to be crossing northern Wilcox, which is here. This is northern Wilcox County, then into Dallas County. And this is Alabama Highway 5 right here. That's Alabama 22, Orville, back over to Selma. So just wanted to show people that we have Dallas County under a tornado warning that includes the city of Selma. It includes that whole stretch right down Highway 22. 22 seems to be where this will kind of be focused over the next hour or so. So again, if you're 
shelter. Anywhere from Safford to Orville up to Selma, you want to be sheltered. So let's go back up to the storm closer to where we are. And this is going to be the uh, uh, thunderstorm that is right here. And I want to go to Evan Chikvera. Evan, uh, tell us where you are and what you've got out there right now. All right, so I'm uh, just uh, basically at the Chilton Bibb County line. I've kind of danced back and forth between the two watching this storm with you guys. Um, and what you're seeing off in the distance, the darker clouds, that's the base of this, uh, this rotating storm. Um, actually coming back up to the top of this hill on your screen, and that is going to literally be, you'll see the asphalt change shade here. That is the edge of the uh, Chilton County and uh, Bibb County line. In fact, it looks like I have an emergency officer that's uh, getting ready to pass here, headed in that direction. But whatever you guys have said about uh, staying off the highway, traffic is certainly taking a downturn here, but uh, we're gonna get a pretty good view, I think, coming over this hill of this uh, potentially dangerous tornado here. Um, like I said, I'm coming, uh, I guess it's west. I'm currently headed due north, but I'm on 82 west. I've now just crossed over into Bibb County, and this is looking north into uh, that circulation. Um, as you look back towards Centerville, towards Brent, uh, if you've driven down Highway 82, you know, it, it's fairly sparsely populated here as you get closer to the uh, county line. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's essentially what we're looking at. And if there was uh, a, a tornado or some sort of a funnel coming down, all you can see is dark blue. I mean, there's a just sheeting rain out ahead of uh, where the circulation is and uh, that will likely be what you encounter if you try to be outside. So I'm gonna try and be in a, remain in a safe place to show you guys this, but uh, it certainly looks like this might be one of the better ones that we've seen here um, uh, so far uh, this morning. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Evan. That's Evan Chigvera. He's on US 82 near the uh, Chilton Bibb County line, kind of coming up into the back side of that, and that's the way you want to do it safely. You want to be looking from the south as the storm passes to the north. So Evan is about right here. This tornado is going to be crossing 82 here. He'll stop in here and he'll be looking up into that. And again, there's so much rain out here. It's going to be so hard to see. Uh, occasionally, we have seen some uh, uh, video and images of tornadoes today, but it's awfully hard to catch. So again, once it moves out of Bibb, and again, it'll be crossing 82. And, and let me just say, Centerville and Brent, all clear. Uh, you've been taken out of the polygon. So if you're in Centerville, Brent, all clear for you. You have been removed from the polygon. This is the new polygon definition here. Uh, and again, this uh, will be crossing 82, about maybe eight miles to the east southeast of Centerville, then crossing Alabama 139, a little north of Randolph. And uh, again, anybody from Ashby all the way down to almost to Maplesville need to be sheltered, but especially if you're near Randolph or near the school here. And from there, it's going to cross over into uh, northern Chilton County. And again, the uh, TDS is right here. Let's go back to our velocity signature here. Sometimes the, the correlation coefficient lowering lags a little bit behind the velocity. So let's go to the velocity. And again, it's becoming a little broader here. And we hope that's the case. We hope that continues to be a trend. But this has been somewhat cyclic. This thing has been uh, coming and going. And again, the rotation a little broader, about to cross over US 82, about, again, eight miles uh, east southeast of uh, Centerville. Uh, and again, this is the one tornado warning we have in effect for our television market. That's the reason we kind of focus on that. Uh, I know that we've got the warning in effect down in Dallas County. We'll check that out here in just a second. And there are other storms around, but they are non-severe. We don't have one inch hail or we don't have 58 mile per hour winds. The exception is northern Talladega, where there is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect. Uh, but again, uh, we're watching broad circulation now on US 82. That'll be crossing over Highway 139. This is Alabama Highway 139 here in just a bit. Uh, Randolph is here. Oakley is here. Briarfield is up to the north. Briarfield is technically in this polygon, but the core threat is going to be a bit south of there, probably north of Randolph, south of Briarfield. And from there, it's going to cross over into uh, northern Chilton County. And with each sweep, it, the, the, broad, the rotation continues to broaden out, Taylor, which is a good thing. Well, that is a great thing. So based on uh, that latest radar scan, we're seeing uh, the potential for this to kind of just be broadening out a bit. Based on this radar presentation, it looks like the, that tornado might have lifted. But we've seen with this particular storm, 
it sometimes it bronze out and then it tightens back up. This has dropped a couple different uh, rotations where we've had those tornado debris signatures evident. So we'll continue monitoring this as it continues to cross over into northern Chilton County here pretty soon. And we will go back down to that more southern warning here and see how that one looks. And we are still showing a fairly good rotation with this most southern storm uh, as it starts to cross over into Dallas County here. And it's going to be moving in the general direction of Selma here pretty soon. It's hard for us to get a really good view of what's going on with this storm just because we're pretty far away from the radar site. Uh, but those greens and those reds indicating that we likely still have that ongoing rotation. Uh, this is going to be crossing over towards White's Bluff here pretty soon, uh, the city of, of uh, Martin. And then eventually if it holds together moving towards Selma. So that tornado warning there is going to go through 1230 p.m. And we are on the air right now because of this this tornado warning that is including parts of Bibb County, northern uh, Chilton County. And then let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of the uh, severe thunderstorm warnings we have that are ongoing. Real quick, let's go to WEX 05 if we can do that for just a minute. Wanted to show some of the latest uh, video coming in. This is uh, what it looks like uh, at, uh, at Highburger. This is the thunderstorm that is moving in through southern Bibb County right now. Uh, this is coming from uh, uh, Thomas Parker. And again, you just can't see anything. You know, it's just it's going to be a really, really tough situation to show uh, any of these. But again, that's the storm that is coming through Bibb County now. Uh, and uh, let's see, this is going to be some video earlier from northern Hale County. Uh, from what should be that uh, same uh, thunderstorm here. Uh, in fact, let me kind of re-rack this. I'm going to move it up a little bit here. Yeah, look at here. Yeah, we've clearly got a tornado down here. Let's kind of watch this together. Uh, again, this is from northern Hale County. And watch the base. Watch what's happening down there at the base. And pretty sure we've got a tornado down in that area. And again, this is what's going through Bibb County right now. This is when it was coming through uh, the area down around uh, Moundville and northern Hale County uh, earlier today. Um, and again, that's a, uh, one thing about it. You've got a pretty clear shot right there. Typically where we are around here with all the hills and trees, it's hard to see. But again, that's a fairly uh, decent shot of that. Let's leave this up for just a second. And again, uh, this is uh, the storm that is coming through southern Bibb right now, and it could easily be possibly uh, producing a, a tornado uh, as we speak in Bibb County and most likely is, uh, although the rotation has gotten broader. But th this is what it's been doing. The same tornado, by the way, came through uh, parts of Sumter County. We've had reports of some injuries around Bellamy earlier, some entrapment uh, involving some mobile homes there. Uh, and this has been producing off and on damage through parts of Sumter, Southern Green. Uh, there was some damage, I know, uh, south of Forkland, over into parts of Hale County, like you're seeing here, then into parts of Perry County, and now into parts of uh, Bibb County. And uh, this could be a fairly sizable tornado here. Again, we're uh, kind of watching this together. And this, and let me stress, this is not live. This was earlier as this tornado was coming through parts of uh, northern Hale County. But this is an example of what we've been dealing with today. And uh, we still have the chance of these isolated tornadoes in spots along the line for the next couple of hours until the line gets out of the state. Uh, and again, it's getting pretty close to this guy. We're going to leave this up. I think it's almost over here in just a second. Yeah, there Evan's we go. That's got some, some All right. Yeah, shot. Let's go to Evan's uh, live shot if we can. Evan, what you got for us? Hey guys, uh, just a couple minutes ago, we had uh, what appeared to be a tornado rain wrap crossover 82. Uh, all these cars pulled off the road and I had a pretty good look at it. Uh, you could see the winds. Um, all the way around it, uh, some debris lofted in the air. It was very broad, uh, the, the wedge of it was. Uh, very hard to see. I, I, I tweeted out a picture the best I could from my vantage point, but uh, to my eyes, there was no doubt that there was uh, some sort of a, a tornado reaching the ground there and crossing over 82. Like I said, that was at about uh, four or five minutes ago, and, and people just stopped crossing. I mean, you could see uh, cars coming over the top of the hill and people who don't even necessarily know what to look for with tornadoes. You, you could see the, the winds change, the circulation, and then uh, very quickly uh, the dissipation uh, as it crossed over 82. So uh, yeah, pretty pretty much no doubt that we saw one here. So uh, that's the Bibb County storm. Again, I'm a couple miles north of the uh, county line between Bibb and Chilton along Highway 82, and that has now moved off to the east. So if you're in the path of that, uh, in that polygon that you guys have been referencing, uh, take this seriously because uh, it certainly looked like there was something on the ground down here. All right, uh, Evan, thank you. And again, for, for my reference, tell me exactly where you're located uh, on 82 there. 
Uh, it's about three miles north. I'll tell you, a church here. It looks like uh, the Active Bible Methodist Church is right here off to the uh, to the left. Uh, we're on Active Road, and this is along, uh, like, I, like you mentioned, Highway 82, um, just to the north of the Chilton County line. So I'm only about three miles north of that spot. There's a TDS um, in the southern right Bibb County, and that's was. where it went across. I yeah. think he saw that tornado yeah. crossing that road. And there's, that's I, that's what I think I saw. Yeah, there, there's uh, there's no doubt. Uh, again, uh, this is uh, a pretty dangerous situation. Taylor, let me let you take it for a second while I plug in a couple of batteries to charge here. Okay. Uh, so what I was doing here is I was just starring where Evan just told us that he was. He's right here on the southern edge of that polygon. There's the TDS from when that tornado was crossing 82 just north of his location. And that is uh, likely what he saw. He saw some of that lofted debris. Uh, so that now has crossed over 82. It's still moving over now Deer Creek Road, headed towards Antioch Road, State Route 139. This is just going to be moving very close to or north of the city of Randolph. And then it will continue to move eventually into northern Chilton County. So Posey's Crossroads is going to be one of the next communities that's going to be in line for this storm here. Let's go ahead. I'm going to switch back over to some of the uh, velocity signatures here. And really, when we look at the velocity signature on this, it's not overly impressive. We're not seeing super bright reds and super bright greens come together, but we do still have that TDS where this has been cycling. And at times it has put down tornadoes. We're still getting a TDS signature from this. It's moving over Antioch Road here pretty soon. State Route 139, just to the north of the community of Randolph. I mean, this is going to be just to the north of Randolph. And then in the general direction of Posey Crossroads, if it continues to cycle as it has been doing since this storm moved through, really since before it moved through Greensboro, this will eventually be headed in the direction of Jemison, right along 31. And then after that, moving towards Union Grove right along I-65. Now that's if this can hold together, but this storm has had a history of maintaining its strength and cycling. So as we put back on that uh, the velocity here, once again, it's not a velocity signature that really jumps out and screams, hey, there's a tornado on the ground. But what we do in this situation is we're looking based on that correlation coefficient at what might have just been a tornado on the ground. Evan was on the ground and he said he saw debris being lofted. So that tells us that something suspicious was going on as this moved across uh, 82. We're still showing that debris signature, but we could be in one of those one of those periods where this kind of cycles down and broadens out for a minute, but this could re-strengthen again. Uh, so we are looking at the possibility of a small circulation near Antioch Road. Um, Okay, so the National Weather Service is saying that yes, it does appear that there is some type of small circulation still ongoing as we maintain this TDS here moving over 139. Uh, the motion of this storm is towards the east at 50 miles per hour. So what I can do here is I can actually put a timed track on this. I've got that velocity set properly. Let's see here. This is about 13 minutes away from Jemison, that uh, tornado debris signature. We're about 11 miles away. We're 11 miles to the west of Jemison. This is going to be crossing over into Chilton County here pretty soon with a history of producing tornadoes that have caused damage, as we can see, lofted debris here. Let's look at the velocity here. And, you know, when, when we look at this velocity, it's, it's hard to pick out where exactly that rotation would be. Based on the track history, we know it would be somewhere over State Route 139, very close to the city of Randolph. It's about to cross over towards Posey Crossroads. Uh, based on this current scan, it's hard for me to pick out where exactly that rotation is. But it, w what matters is if you're within this polygon, you are in your safe place, lowest level of your home, as many walls between you and the outside as you can. And if you have friends or family, maybe you're just watching and you know somebody who lives in northern Chilton County, Give them a call. Let them know that they need to be turning on the TV or turning on YouTube or Facebook or however they like to watch the tornado coverage and let them know that they need to be paying attention because there is a storm moving into Chilton County that is tornado warned and has a history of producing 
uh, brief tornadoes. And we're still seeing what appears to be a tornado debris signature moving just north of the city of Randolph, really moving through uh, Randolph at this point. Just to the north, State Route 139 is where we have this tornado crossing at this point. And then next up, it'll be crossing over into northern Chilton County, moving towards uh, County Road 73, County Road 207. If you live in and around those roads, if you live in Posey Crossroads, you need to be in that safe place. There is a tornado that's likely on the ground right now. We're continuing with this TDS, and it's a fairly evident TDS as well. So that means this is on the ground. It's lofting debris. There are things in the atmosphere, tree limbs, branches, leaves, uh, things that are not raindrops or hail that are being lofted from what is likely a tornado still on the ground at this point. The same tornado that Evan caught uh, as he was driving on U.S. Highway 82 just a few minutes ago. So now we're looking at 139. After that, eventually in the general direction of Jemison. So if you live in Jemison, this is moving or is going to be moving close to your location here pretty soon within the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, this rotation will likely be crossing very close to you. Let's go to WEX 05 real quick if we can. Again, uh, getting a lot of uh, different images of these uh, thunderstorms. And again, this is kind of an example of what we're fighting with today. You, you, what's going on there is behind that tree line. And uh, again, uh, so much of what we have been seeing today, rain wrapped behind the trees. Uh, it, it's just impossible to show you a lot of this. You just have to trust us as we show the radar. Uh, so uh, let's go back to the uh, radar here. It's 1158. Uh, James Spann with Taylor Serrano. We're working a tornado warning in effect now for the northern part of Chilton County and extreme eastern Bibb County. And the good news, we really lost the tornado signature on radar, which is great. Uh, again, uh, it's windy, it's wet, but the tornado signature has gone away. Uh, the broad circulation is on Highway 139, Alabama 139, that's uh, near just north of Randolph in Bibb County, about to cross over into Chilton County here. And uh, if that trend continues, hopefully the Weather Service might consider canceling this warning. So let's look at velocity one more time as we are watching a broad circulation. And really, this is just more of a sign of strong gusty winds right here. There's just not that much evidence of a tornado at this point. But the Weather Service has been leaving the polygons up today. It's, it's a course of least regret. You don't want to just cancel a warning and then bring it right back if the thing redevelops. So they're going to watch this for a few volume scans and see if by chance anything redevelops in through here. And really, we've just kind of lost it. So at this point, so at the moment, we're not seeing a tornado in the storm, but the polygon is still up. And what do you do? Respect the polygon. And if you're in Jemison, Thorsby, Union Grove, Mineral Springs, uh, you want to stay sheltered. Collins Chapel, any of these places out here uh, in uh, the schools in Jemison and Thorsby need to keep the kids uh, in the tornado safe place until the polygon goes away. The happy moment is when Taylor draws that white X on these things, meaning that they've gone away. But at this point, it's still up. But the good news, the tornadic signature is clearly, pr clearly pretty much gone away for now. I want to go down to Dallas County really quickly. A lot of people are watching us there, and uh, we thank everybody for watching. But this is clearly becoming the dominant circulation right here. This thing looks nasty. I mean, that is ugly. This thing's coming right down Highway 22. Uh, it's very close to Orville, and that's going to come right up Highway 22 into uh, Selma right here. Uh, so again, I just wanted to show that again, this is in the Montgomery television market, but if you know anybody that lives uh, along Highway 22 from Orville to Selma, call them up, text them and tell them to watch the coverage and be sheltered. Uh, this one means business and we've seen signatures like this today that have produced significant tornadoes that have caused damage and this is a life threatening storm. Uh, the uh, again, the danger is ended from Safford West. OK, uh, so again, if you're in Thomaston, Safford, you're good. Northern Wilcox, you're good. The concern now, it's exclusively Dallas County, and really, it's trucking right down Highway 22 uh, from uh, basically uh, Orville right toward the city of Selma. Uh, and again, the warning extends uh, through the rest of Dallas County, and it includes, it looks like a little part of maybe Atauga County here, but our friends in uh, Prattville and Atauga County will have to watch this to see if that thing stays intact. 
So again, that is a tornado warning in effect for Dallas County, and that is our dominant tornado right now. The tornado warning for Dallas County in the central part of the state for a possible tornado trucking right down U.S. I'm sorry, Alabama 22. U.S. 80 is north of there. This is south of U.S. 80, south of Browns, uh, down toward Orville. So this is the second one. This is the one closer to home. So let's go back up to Chilton. And again, the good news, uh, there's just not a tornado signature right there at the moment. We don't have a tornado at the moment, which is great. But notice the red flashing polygon is still there, meaning we still have a tornado warning issued by the National Weather Service. And what, what they're doing here is they're, they're just going to wait and see if this thing tries to recycle. And some of these things today have been uh, cyclic. And uh, uh, again, uh, I think that is the, the right thing to do. Hopefully we can give you an all clear here shortly. Uh, but the warning, they just canceled the one for Bibb. And again, the, the Again, Bibb County, all clear for you. Uh, Randolph, Ashby, Briarfield, all clear. Brent, Centerville, you've been out for a while. So the uh, tornado warning has been taken out for Bibb County. It remains in effect for northern Chilton. Um, <clears throat> and again, a new tornado watch will be coming soon for some of the counties in east and southeast Alabama. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, so again, let's just hang on to this and we're going to stay right here. <clears throat> We've been on the air since about eight o'clock this morning. This is going on for about four hours. We did not expect to be on this long today. Quite frankly, this is overproduced in terms of uh, severe weather. And we know that a lot of you are getting hail at this point and strong winds. In fact, let's take a look at the broad view one more time. Taylor, I want to show the broad view with the reflectivity and just kind of show you where the severe weather threat is ended. I think that's good news. And again, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Gadsden. The risk of severe weather is ended and points north and west. So Tuscaloosa, severe weather risk is over. Birmingham, same thing. Gadsden, same thing. In areas north and west, it's over. This is a one and done line. Uh, we've got a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for northern Talladega for the possibility of large hail and strong winds. Storms be approaching Anniston here fairly soon. They're coming in toward East of Boga right now, coming uh, they're up toward uh, Glencoe. But again, we focus on the tornado warnings, and we have two in the state, two tornado warnings, one for northern Chilton and one for Dallas. Now, the one thing that's going to happen this afternoon, the surface low is passing far to the north, and we think with time, the winds will veer back to the southwest at the surface. And as that happens, that will create an environment less favorable for tornadoes this afternoon. So hopefully as we go along uh, for the rest of this afternoon for uh, these areas to the south and east, the tornado threat will lessen to some degree. But even with that, there could be an isolated tornado. Uh, so just be aware of that. But I think we might see evidence of that and how kind of how this line is behaving here and the fact that this is really weakened. So let's go back to northern Chilton. The reason we are here, it is a tornado warning in effect for northern Chilton County. And again, you can see uh, the velocity will look like this. And we have no evidence of a tornado at this point in northern Chilton, which is great. But still... If you are in Thorsby or Jemison or Collins Chapel or Union Grove, uh, I would be sheltered. Now, this is far north of Clanton. There is no tornado warning in effect. There's never been a tornado warning polygon for Clanton. We don't issue warnings for entire counties. We issue warnings for small parts of counties, polygons, if you will. And we've had a problem today. There's been a communication problem. I need to go and try and find out what happened. But a lot of people were believing they were in a polygon when they were not. And so many people are using the automated apps from different sources. There's a gazillion weather apps, you know, Uncle Joe's weather dot com or whatever. And some of these things just are really bad. They're, they're bad. And uh, it would be better to use people like us or, or if you don't like us, somebody else that, that, that can give you a credible discussion of what's happening here instead of that glance on a phone. Uh, because this is complicated stuff. This ain't easy. And uh, a little simple glance at an app for two seconds sometimes does more harm than good. So I'll just leave it at that. But again, the great news, we do not have any evidence of a tornado at this point in northern Chilton, and the polygon continues to shrink. And uh, again, technically, it still includes U.S. 31 and Interstate 65. Thorsby has been taken out of the polygon. So if you're in Thorsby, we'll give you an all clear from this tornado warning. And, and again, there's not a tornado here at the moment, but they're leaving this intact just in case something spins up. Any late damage reports, Taylor? No, not that I'm seeing uh, within the chat. Uh, 
haven't seen anything coming up in our Slack either. I've been monitoring on social media, and I haven't uh, seen any new reports. A lot of folks are watching, so thank you all for who, who are watching and sharing us and letting your friends and family know. That's so important to let your friends and family know who are within warning polygons what's going on, and I know that everybody's busy and everybody's watching TV all the time, and so it's really helpful when you make sure that your friends and family are weather aware as well. Uh, but so far, um, I know we had tornado debris signatures, and sometimes it just takes a little while for us to get uh, some of these reports in, some more of these pictures, these videos, and of course, we really appreciate all of you who do share uh, those reports with us. Now, so let's go to Wexo 5 real quick. Uh, let's look at some more video, Taylor. So this is going to be a little south of Brent, uh, and this is the uh, uh, what appears to be a tornado that is passing south of Centerville and south of Brent. And uh, this is the tornado that is uh, in now, or, or I think it's dissipated, but uh, that cell is now in northern Shilton County. But again, this is a, a great example of what these things have looked like today. And again, we thank everybody for taking the time to send these in. And just a reminder, I, I see all this stuff in real time. We, we can't show them all. We can't repost them all, but they are seen in real time. And these videos and the images that people send, they are our window to the world. And I'm so thankful that people do that. And again, uh, uh, this is uh, Highway 5 just south of uh, Brent uh, not that long ago. And again, that uh, uh, tornadic circulation went over US 82. Evan Chikvera had kind of a look at it from his vantage point. And now that is the circulation that is over into uh, northern Chilton, which is very, very, very broad uh, at this point. So let's go back to the radar. And if you are just joining us, we are here because of a tornado warning for northern Chilton. There's no evidence of a tornado now. The Weather Service is leaving this in to see if it wants to recycle and redevelop. But at the moment, it has not. Little hail, yes. Gusty winds, yes. Thunder, lightning, heavy rain, all that. You're going to have that. Uh, but again, for now, there's no strong evidence of any tornado in through here, which is certainly good news. Let's check this other uh, severe thunderstorm warning in effect. This is, uh, again, for the possibility of large hail. I would say large hail is falling right here, uh, basically right on top of the super speedway. I mean, that, that, that's, uh, goodness, this could be Toyota-sized hail right here that's falling right on top of the uh, Talladega super speedway. That's Interstate 20, that's U.S. 78. City of Talladega down here, that's Alabama 77. That's nasty looking. That's large hail. Uh, and again, you can see it uh, right there, almost right on top of the track. Uh, so a uh, good thing they're not racing today. Uh, and again, uh, that warning extends over into uh, the rest of northern Talladega County. That includes Munford. And uh, this hail ultimately will wind up affecting Anniston and Oxford and Weaver and Sachs and places like that. So if you're in southern uh, Calhoun, be aware that uh, you could see some pretty large hail with this. We've had a lot of that in uh, Shelby, and there's your new warning right there. It just came up. So a new severe thunderstorm warning in effect. This will include the southern part of Calhoun County. This will include the cities of Anniston, Oxford, back up towards Sachs and Weaver, uh, and kind of clipping Jacksonville. And uh, for the possibility of really large hail, I mean, that's nasty looking right on top of the super speedway. And that'll be coming out along Interstate 20. I would not want to be driving along Interstate 20 uh, between East Aboga and Lincoln over the next 15 minutes because that would uh, do some dinging and maybe crack your windshield. You just don't want to be involved in that. So you might want to stop and pull over if you're in uh, East Alabama because of the potential for large hail and strong gusty winds. But I think the core part of this warning is for the possibility of large hail uh, in that segment that is right on top of the Talladega Super Speedway. I mean, uh, look, <laughs> there's the track right there. And uh, goodness gracious, right on top of that. Wow. Uh, all right, so let's go back to uh, Northern Chilton. And again, uh, we are at 12.09. We've been here for four hours, and uh, we were hoping we would get rid of these tornado warnings a little earlier this morning. Hasn't happened so far. But let's look at the velocity and see if we have anything, and the answer is no. Uh, again, when does this thing expire, Taylor? Um, it expires at 12.30. <clears throat> 20 more minutes. All right. Let's go down to Selma. I'm worried about uh, the, the Selma thing looks bad. Uh, this, this is nasty. Goodness oh gracious. Oh, my goodness. This is bad. Um, wow. So uh, that, that's, uh, that's a very, very violent looking tornado signature here. This is a little south of US 80. Uh, this is Alabama Highway 219 right here. And again, this tornadic signature is coming right up towards Selma. Uh, 
the tornado signature is a little north of Alabama 22. Alabama 22 goes from Selma down to Orville. And that's your tornado signature right there, and it's moving up in this direction. This might affect the uh, uh, western and northern part of the city of Selma. Uh, that's the Selma Bypass right here. Selma Mall sits right here. Um, Henry Brick sits right there. Edmund Pettus Bridge is right here. US 80 is right here. So again, I just wanted to show you that. And again, this is in the Montgomery television market, but again, Folks can watch anybody at any time with digital and social these days, and I just wanted to give people a heads up. So again, if you know somebody that lives uh, in Selma, especially in the northern and western part of the city of Selma, uh, I'd call them now and tell them to, to get in a safe place. Now. Don't wait. Now. Don't go out there and look for it. Now. Uh, and that that's a really, really dangerous tornado signature that's going to be passing near or just north of Selma. <clears throat> and again, that's uh, that's rough. This is Alabama Highway 22 right here coming up toward Valley Grand, which is right here. Uh, this is Alabama Highway 14 going over toward Otagaville and Otaga County. And if this thing stays intact, uh, a warning is going to be needed for Otaga County soon. So again, if you're in Otagaville or Prattville, keep an eye on that and uh, really keep a close eye on that. But again, a very dangerous storm that is coming up on the northern and western part of the city of Selma. Uh, so let's see, let's go back to Chilton. Uh, when does this warning expire for Chilton? Just out of curiosity. 1230. All right. Um, uh, and again, I guess they're going to leave it in. Um, let me check here. Yeah, there's just, there's nothing there at this point, but still, as long as that flashing polygon is in place, Stay sheltered, and hopefully we can X that out shortly. But let's go back down to Selma. Uh, Kevin down at the Weather Service wants us to hit that thing hard, and he's right. Uh, this is the most dangerous storm, I'd say, of the day. This is in an area where the environment is very favorable for uh, to a tornado in terms of buoyancy and the dynamic support. And uh, again, uh, this potential tornado, which I think it probably is there, we're not seeing really a well-defined debris signature yet, it's coming right up on Selma. This is urgent. So again, if you know anybody in the city of Selma, they should be sheltered. This is the Alabama River right here. My finger is on the Edmund Pettus Bridge uh, right there. Uh, and again, Alabama 22 is right here. You've got Block Park right here. Um, Live Oak Cemetery right here. Block Park is about right here. Again, that's the river. And you've got that uh, tornadic signature that's coming right up into Selma. Uh, this is downtown Selma. Water Street is here. This is uh, old US 80. This is the uh, bypass. The Selma Mall sits right here. And uh, again, uh, this is uh, pretty urgent. So if you can help us, if you know anybody that lives in Selma, call them now and text them now and let them know that they've got to be in a shelter. They can't be in a mobile home. They can't be in a car. If they're driving, they need to pull off and just stop at something, a fast food restaurant, a gas station, something. And if they're in a site built house, they need to uh, be in a small room on the lowest floor with a helmet away from windows near the center of the house. Uh, and again, uh, this is a uh, pretty, th this might be the most significant signature of the day. And I know that this is in the Montgomery TV market. And we're here because technically we still have parts of our DMA, our designated market area under a warning, Northern Chilton, but there's no tornado signature up there right now. So we're kind of focusing on this. And again, uh, you see the signature right here, and that'll be coming out across the northern part of the city of Selma. Most likely this stays a little north of the Alabama River. Again, uh, historic downtown Selma is here, and uh, US 80 is right here. You follow US 80 out that way, it goes to uh, Uniontown and Demopolis. That's Alabama 14. You follow Highway 14, that goes to Otagaville and Prattville. Uh, so a very dangerous storm that is coming into the city of Selma right now. And again, uh, uh, we probably are seeing some evidence of debris that's being lofted. The storm is a little tilted. We've got the beam at a fairly high height here. But uh, th this is uh, what we've got to focus on. And you can help us, again, if you happen to know anybody that happens to be down in these areas, and you can let, us, let them know that a really dangerous storm is approaching. Um, so... Let's quickly bounce back up to Northern Chilton. We're going to come back to this in just a second, but Northern Chilton belongs to us. And uh, let's see what it looks like up here. We're looking at uh, 
Yeah, we're seeing that little spot right there that almost looks like a tornado debris signature. And, and the, the velocity doesn't reflect a tornado, but we're seeing evidence of something being lofted here, which uh, sometimes you get this odd correlation. Uh, just, there's noise. Yeah, th this yeah. might be more noise than anything else. I'm not convinced that's debris. But having said that, let's point out a couple of things. First off, we can give an all clear to I-65. I-65, US-31, all clear. If you need to drive from uh, Birmingham down to Clanton, you're good. And I, we might have a tornado approaching Prattville here in a little bit. But from this Chilton County circulation, all clear for Jemison, for Thorsby, for US-31, for I-65. A small polygon segment remains, and this includes Alabama Highway 145. That's the road that runs from uh, Clanton up toward the town of Shelby and the town of Wilsonville. Uh, so again, just a small area in uh, northeastern Chilton County remains under a tornado warning. And as long as that's there, we're going to stay here. Uh, and I don't think they will extend this. We just really don't see evidence of a tornado here. Um, of course, next up, you've got Lay Lake over here. And everybody on the lake, they're watching this carefully. And we are. And understand, everybody, it's, you're going to have rain and gusty winds and some hail and all that. But in terms of the tornado threat, that's the things we focus on here. It's just not showing that at this point. So let's go back down to uh, Selma, uh, if we can. Um, <clears throat> all right. Wow. Goodness, that looks nasty. Whew. So we have potential for what could be a, oh, Lord have mercy. Mm. That's a very, very, this, I would say this most likely is a large destructive tornado that's coming up into Selma. All right. And again, you've got to be sheltered if you're in Selma, anywhere north of the Alabama River, north of the Alabama River. The Alabama River is right here. All right. Edmund Pettus Bridge is right here. This is US 80. This is the Selma Bypass. Selma Moss, it's right here. Downtown Selma is right here. Historic downtown Selma. Uh, we've got uh, what could be a very uh, destructive tornado that's about to come into Selma in Dallas County. Uh, so again, uh, the encouragement here is to help us. We've asked you that for the last few minutes, but again, I'll do it one more time because of the urgency of this. If you know anybody that happens to be in the city of Selma, give them a call. And if they get mad, they can get mad at me. You know, if they get mad that you're calling them. Uh, and uh, th this uh, it looks very significant. Uh, Taylor, we heard anything about damage out of this thing in Dallas County so far? Not yet. Um, but um, that, that's coming. Yeah, so again, let me, let me just read from the text of the Weather Service. A confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado is pretty much in the Selma right now, moving east at 40 miles an hour. Uh, and a tornado warning is being issued downstream. Let's look at the new tornado warning so we can kind of give people a heads up on this. Uh, uh, this will include uh, Autauga County. And uh, really, it looks like this tornado, which is right here, is going to be passing maybe a little north of Autaugaville and north of Prattville. This is Autaugaville and this is Prattville right here. This is US 82. All right, and so, uh, and again, this is Alabama 14 right here. And um, uh, so this tornado will most likely come out across the northern part of Otauga County. And um, again, uh, Billingsley is right here. Uh, so again, this is the county line. This is Chilton, this is Otauga, and Otaugaville is here. So Prattville is the, the core, like downtown Prattville, where the old Pratt Gin is located here. There's there's no polygon here, but just north of Prattville. Uh, Pine Level is right here. Uh, the community of Booth is right here. Again, Billingsley. So basically, we don't want anybody driving on US 82 from Jim's Pit Barbecue down to Prattville. Just stop it. Just stop. Don't go. Uh, wait this thing out because of the signature we're seeing on radar here. And uh, again, It'll be crossing Mulberry Creek. Mulberry Creek separates Dallas from Atauga counties and then moving into Atauga. But let's go back into Selma, Taylor. Uh, that, that thing looks just bad. Yes, yeah, we're looking at what is a, a large, dangerous tornado moving through Selma right now. Uh, there is confirmation from video. I don't have the video, um, but we're getting reports that there are, there's video of evidence of this tornado that is on the ground in Selma right now moving through Selma. 
This is a tornado debris signature. This is lofted debris. These are pieces of buildings. These are pieces of people's homes that are being lifted from this tornado. Just moved through Sunset Mill Village, uh, moving across Oak Street, Bell Road. Um, this is Selma right here. I mean, this is moving into downtown Selma right now, moving through downtown Selma. It's going to be crossing through the western and northern parts of downtown Selma, just north uh, of the river there. It's moving across, let's get down here and talk about some of these roads, State Route 14. I mean, th this is basically, you can see where all these, these different crossroads are. This is downtown. This is moving through downtown at this point. And we know that this is a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado on the ground. Um, with each radar scan, we're seeing more damage that's been picked up. It's going to move just to the... Uh, to the north here of State Route 14 pretty soon. It's crossing over State Route 14 here. That would be uh, 80, Highway 80. It's moving over Highway 80. And after this, it's going to be moving just north of Brantley. And it's going to keep moving on a northeastward track away from Selma. But at, at this point, it is still sitting over downtown Selma. And uh, the fact that we can really see the debris signature this well this far away from the radar site means that this is a very strong tornado. This debris is being lofted really high up into the atmosphere, very high up into the air. Um, and just looking at the velocity, I mean, this is as clear as it gets in terms of a tornado on the ground uh, very close to Bell Road. Please make sure you are alerting your friends, your family. Let them know what's going on so that they can be in their safe place. This is moving through Selma now, uh, but it's going to continue to move northeastward and uh, move in the general direction of Burnsville, Evergreen. If it holds together, it's going to be moving very close to Valley Grand, just south of Valley Grand, crossing between Valley Grand and Brantley. And I do have to, we're going to cut away from this warning for just a second because I get to draw an X, which good. is, you good. Know, that's good. So this is, um, yeah, so, so we, the, the warning in effect for uh, Chilton County has gone away. There's no tornado there. So Chilton County, all clear. Uh, let's look at the reflectivity real quick. And I wanted to show these newer warnings. We have severe thunderstorm warnings in effect now for parts of southeastern Shelby. And hail is falling. Hail is falling in all of this line segment here. Uh, up Highway 145 from the town of Shelby back up to Wilsonville right on top of Lay Lake. And some of that hail is large. That's the reason for this severe thunderstorm warning. The severe thunderstorm warning includes uh, Sylacauga and Sycamore, Winterboro, Childersburg uh, for that line segment coming through. And again, the concern, strong winds and large hail. Let's check the uh, Anniston Oxford situation again. There's no tornado warning here. This is a severe thunderstorm warning for the possibility of large hail and strong winds coming right up and down Highway 21. Uh, Anniston, Weaver, Sachs, back up to Jacksonville. So a severe thunderstorm warning in effect now for parts of Cleburne and southern Calhoun counties. that has been up for a while, and it continues in effect for parts of northern Talladega County and now southern Talladega County and parts of Shelby County. In fact, let's, let's kind of show the whole view here, Taylor, the whole uh, shoot match, if you will. And uh, once this line passes, you're done with severe weather. You're done with it. Uh, the line runs from the southern part of Weiss Lake right down to Anniston, Talladega, on top of Lay Lake. And again, that tornado warning for Chilton County is off the board. Uh, the tornado warning has been canceled. We have severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for parts of Shelby, parts of Talladega, parts of Calhoun, parts of Cleburne counties for the possibility of large hail and damaging wind. The big story, it's down here, uh, which just came through Selma, a very large, destructive tornado. Uh, and I, 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 we all have great concern over what happened in Selma. So let's go back and look at that, uh, Taylor. We're going to stay here for just a little bit. Uh, of course, uh, Selma belongs to the Montgomery television market. But uh, again, there's your tornado signature. So the tornado has come through Selma, the northern part of Selma. Uh, it, it could have missed downtown by just a little bit, but not by far. Um, and again, that's debris being lofted probably up to about 10, 12,000 feet. And again, that is moving to the northeast. This is the town of Burnsville here. Uh, this is out Alabama Highway 14. Alabama 14 runs over to Otagaville. Uh, but this is moving northeast. This will likely stay north of Alabama 14. But again, for Selma, we can now give you an all clear. The city of Selma itself, the tornado is now just northeast of Selma. 
So for the city of Selma, we'll give an all clear. It's kind of like the Greensboro situation. We had uh, not, not quite this intense, but a pretty good tornado signature went right over Greensboro earlier today. Uh, and again, uh, we know that this is a larger tornado here. Uh, we've seen some of the stills from that and understand we don't have uh, permission to use a lot of uh, what we see online and some of what we see online. Again, we, we just can't throw out there right now, but I'll tell you there's a good chance this was a large violent tornado and it's probably still down. And uh, again, it's in an environment where the instability values are higher and it's a very dynamic system. And again, there's not that much instability involved over North Alabama, but down here, yes. And let's let me show the warning again for Atauga County, uh, Taylor. This is going to be the tornado warning that will uh, stretch out into Atauga County, and this is going to be north of Prattville. So pr downtown Prattville is right here, uh, and downtown Prattville is not in the polygon. The greatest concern is north of Prattville. And again, US 82 is right here. This is your tornado here. It'll be crossing over Mulberry Creek, south of Jones, uh, south of Plantersville. Uh, and from there, it goes into Atauga County. And uh, it's going to be coming out here toward uh, uh, U.S. Highway 82, toward uh, towns like Milton, Alabama, uh, which is in the central part of Atauga County. These are fairly smaller communities. But again, U.S. 82 is a well-traveled road between uh, Brent and Tuscaloosa and Montgomery. Uh, so we encourage nobody on U.S. 82. And understand, this polygon does include Interstate 65 and U.S. 31. Uh, this is the Pine Level exit right here. Our Marbury is right up here. This is the Chilton County line. And uh, if by chance this thing stays down, warnings could be required over here for parts of northern Elmore County or maybe parts of Coosa County. This is Coosa and this is uh, Elmore. In fact, I was just down here in uh, uh, Millbrook uh, earlier this week seeing the kids at Millbrook Middle School down in Elmore County. Uh, so again, just everybody keep a really close eye on this. There's a good chance this is a large destructive tornado that has just come through uh, Selma. And again, you, you, you know, after these things come through and you see it on radar, you just hope you don't see those horrible damage pictures. And maybe that'll be the case. But we know there's clearly some damage involved here. Um, in fact, I'm starting to see some images coming in. Uh, let's take a look at uh, WEX 05 if we can. Uh, these images were taken from uh, the hospital uh, in Selma uh, here within the last few minutes. And again, it's just going to be hard to see anything. If there's a tornado down, it's back there behind that tree, and most likely it is. This is from Vaughan Regional Hospital in Selma. Um, and uh, again, uh, most likely there is a tornado in that image uh, back behind that tree line. And uh, the fact that they're getting images out from Selma, that's a good thing. Taylor Hale just sent that in from Selma here uh, recently. And again, if we get any additional information, we know a lot of you have relatives or friends there, and many of you maybe live there. And, and remember, after a tornado comes through a, a community, you lose cell service, you lose power, and often communication can be fairly hard uh, initially for a while. But uh, hopefully we'll... Uh, we, we look for good reports. I'm looking for pictures of no damage. That's the best possible case here. So we'll go back to the radar. It's uh, 1230. And let me just say up front, we have no tornado warnings in effect for our television market, which means we'll probably think about going back to regular programming here shortly. Uh, even though we've got a line of pretty nasty storms coming through, there's no tornado warnings, zero, none for our TV market. I know if you're an Aniston, you're thinking, hey, it's horrible here. It is. And you've got a severe thunderstorm warning. But we have to focus on this life-threatening weather. And again, we've got potential for a large, violent tornado northeast of Selma. And again, for Selma, the danger is over. All clear for Selma. And uh, again, the tornado is about to cross Mulberry Creek from Dallas County into Atauga County, which is right here. And if you live, and again, Billingsley is here. All right, because you're bearing straight. Atogaville is right down through here. This is US uh, 82, town of Booth. Is right here. They make some good sausage down in Booth. Uh, they really do. And only I would know that. Uh, and then you got Jim's Pit Barbecue up here, which is also some pretty good stuff. Uh, but Doremus Sausage and Jim's Pit Barbecue, there's their free ads of the day. We'll, we'll send them an invoice. Uh, so again, let's go back to our velocity display. And Taylor, it's still there. I mean, it doesn't look maybe as scary as it did 15 minutes ago, but it's still there. It's still there, and we still have the... Uh you know, the TDS showing up. So that means that we likely have 
Tornado still on the ground at this point. This has been another one of those long, long tr track ones. You know, there were a couple that lasted fairly long. There were others that touched down quickly, went away. So we've kind of had a mixture. This has been kind of a weird event. Uh, this has been a weird line of storms today. Overperforming. Uh, some of these, you know, usually when we see these QLCS tornadoes, they happen quickly, they go away. And some of these have actually maintained their strength. This has been one of them that's been down for a while. It went through Selma, of course, and now oh, we're tracking this storm in the general direction of Evergreen. And it's going to be moving towards I-65 if it continues to hold together. And so far, it hasn't really showed signs. I mean, it's cycling, but it's not completely broadening out and completely going away. So uh, this has been one of those storms that's been interesting uh, to watch here. And we'll have to keep a close eye on this. It's going to continue to move um, towards Joffrey. And then eventually, if it holds together, uh, maybe close to or just north of Pine Level. Uh, so we'll keep a close eye on the uh, city of Burnsville right now on that TDS just to see how that TDS is evolving. That'll kind of give us a clearer picture of whether or not this storm is still on the ground. But based on the rotation, looks like it could be. I mean, this this really isn't showing so much in the way of weakening on the uh, velocity signatures there. So this is moving along State Route 14, moving through Burnsville. And there you go. You get another TDS showing up, or the same TDS, but a little bit stronger indication of a lowering in that CC, which indicates to us that this is still pretty strong. It's lofting debris fairly high up into the atmosphere. It's moving towards Statesville and we're seeing some of those blues show up. This likely just moved over uh, well, State Route 14, it just moved through Dallas County 80 and then uh, moving through Burnsville right now as we speak. General direction of Statesville. It's going to be moving over uh, Otago County Road 15 here pretty soon. Winslow moving towards your location to be passing very close to or just south of Evergreen. Uh, so let's take Wex 05 real quick. Uh, I want to show some damage pictures. Now, this is not from Selma. This is from near Greensboro earlier today. Uh, Taylor, we've had so many of these things. Uh, uh, th this is the one that came through uh, very, very close to Greensboro. And if you watched our coverage, you know how concerned we were about Greensboro. And this is uh, what has happened. You can see a number of trees down. We've had uh, structural damage. And again, we're still starting to find out uh, more about what's happened in Hale County. But again, all of these coming from Greensboro. And uh, this image, uh, Taylor, was taken from the parking lot of the Walmart in Selma uh, oh. of that large tornado. And again, this was taken about uh, 10, 12 minutes ago. Uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, this was taken from Vaughan Regional Hospital in Selma. And again, it's just, again, like all these tornadoes today, it's kind of hard to see these things. But again, there's pretty good evidence that there is what could be a sizable tornado uh, back in there that came through Selma. And we'll know much more in coming minutes and hours and days exactly what has uh, happened there. Uh, the debris with the Selma tornado at one point lofted to uh, 16,000 feet. And that doesn't happen that often. That, that's a significant tornado territory. So let's go back to the uh, radar here. It's 1234. And uh, let's go to our big picture, Taylor, with reflectivity. We want to focus on uh, the line of storms. And the line of storms is coming through uh, near Piedmont, down to Anniston, Talladega, Sylacauga, Jemison. Within that, we have tornado warnings in effect now for parts of Coosa, Talladega, Calhoun, and Cleburne counties for hail and strong winds. There is no evidence of any tornado activity uh, east of I-65 with this band of storms. If there was, we'd let you know. Uh, but like we've seen all day, the storms are capable of producing strong straight line winds and a lot of hail. We've had a lot of hail today. This upper trough coming in is very cold. That's one reason we think we're probably going to see some snow flurries tomorrow. Uh, but the tornado problem is down here. So let's go back down to our storm that is affecting Otauga County. And if this thing holds together, we might wind up with a warning for Elmore or maybe a small part of Coosa County, which is in our territory. But this is mainly in the Montgomery television market. And again, uh, we're going to watch this. It looks like the circulation is broadening out a little bit, uh, which is good. But I want to stress that US 82, Interstate 65, US 31, all in the polygon. 
And that's not a broad look like there. Which one is that? Is that Birmingham? That's Montgomery. Montgomery, MXX. Uh, this is coming from the uh, MXS, uh, MXX radar, which gives us kind of a closer look into this thing. And again, uh, that circulation will be uh, cutting out across US 82 fairly soon. Uh, it'll be crossing over near the town of Milton, then coming out across US 82, and then ultimately uh, cutting in here across I-65 and US 31. The town of Billingsley has been taken out of the polygon. Again, as the uh, tornado moves along, we can make the polygon smaller as we get a higher confidence of the track. So again, if you're in Billingsley, uh, we'll give you an all clear. Uh, Billingsley High School, the, uh, uh, the school complex there, an all clear. The concern begins about five miles south of Billingsley uh, down to near the town of Booth. So this is basically between Billingsley and Prattville. Prattville, not in the polygon. Billingsley, not in the polygon. Uh, this tornado is going to be crossing US 82 between Billingsley and Prattville. And then ultimately, if it hangs in there, it'll be crossing Interstate 65 and US 31. Pine Level, Marbury, somewhere up in this region right in through here. Uh, Marbury High School sits about right here. Uh, and then from there, it crosses into northern Elmore and maybe a small part of southern Coosa. So if you live in some community like Equality in southern Coosa County, just kind of keep an eye on this thing and uh, we will uh, let you know. All right, Taylor, any other reports on your end? So it sounds like we actually, are, uh, John DeBlock is going to head down to Soma. So we'll be getting some reports from him on what's going on on the ground there um, as he's going to head that way based on we're getting, we're starting to see some Selma, some Selma reports of some damage. Um, coming yeah, let's let's in. go to Wexo 7, yeah. or Wexo 5, I'm sorry, Wexo 5. Uh, this is some video. Uh, man, that thing looks big. Goodness gracious. This is the uh, Walmart in Selma, and that's video of what uh, looks to be a very large tornado uh, coming through Selma. And again, uh, Taylor, we'll, let mm -hmm. me do some other work here. We'll see if we can get some other reports out of there. Um, but this, this could still be on the ground. I mean, we're still looking at what appears to be fairly good circulation just to the south of Evergreen now. And uh, that's going to be moving towards I-65. You know, we'll do one of those tracks where it tells you how long it's going to be till it gets somewhere, which is this little arrow thing. So it is approximately 19 miles from I-65. It'll be crossing over I-65 in about 20 minutes. Uh, so this will be crossing over I-65, very close to Pine Level. And then we will see if this warning is extended. I wanted to check on that correlation coefficient here and see what we've got. And really when we look at this correlation coefficient, I'm not seeing anything super, super clear, but that doesn't mean that we don't have something going on here. The storm, uh, as we keep saying, has had a history of producing uh, tornadoes throughout its life cycle. Looks like it's broadening out a little bit. We just got a new radar scan in. Uh, this would, would be a little bit broader of a look in terms of that rotation, but this could, once again, start to cycle as it has uh, in the past. So we'll keep watching this tornado warning uh, as it keeps moving towards the northeast. It's going to eventually uh, be crossing over I-65. And I, I say within the next couple radar scans here, we'll, we'll likely know if this is going to re-strengthen or not. And then the National Weather Service will be making a decision on whether or not to issue a downstream warning for this. Let's take a look at the reflectivity. Sometimes you can kind of get a clearer picture. And it's it's hailing in Billingsley right now. Um, we've got hail with this, heavy rain with this. But, of course, the reason we're on the air right now is because it, there is also a tornado warning with this that's going to be crossing over 82 pretty soon, eventually then moving on towards I-65. Um, and then we'll see what happens from there in terms of if it can maintain its strength. Uh, it seems like... This one kind of took the energy away from the circulation we were tracking earlier in northern Chilton County, but there's really not another circulation to the south of this or anything to really cut this off and steal away the energy. So this one could be one of those that does maintain its strength a little bit farther down, uh, farther down the road. So that's why, you know, it's really important that we continue to watch how this is evolving and how it's interacting with the atmosphere because there hasn't been rain here yet. This is not moving into rain cooled air. Uh, this is kind of some untouched air that this this storm is able to tap into. And so uh, that's why we could potentially see this one continue 
on with that warning for a little while longer. Uh, this once again is the same storm that we had moved through the Selma area. We saw a, a large TDS uh, as this, this storm moved through Selma and we're working to get confirmation on any kind of damage, uh, anything like that from the Selma area. Uh, as we watch uh, how this continues to evolve and you know we're kind of starting to see a little bit of an indication that this could be tightening back up again before it reaches 82. Um, so we'll, we'll monitor this. Yeah, let's go to our XO5 here for a few minutes. Let's show some of the uh, videos here. This is a uh, video from Selma and uh, that thing looks big. Oh my this goodness. is from uh, Justin Bone. Uh, Justin's wife just sent that to me. And again, this, you can see it's a, a screen grab, looks like from uh, Snapchat. Uh, but he sent this video to uh, her, and she in turn sent that to us. And uh, yes, that is a tornado. And this is some of the damage from Selma. We're starting to see a few videos coming out of Selma. And again, I want to thank everybody for sending these to me, and please do it safely. Uh, but again, this was taken a few minutes ago and people are just now beginning to see what happened and they're beginning to assess the damage. And again, if you missed it, this is the tornado from the Walmart parking lot in Selma. And uh, that, that's big. And again, uh, Taylor, as we go, we'll get more images. But uh, again, this is the first just quick look at some damage. And I don't know what part of town that's in. Uh, but uh, again, uh, we'll be uh, watching here carefully for these videos coming in here in the next few minutes. Back over to you. All right, and uh, as James continues to look for uh, more of those reports, he's you know he gets all kinds of uh, viewer photos, videos, and we're very thankful for that. I will uh, take us down to what's going on with this storm right now. So this is from the Montgomery radar. Looks like we're starting to see that strengthening again, and unfortunately, that this that's how this storm has been. We've been tracking this for quite some time now, and at times we'll see it kind of broad now, and then it tightens back up and produces a tornado and as this is crossing over 82 right now that circulation does look to be tighter again and so this could be in the process of producing a new tornado or we could have a tornado on the ground let me check this correlation coefficient with this uh, to see not showing any really clear cut correlation co or co yeah dropping a correlation coefficient with this but what we do have is clear cut rotation evident that is uh, crossing over 82 here, I'd say in the next couple of minutes, two, three minutes, this is going to be crossing over uh, that road and then moving towards Joffrey, Old Kingston, County Road 21, um, moving to the south of White City, New Prospect, Mount Sinai, really crossing in between White City and Mount Sinai, and then eventually crossing over I-65. I'd say within the next 10 minutes or so. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do another one of those tracks where we can get timing. So this will be crossing over I-65 in the next 15 minutes or so. And uh, this is gonna be crossing very close to Posey's Crossroads. So if you know anybody in that area, in the Posey's Crossroads area, let them know there is a storm moving in that has had a history of producing large tornadoes they need to be in that safe place. The safe place would be lowest level of your home, many walls in between you and the outside as possible. If you live in a mobile or manufactured home, you can't stay there. You have to go to either a store or a gas station or wherever, any place that is a site built structure, that's where you need to go or a tornado shelter. If there is one uh, within a reasonably close distance from where you are, that's where you need to be as the storm crosses through as this has had a history of producing tornadoes and based on the current velocity signature uh, this looks like it, it could try to to drop another tornado the latest scan showing what could be maybe some evidence of a tornado that was on the ground just to the east of winslow here let me see if i can co-locate that with the uh, velocity and i do want to show um some more images here. Let, let's go to uh, WEX05, and uh, this is a um, video that's just in uh, from uh, Selma. And that, uh, I'm trying to figure out exactly where they are here. Um, we're going to let this roll here for just a second. Uh, Looks like the tornado is there off in the distance, uh, apparently a very large 
destructive tornado. Uh, this video is uh, from Connie Hand. Uh, she says her husband is working in Selma today, and she says the damage is just horrible. Um, and again, uh, we'll let this go for just a second. I've got another video here, and this might not be the one with the best uh, tornado damage video, but again, uh, we're just getting reports of horrific damage and potential injuries in, uh, in Selma. And again, uh, let's go to this next video. I'll tell you what, let's, uh, that's the one we just saw. Let's go back to the radar for just a second. I'm going to load up one more video here. Uh, these come in uh, so fast and so furious that uh, often... All right, now let's go to this. Let's take a look at uh, WEX 05. And I tell you what, let's go back to the radar. Taylor, let me let you take it for just a second. I'm going to do okay. one thing and we'll get that corrected there. All right, sounds good. We will continue to track this circulation. Of course, this is the same storm that we are talking about that moved through Selma. At that time, it was producing a very large, dangerous tornado, we believe. Uh, right now, this latest scan, we're starting to see what could be the beginnings of a new circulation trying to tighten up and touch down. Uh, this is very close to the jo Joffrey community. It just moved over, what is that, 83? Um, and it's moving in the uh, general direction of I-65 here pretty soon uh, near Pine Level. Want to check the correlation coefficient on this. So far, with this latest scan, we don't have what appears to be a debris signature, but that looks to me to be rotation that is still significant. I mean, this, this storm has been a long-lived storm, and typically with some of these storms that form along a line, when we have these QLCS type events, we don't see these long-lived tornadoes, and this has kind of been an exception to the rule, and we had another tornado warning earlier in the day that was kind of, one of more of a long-lived tornado warning as let's, well. Let's go to WEX05 and uh, let's take a look at this and see what we've got. This is uh, uh, going to be from Selma and uh, again uh, I can't tell you exactly what part of town that is in uh, but uh, again this is uh, some of the uh, damage that uh, they'll be coming up on here in just a second. And if you're just joining us, apparently a pretty large tornado came through parts of the city of Selma. And we're trying to uh, review some of the early video we're getting in here and see exactly, look at the damage there on the left. Uh, and again, obviously there's uh, considerable damage there, but good to see the houses are uh, intact. They're on the slab. Uh, looks like some pretty severe damage off in the distance there. And again, uh, this is, uh, we're all kind of watching this uh, together for the first time. And uh, if you've got a severe tornado damage track, it's going to be impossible to drive in there. And he might be kind of on the periphery of the track. It looks like uh, the power is out. And uh, again, you can see a roof partially off the structure there. Uh, but again, this is just uh, some examples of, of some of the damage in Selma. And this is some of the first uh, video that we have seen here. So Taylor, let me kick it back over to you. We'll go for some more video here before we go back to programming. Okay, and we are still watching what appears to be another potential instance of this tornado trying to re-strengthen again and it could be on the ground if not now shortly as it moves over I-65. We do have um, now an observed so let's check that correlation coefficient and I'm not quite picking up on a TDS from that radar view. It might be that we just need to wait one moment for that to uh, pick up here uh, but we are looking at a new tornado warning here in the next few minutes. Uh, the National Weather Service is planning to extend this warning um, to include parts of Elmore County. So if you live in Elmore County, northern Elmore County, this, the, you're going to be going under a warning here pretty soon. So go ahead and start to take those tornado precautions. Of course, as soon as that warning comes out, we'll be, give, be able to give you the exact cities of who's in, who's out. Uh, but for now, if you live in northern, there we go. Uh, there's that new warning. It is going to include Chilton Coosa Elmore. So this will include the south eastern corner of Chilton County, Midway. It's going to include a small portion of I-65 in Chilton County. 
and then it also includes parts of Elmore and then Coosa County. Uh, so we are looking at what is the same storm that just keeps cycling and dropping potential tornadoes. Um, and look at that in latest scan. Man, that really tightened up quick. Um, and we've got a nasty, nasty tornado debris signature again. Oh, boy. Just north of Old Kingston. That'll be crossing over I-65. You should not be driving on I-65 in Otago County. Tornado observed. Large and extremely dangerous tornado near Vita Junction. Or is it Vida? Vida. Vida. Um, let's go back to uh, WEX 05 real quick. I want to show more video coming in from Selma. And again, this is coming from the uh, Selma Walmart. We've uh, Caleb Legrone has been sending us these images. Uh, don't know if Caleb was shopping there or working there, but again, uh, you can see uh, the large tornado that came through Selma earlier, and this is the tornado that we're working right now. Uh, and again, uh, if you look at that, uh, it's pretty significant. Uh, you can see uh, the clear rotation going on there, and uh, again, that's that's a pretty big one. And this is what came through Selma earlier today, and that is the storm that is coming through Atauga County uh, right now. And again, we'll watch that one more time together. Yep. All right, so let's go back to the radar. And uh, again, so this is a new tornado warning, and this will affect parts of southern Coosa County. We've got the potential tornado, which is located right here. So it's now between US 82 and Interstate 65. And again, to get your bearing straight, Pine Level is here, Marbury is here, and this will include a small part of Chilton County as well, uh, Taylor. So it looks like Verbena is right here. And again, uh, we've got uh, a small part of Verbena, the southern part of Coosa County, the northern part of Elmore County. You can see the polygon basically runs from, the, the northern edge of the polygon runs from Verbena up to Rockford and then over into Tallapoosa County around Lake Martin, which is right here. The town of Equality is right here. So this is an effect for the southeastern corner of Chilton County. It is an effect for about the southern half of Coosa County and the northern part of Elmore County. This is all north of Millbrook, north of Wetumpka. Uh, but again, you can see the TDS right here, tornado debris signature. And again, uh, that'll be crossing over Interstate 65 uh, near Pine Level to Marbury, somewhere in through here, all right? Pine Level, Marbury, right in through here. The Pine Level exit is down here. Uh, Marbury is up here. Marbury High School is about right here. Everybody in Marbury should be sheltered right now. And from there, it might clip that extreme southeastern part of Chilton County. And again, Verbena is right on the northern edge of this polygon. So if you're in Verbena, if you have a Verbena mailing address, uh, if you're south of Ver the school in Verbena, I'd be sheltered from this. And the same thing over in Decusa County if you're long in the south of uh, Rockford. This is just crossing right over I-65. I mean, yeah. we got to get people, if you can, if you know someone who's driving on I-65, give them a call, tell them, hey, pull over, go to the uh, gas station, go anywhere where they can shelter while this, this is nasty looking. This is a, this is a large, dangerous, probably a violent tornado that's going to be crossing over I-65 here pretty soon in Autauga County. So again, we are encouraging people not to be driving along Interstate 65 or US 31. Again, to get your bearings here, this is Interstate 65 right here. This is US 31 right here. And again, the Pine Level exit is down here. Uh, this is Marbury, Marbury School. It sits about right here. And again, that debris signature, that, that tornado, and I, I don't want to call it that, it's a tornado, is going to come right through the town of Marbury up here in the northern part of Otauga County. Uh, so again, uh, everybody up here, needs to be sheltered. Now, Marbury, if you know anybody in this polygon in the northeastern part of Otauga County, and especially around Marbury, call them now and help us with this like you did in Selma. Um, and uh, again, uh, we are going to, uh, again, I got a lot of damage stuff coming in from Selma, but again, we have to focus on the current situation and keep people safe. Um, and uh, again, uh, there's a lot of, I'll say there's a lot of damage in Selma. We're just going to leave it at that. It, it, it's been, a, it's a mess. 
uh, in some of the images I'm seeing here. And as we have time, we'll show that. We also have damage in Utah. We have damage in Stewart. We have damage in Winston County. Uh, this thing is way, way, way overperformed today in terms of tornado output. But uh, again, uh, this uh, possible tornado, when I say possible, it's there. When you got debris being lofted, it's confirmed. Uh, is uh, coming up toward the town of Marbury, uh, kind of slipping into the far southeastern corner of Chilton County. Verbena is about right there where you see the word tracker. That's Verbena. Uh, this is Chilton County. From there, it goes over into extreme northern Elmore and then up into southern Coosa County. This is kind of where Chilton, Otauga, Elmore, Coosa all come together, if you will. Uh, but that uh, tornado was about to cross Interstate 65. And uh, nobody, nobody should be along Interstate 65 from Verbena down to Prattville. Just stop. If you're listening to us in any way, if you're listening to us on your phone, listening on the, on the face bag or the tweeter or whatever, uh, stop. And you don't, you don't want to stop, obviously, in Otauga County, but you don't want to drive into this. And don't use US 31. It's the same thing. You'll be driving right into that. So, again, uh, uh, this is a tornado that has caused uh, significant damage in uh, the town of Selma, the city of Selma. And it is in the process of approaching the community of Marbury, which is in northern Otauga County. Debris is currently being lofted to 15,000 feet. And if you look at analogs, if you look at uh, tornadoes in past events where debris has been lofted to uh, 15,000 feet, the analog, it's EF3 range. And I'm not saying we know the EF rating. We don't. You don't know that until the survey is done. But uh, again, uh, the analog would put it uh, as a very significant tornado. I'll just put it that way. Uh, and again, uh, this, uh, this thing is crossing Interstate 65 right now. Uh, and again, this is north of the Pine Level exit, south of the Verbena exit on Interstate 65. Microwave Hill, we used to call it up here, northern Otauga County. Uh, that's the last hill where you get a microwave shot back into Montgomery when I worked down there. Uh, but again, Marbury is right here, and that's going to keep on going. Let's look at the velocity really quick. We've been looking at the uh, debris signature here. Let's go to the velocity, and again, it's just a textbook uh, tornado signature here. And this thing is kind of out there by itself, out ahead of that main line. It's not competing with storms to the south for inflow, and uh, it, it's in a very healthy position, and this could stay down for a while longer. So again, the tornado is basically on Interstate 65 right now. Uh, at Marbury, and from there it's going to clip the southeastern corner of Chilton County. And let's expand this back out, Taylor, and let me kind of show downstream who's, who's ahead of this in, in the next few counties over. Uh, so here's your downstream warning. And again, Verbena, technically you're in the polygon, but this most likely will pass just a little south of there. This will be near the Otauga Chilton County line. This is US 31 right here. From there it's going to clip this northwestern corner of uh, Elmore County and again Titus and Lake Jordan they took a hit last you know a couple of weeks ago you know same same communities here uh, that other tornado came right through here and uh, this one's going to be close maybe a tad north of there and then from there it's going to keep on going into the southern part of Coosa County so again this will be clipping the northwestern corner of Elmore into southern Coosa this is US 231 right here Rockford is at the northern extent of the polygon uh, the polygon runs from Rockford uh, uh, all the way down into uh, Elmore County near the community of Riddle. Uh, and again, this is Alabama Highway 9 over here. This is the town of Equality, which is near the uh, Coosa Elmore County line. And we'll just see if this thing stays in place. But it's, uh, it's pretty much crossed Interstate 65. It's crossing US 31 right now. And so again, the next communities involved in this, and again, this is your possible tornado right there, will be coming right up through here. Uh, clipping maybe extreme southeastern Chilton, extreme northwestern Elmore, and then coming up into southern Coosa County. And again, Rockford is the county seat. That's the largest city in Coosa County. This is US 231, the main north-south highway. Alabama Highway 9 is an important north-south highway as well. And we don't advise any travel on US 231 or Alabama Highway 9 from Rockford and Kellyton South. Uh, for about the next 30 minutes or an hour or so. All right, any late reports uh, on your end over there, Taylor? Uh, major structural damage reported along US 82 near Vida Junction. Yeah, that's between Billingsley and Prattville. Prattville. Um, and that's not good. Um, not good at all. And this is the uh, warning downstream is going to be upgraded to a tornado emergency here. Uh, so that southeastern corner of Chilton County, 
uh, parts of Coosa County, Elmore County. This is now a tornado emergency. We've been telling you about this tornado warning for a while now, but now this is going to be upgraded to a tornado emergency, which means we know we have confirmation that there is a large dangerous tornado on the ground and uh, it's likely to remain on the ground as it crosses over here towards Marbury and eventually moving if it holds together, it could be moving over 231 in Chilton County, or excuse me, in Coosa County, as it moves towards the northeast, eventually crossing near Nixburg if it holds together. Let's go to WEX 05 real quick, and I want to show you what this thing did. Again, uh, this is going to be some of the video coming out of uh, Selma. Uh, if we can take that, uh, let's watch this together. And uh, look at the debris. Wow. Oh, goodness. That's a large tornado coming through Selma. And you can see uh, debris uh, being taken up in this uh, large tornado and being lofted. That's what makes that debris ball on radar. And again, uh, this is uh, taken from Caleb Legrone, and he is at the uh, Walmart in Selma. And uh, again, this is the, the, what's happening right now near Marbury. Uh, the same type tornado is coming through Marbury, uh, producing significant damage. And again, the uh, Weather Service is uh, calling this a tornado emergency downstream. Uh, from Marbury on downstream. Uh, and this is uh, some of the damage at the Selma Country Club. Uh, again, just going to show that very quickly. And uh, again, Taylor, I'll kick it back over to you and uh, you kind of give us an update on where this thing is now. Okay, so we are looking at, at this point, this moving very close to Marbury. This is moving through your location now. Stay hunkered down, stay in that safe place. This is going to be just barely clipping the uh, southeastern corner here of Marbury, uh, the southeastern corner of this Chilton County portion of this warning. Um, it's now over I-65. I-65, you're good. You're good to drive on I-65. Now we're getting another um, really strong looking TDS as this just crossed over 143. This is going to be moving over Lightwood Road here pretty soon um, in Elmore County, New Harmony Road. This is going to be in northwestern Elmore County near the Titus community. I know, I think, was that last week that we had that severe threat and we had damage near Titus just a week ago? Uh, yeah, oh, it, it, all, it all runs together after a while, but yeah, it's, it's uh, within the last 10 days. Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're talking about some of the same communities again that we were talking about, I think that was last Tuesday, on Tuesday. Um, so this is a very significant tornado. I mean, when you see a debris ball like this being lofted like this, this tells you that this is, this is a, this is a bad one. So this is a bad tornado on the ground. Don't play games with this. Don't try to get videos of it. Uh, be in that safe place. Stay there. This is going to potentially just barely clip southeastern Chilton County. It's going to be moving into northwestern Elmore County and then moving into Coosa County after that. In Coosa County, this is going to be likely crossing um, close to Pentonville, right along 231. Uh, if this holds together, and I keep saying that, but it has been. This has been cycling, and every once in a while it might lift, but we had a large, violent tornado on the ground in Selma, and now we potentially have another large, violent tornado on the ground uh, very close to the city of Marbury. That's why the National Weather Service is issuing this tornado emergency that will include right now the city of Rockford. This will likely cross just south of you, but you're in this warning, so you need to take it seriously. Pentonville, along 231, stretching down into Elmore County to uh, the city of Riddle. And then from there, Nixburg, Fish Pond. And then if it, if it holds together, then we might need to see if this is going to be extended into eventually Tallapoosa County. But man, this is, you know, a really strong, strong indication of a tornado debris signature again. And we are continuing to get reports. Heavy damage along numerous roadways in the Joffrey and Old Kingston communities. 
So this is this has been on the ground. It's on the ground again. Um, we are once again getting some visual confirmation that this is on the ground, which the TDS already tells us that. I mean, when you have a TDS like this, there's no question there's a tornado on the ground. And so it's moving uh, near Tram Road. If you live on Tram Road, safe place, no questions. You need to be in that safe place now. Blueberry Hill Road, Getty Loop Road. If I'm naming off any kind of road that sounds familiar to you or you're thinking, oh, that's the street over. If I'm not necessarily saying your street, but you live right next to one of those streets, get to that safe place. You don't want to play around with this, this kind of warning. This is a tornado emergency. We've got a large, violent tornado on the ground. This is going to be moving uh, towards the uh, Wilona community, crossing over into southern Coosa County, and uh, moving now very close to Lightwood, Lightwood Road. And uh, visual confirmation from Lightwood Fire Units, tornado is located near Johnson Road in Elmore County. So that's where it is. It's, it's right here near Lightwood. We've got confirmation from uh, some of the first responders there. So we've got a pretty good lead time here for locations in Coosa County. We keep saying Pentonville. Take this seriously. Don't wait to the last minute. Get to the safe place now. Let's, let's take uh, WEX05 real quick uh, if we can. Um, this is going to be more video. And uh, this is from I-65, Taylor, below Verbena. This is uh, near the Atauga County line. And uh, again, you can see a lot of folks, they've stopped, obviously, to try and stay out of that polygon. That's looking south into that uh, supercell that produced uh, that was producing apparently a large tornado. I don't think we can see it in this particular video, but again, uh, that was when the storm crossed over Interstate 65 just a few uh, moments ago. And uh, again, it's it's good to see a lot of folks stopped. I think the one thing we have been able to reach a lot of people today that are traveling where you just a, 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 a large tornado is going to take a car and toss it like a toy. Now, this is an interesting shot. This was taken from Prattville, the northern part of Prattville, looking north up into northern Tatauga County. Wow. And again, that's the uh, that's the same uh, uh, tornado that is uh, moving through uh, right now. So, uh, again, uh, the, the images certainly help us back up the things we're telling you. So let's go back to the radar. It's 108. I'm James Spam with Taylor Sorello. We're working a tornado situation that is affecting the far southern part of our area, we have potential for a tornado that is now in the northwestern corner of Elmore County. This is Lake Jordan right here. The community of Titus is right here. Same people had a tornado about 10 days ago. And uh, that tornado is going to be crossing out of Elmore into Coosa County. This is US 231. Rockford is here. US 231 goes down to Wetumpka. And again, this particular circulation will likely be crossing out of Elmore into the southeastern part of Coosa County fairly soon. So if you're south of Rockford in Coosa County, you're in our television market, you need to be sheltered. That's a small room, lowest floor, near the center, no windows. You're going to wear a helmet, bicycle helmet, batting helmet, uh, football helmet, anything like that. That really helps to make you safe. And you don't want to be in a mobile home. You don't want to be in a car. So we advise no travel along US 31 or Alabama Highway 9, the two main north-south highways through Coosa County, US 231 and Alabama Highway 9 right here. This is Kellyton. That's US 280 right up here. Alexander City is here. And of course, if this holds together, it might wind up affecting Tallapoosa County. So the, for those of you around the northern part of Lake Martin, Dadeville, Alexander City, just keep a close eye on this. But uh, let's go back to our correlation coefficient product coming off the dual polarization radar. And again, you can see the uh, debris being lofted. The, the tornado is basically on top of Lake Jordan right now. Uh, and again, uh, Taylor, uh, this is just like you wonder, what have you done to deserve this twice in 10 days? I mean, this is the same, almost the exact same location, is it not? Uh, we were talking almost, almost exactly. I mean, this is what this was last week, <laughs> man. Uh, but we've got a uh, what is, is Pierce to still be a tornado on the ground, moving over the river now. It's going to be moving towards uh, Pentonville, Cottage Grove, Nixburg, Fish Pond, Kellyton. 
These are some of the locations that are within the polygon. So if you're in that polygon, regardless, this is a tornado emergency, you're in that safe place, no questions asked. Let's take a look at the velocity here. I mean, we're still looking at a pretty good indication of what is likely a tornado uh, on the ground. And again, you're going to see some new video coming in here in just a second. This is the time where the videos come in so fast and so furious. We have to kind of vet these things uh, on the uh, on the fly. Um, but let's go to WEX05. Uh, look at this, Taylor. This is uh, from I-65. Um, that seems to be a very sizable, possibly a multiple vortex tornado. Wow. Goodness gracious. Uh, this was captured uh, obviously not that long ago. Wow. And um, again, this is what's moving through the uh, Lake Jordan Titus area now, and that will be crossing over into the southeastern part of Coosa County. And this is the same one that came through uh, uh, Dallas County at, uh, at Selma. And again, uh, very impressive. And again, that view is from uh, Interstate uh, 65. And uh, this is probably the best look at one of these we've had today. We, the, the video at Selma was pretty remarkable. It looked like it was considerably larger at the Selma. Uh, but again, this uh, video was taken from uh, Bama Box WX. And uh, he uh, got that shot uh, quite uh, recently here. And again, we'll just stay with that for a few minutes. And again, if you're just joining us, this is what we've been dealing with today. It started this morning about 8 o'clock. We had the first tornado warning for uh, our market was for Winston County. We had tornado damage between Del Mar and Ash Ridge in that broad area between uh, Haleyville and Double Springs. And uh, we've had a series of these things. This thing has really, really, really been very productive, much more than we had expected with tornadoes uh, today. Uh, let's go back to the uh, radar, and uh, we've been basically on the air since 8 o'clock doing this all day, and the tornado that you just saw uh, is uh, moving through the extreme southern part of uh, Coosa County right now. Uh, again, this is crossing into Coosa County out of Elmore, about to cross over Highway 231. So again, nobody should be on U.S. 231 at this moment. And again, the uh, tornado signature near the county line. It, it, it's come to, it came through Lake Jordan and Titus. And it's going to be crossing over into Coosa County, crossing Highway 231 about eight miles south of Rockford, and then head over toward Alabama Highway 9 uh, about 12, 15 miles south of Kellyton. And let me tell you what now. If this thing keeps up, uh, Alexander City is right here. All right. So this could very well be making a beeline for Alex City. So I'm just saying, if you're in Alexander City, be aware we've got a problematic situation here. This has produced uh, uh, some really bad damage at Selma. We've had uh, a lot of tornado damage with this for a long time, and that's going to come right up here toward Alexander City. You're not under a warning at this point, but you might be soon. Uh, so just uh, be aware of that and be sure you can hear tornado warnings if they are, are needed uh, uh, today. I'm going to do a track, and so it's about 25 miles or so southwest of Alexander City, which would mean on its current speed, it could be about 30 minutes. So we'll see if it holds together. We'll see if you go under a warning, but just kind of to keep in the back of your mind, this system could be about 30 minutes away from Alexander City. Okay. Um... And again, uh, we are at uh, 114, and we're watching a tornado that is on radar. Oh, uh, and that is a, it's lofting debris. This thing is down. We, we saw it a few minutes ago. It's still down, and it's about to cross Highway 231. So please don't drive from Rockford down to the Elmore County line for the next 15 minutes. Uh, we'll give you an all clear shortly, but don't do that. You do not want to be in a car. Something like this can flip a car just like that. We know it crossed I-65. We hope we didn't have that situation happening there. And again, from uh, US-231, again, it'll be about eight miles south of Rockford. It'll be crossing over Alabama Highway 9. Uh, and again, this is Alabama Highway 22 right here, and that goes over to Alexander City. And again, Alexander City is uh, right over here. So. Uh, just be really careful today and pay close attention to uh, warnings. 
Um, and, you know, it's pretty remarkable, Taylor, there's been so much damage today, it's almost hard sorting out, um, you know, where, where the damage is coming from here. But I've got a new video. This is coming in uh, from Titus. So let's go to this. This is from Lake Jordan here. And, uh, again, this is the same storm that is worn. Now, I don't think we'll be able to see much from this, but uh, this is the storm coming across. Notice the inflow going into that. And that might be that tornado on the left side of the screen over there. That could be the uh, wall cloud and the tornado. And again, it's going to be hard to see in a fairly short video like that. But again, that is the uh, storm that's coming over Lake Jordan near Titus, very close to where the damage occurred uh, 10 days or so ago. And uh, again, uh, that is uh, what it looks like down there. So let's go back to the radar. And again, uh, the concern right now, and the reason we're here, Coosa County belongs to us. That is in the Birmingham television market. And we have what could be a violent tornado that is right on top of U.S. Highway 231, just north of the Elmore County line. Uh, and uh, again, uh, this is... Um, um, T Taylor, uh, do we still have a tornado emergency for this? Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, this is a bad one. This, uh, is, this is on the ground. It's been on the ground. It's got a history of damage, and we're still seeing that debris lofted high up into the atmosphere. At this point, the last couple of scans, we've had a very consistent large tornado debris signature with this circulation. It's approaching 231 now, and when you look at the velocity, I mean, no question. There's a tornado on the ground with this right now. Um, and this is, you know, not, it's moving into air that hasn't really been touched by rain. There's nothing that is cutting off this circulation from pulling up the moisture, the instability, everything it needs to maintain its strength. And so that's why this, this storm has just been producing at times tornadoes all the way since back before Selma. So we've been, I mean, this warning was even downstream from that. So this has been a long lived tornado. This has been a long track tornado. I mean, which, you know, when you think of the cold, cold season QLCS type events, these lines, this is semi unusual, but these are some strong, this is a strong tornado that's moving through parts of Coosa County now, moving over 231. Let's look at uh, WEX 05 again. This is another still image of this particular tornado uh, as it was coming through uh, uh, the northern part of Atauga County. So we can take WEX 05 real quick. Uh, I wanted to show that. There it is. Uh, and again, uh, uh, let's go back and again, I'll show that uh, video from uh, Interstate 65. If you didn't see that, that's what it looked like uh, crossing the interstate uh, a little earlier. And that's what is coming through southern Coosa County right now. So again, uh, this is what is right on US 31, about eight miles south of Rockford. And from there, it's going to be crossing Highway 9, uh, well to the south of Kellyton, and that will be approaching Alexander City. All right. So again, if you're in Alexander City, just understand that there is going to be potential for a significant tornado and the Weather Service might have to issue a tornado warning for uh, Tallapoosa County, including um, uh, the city of Alexander City here fairly soon. Uh, but that looks like a uh, multiple vortex tornado that uh, just crossed I-65. This would be in northern Atauga County uh, about uh, 15 minutes ago. And that's the same tornado complex that is now in the southern part of uh, Coosa County. So let's go back to the radar. We're at 119 and you can I see. I wanted to show this has been warned all the way since right. Marengo County. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this continue. It's been no, hours. No, and by the way, notice the time up here. They'll yes. give you I time I want to make stand. sure everybody right. knows. Yeah, this is right. this has been the past, but this has been hours that this has been warned. This has been a, and we still have evidence now. I'll take us back down, of course, to what we're tracking right now because we we need to focus on that. But just going back in history, I mean. Yeah, it's uh, hanging in there like a proverbial hair in a biscuit. Uh, this has been uh, in there for a long time and it's still there. It's now probably a little east of Highway 231. This is the TDS right here, the tornado debris signature here. And again, the next major road is going to be Alabama Highway 9 uh, and it will be passing between Equality and Kellyton. And we encourage no travel along Highway 9 in about a minute. In fact, uh, we'll give you an all clear right now. There's the debris well east of US 231. So now we can give an all clear for US 231. If you need to drive from Rockford down to Wetumpka, you're good. Uh, the tornado is now east of US uh, 231. And then next in line, it's going to be 
uh, ultimately Tallapoosa County over here, and I would imagine the Weather Service will be warning for that. So again, Dadeville, Alexander City, Northern Lake Martin, just be ready to take some action in case the Weather Service uh, issues that uh, warning, which they uh, probably will do uh, soon. Uh, some a, a note here from the Weather Service in Birmingham, uh, they're getting numerous reports of damage in Atauga County, and they're asking people to avoid the area to let emergency personnel respond. And that goes for any of these tornadoes we've talked about today. And that would be in northern Atauga County. This is north of Prattville, up toward uh, Pine Level and Marbury. Uh, so again, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the situation there. So again, uh, we are going to stick with this. Uh, and again, once this gets into Tallapoosa County exclusively, it becomes the Montgomery television market and then the Columbus, Georgia market, and it gets out of our area. And the good news, uh, this is uh, basically it. This is the only warning. In fact, let's go to a big picture really quickly, Taylor, of reflectivity in our big market here. The severe weather risk is over for Anniston, Gadsden, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Centerville, Brent, Greensboro, Marion, Demopolis. Uh, it's over for Clanton. It's over for Talladega. It's over for Pell City. Uh, anybody north and west of this line, you're done with it. It's a one and done deal today. Uh, the concern is out ahead of this line. And again, you can see we have severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for parts of Clay County, for parts of Elmore and Atauga counties. And that uh, big line is coming into Montgomery. But this is the segment right here. And, and Taylor's talked about it. This thing has been there for hours. It is, uh, it, we, I did not expect this. When it comes to thunderstorms, you expect the unexpected. And uh, that's the situation today. And again, you can see the inflow notch right there and uh, what might be a debris ball right there. Let's put the uh, TDS back on there. And um, yeah, that's just nasty. Oh boy. Um, oh, then we get a there's your velocity display and there's the tornado debris signature right there. Uh, so again, this is, let me just say Rockford is out of the polygon now. This is clearly south of Rockford. So if you're in the city of Rockford, you're good. This will not affect you. Rockford is up here. Uh, this is Alabama Highway 22 right here uh, going over to Alexander City. Highway 22 is right here. And this tornado is going to be crossing Alabama Highway 9, a little south of Cottage Grove, a little south of uh, Alabama Highway 22, and then ultimately coming into Tallapoosa County, which is what you see right here. And again, uh, just to get your bearing straight, Alexander City is right here. Jackson's Gap is right here. And again, you can see the, the blue here, the, the, the northern part of Lake Martin. So for the northern part of Lake Martin, Dadeville, Alexander City, uh, just kind of a heads up and we'll watch this and see if the Weather Service decides to uh, uh, reissue the tornado warning. They, it looks like we're going to go ahead and uh, have a new tornado warning being drawn for Tallapoosa. Yeah, I think you pretty much don't have a choice here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a, a large, large tornado on the ground. And I mean, it's been on the ground for a while. I mean, this is like we were just talking about. This has been hours that we've had a warning with this. And at times we're getting debris signatures. When you see this debris signature, that's a big blue circle like this. I mean, that that's indicating a very strong tornado. Uh, so we don't quite have the warning issued yet, but go ahead. If you're in Alexander City, go ahead and take shelter now. So that's going to be a lowest level of your home uh, away from windows, doors. Make sure you've got as many walls between you and the outside as you can. Have that helmet on. Have your shoes on. If you live in a mobile or manufactured home, go ahead and head to either a neighbor's site built home or head to a store, whether that be a grocery store, a gas station, some type of structure that is site built or a storm shelter. You've got time now. We're giving you a, a heads up on this. You've got time to get to that safe place now. But uh, based on the history of this storm, it's not one to mess around with. And now we have that new tornado warning that's just been issued to include parts of Tallapoosa County. And that's going to include Alexander City. Yeah, so let's uh, just kind of show everybody who's in and who's out of this new uh, tornado warning. So Alexander City is kind of on the northern periphery of this tornado warning. Dadeville is just out of the tornado warning. And again, this is US 280, uh, Alexander City down to Jackson's Gap. And again, this is the northern part of Lake Martin right here. This is the bridge over 280 that many of you are familiar with. And ultimately goes out here into the northeastern part of Tallapoosa County. This is Daviston right here. 
Uh, so again, if you are now in Alexander City, you are in a tornado warning polygon. So you need to respect the polygon and go to your safe place. Uh, no mobile homes and no cars. We advise no travel along U.S. Highway 280 between Alexander City and Dadeville for about the next 30 minutes. Uh, no travel along Alabama Highway 49, uh, which is the road that goes north out of Dadeville for about the next 40 minutes or so. And uh, hopefully this thing at some point will fizzle out, but it just has not wanted to do that. This has been a, uh, it's been really hanging in there. Want to go to some new video here. Let's go to WEX05 real quick if we can. This is going to be more coming from Lake Jordan. And look at that. That's it right there. Uh, wow. Uh, that is your tornado. This is looking toward Titus from Lake Jordan. Uh, this was taken about uh, 15, 20 minutes ago. And this is the tornado that is crossing Alabama Highway 9 now between Kellyton and Equality. And this is the same storm that is moving into uh, Tallapoosa County. Uh, and again, uh, this is what it looked like from uh, Lake Jordan. And the same area had a tornado not that long ago, uh, really less than two weeks ago. And just wanted to show again another view of that. And we've seen some pretty remarkable views. We'll put together a lot of this and uh, combine it for the uh, newscast later today. So again, we are here. It is 126. We have a tornado warning in effect for the southeastern corner of Coosa County. This is in our television market. The tornado is headed for Tallapoosa County. So we have tornado warnings in effect now for southeastern Coosa and the northern part of Tallapoosa counties. And in Tallapoosa County, Alexander City is in that warning. Uh, the warning does include Alexander City. Dadeville is just out of the polygon. The, the polygon begins just north of Dadeville. But anybody around the northern part of Lake Martin here, uh, back up toward Alexander City, now is the time to be sheltered. We don't want anybody driving. And if you live in a mobile home, you need to get out of the mobile home, get into a more substantial structure. And you can help us by being a hero today. If you know anybody in these areas, in these polygons, call them or text them. It is so helpful for us if you're willing to do that. Uh, that a lot of folks are busy. They don't have time to pay attention to the weather. They don't have a weather radio and they might not know this is happening and you can help us by letting them know what's going on and tell them to watch. So again, uh, tornado warning for southeastern Coosa and much of Tallapoosa counties. And again, Alexander City, the largest city in Tallapoosa County is certainly in the polygon here. And you can see that we're about 12 miles out from U.S. Highway 280. Uh, and uh, again, uh, based on all the videos we have seen, uh, it's been a pretty rough ride down there, Taylor, a very uh, rough ride indeed. And, you know, at, at this point, we've still got the storm and air that is unstable. Uh, it, this has been down for a while now. You know, sometimes it cycles, but it hasn't been cycling recently. Recently, it's just down and it's staying down. And so we've got to go forward with the uh, notion that it's going to continue to do what it's doing right now and stay on the ground and it's headed in the general direction of 280. Give all your friends, your family, phone calls. Let them know, hey, do not drive on 280 in Tallapoosa County. Anybody you know who lives near Alexander City or just south of Alexander City, you need to make sure you're giving them a call and letting them know. It is uh, likely to be moving very close to Alexander City, Jackson's Gap, um, another location that is in the path here. So somewhere in between Alexander City and Jackson's Gap, right along 280. Or, yeah, 280 is where we are anticipating this to be moving through. So I want to circle where that tornado debris signature is near the community of Nixburg. And it's going to be moving. I'll go ahead and pull a storm track on it. It's moving northeast at about 50 miles an hour. So you can see some approximate arrival times. Now, if you're in this polygon, you're in your safe place now regardless. But I'm trying to give you a heads up of when the tornado could make it to where you live. So we are talking Alexander City 142, uh, Flint Hill 143. And then from there on, We'll see it uh, tracking a little bit farther. So right now the time is 1.30. So you've got about 15 minutes until the worst of the storm makes it to you. But regardless, I want you in your safe place now. Uh, make sure you are in a site-built structure. This is the type of tornado where you have to be either in a shelter or in a site-built structure. You don't want to be in your car. That's not a safe place as this tornado moves through. If this means you need to just head to your local gas station 
do that. That's safer than being in a mobile home. Uh, that's safer than being in your car. Just make sure you're in a site built structure as this moves through. Let's go to a Wexo 5 real quick. I uh, got some more video coming in. This is going to be from Pine Level as the uh, tornado was coming through there earlier. And again, uh, that's pretty rough. That's what's going through Coosa County right now. And again, this was taken earlier from the northern part of Otauga County, uh, north of Pine Level. So let's go back to the uh, radar here. And again, uh, uh, we're at 131 and uh, we are working a tornado situation. We have a possible tornado that is down right here. This is over the southeastern part of Coosa County. This is southeast of Rockford. And again, if you are in Kellyton, Rockford, Hanover, this does not include you. This is a very small part of Coosa County. And again, you can see that uh, possible tornado is going to be near the community of Fish Pond, which is in the far eastern part of Coosa County and then coming out into Tallapoosa County. Alexander City is here. Uh, Jackson's Gap is down here. This is Lake Martin right here. And obviously there are many, many beautiful homes and folks that live on the northern shores of Lake Martin here. So between Alexander City and the lake, pretty densely populated corridor here. And uh, this could be a sizable tornado. It's been uh, producing just all kind of problems uh, and it's been down for a long time. This came through the heart of Selma earlier today. And again, uh, you can see the TDS, which is right here, and uh, that'll be coming right up through Tallapoosa County. So let's look at the velocity to make it a little clearer here. We can see uh, the, again, there's the TDS right over here. We'll check the velocity display, and right in that same spot, you've got the velocity couplet, which is a sign that it's clearly there. Is this Maxwell Air Force Base radar, uh, Taylor, or Birmingham? This is uh, um, curiosity. The, yeah, uh, Montgomery. Okay, this is the closest view we have of that. And again, that'll be crossing over into Tallapoosa. This is Coosa, this is Tallapoosa. And again, US 280 is right here. And uh, again, uh, Alexander City, uh, which is right up here. You're in the Polygon. Dadeville, you are not. Uh, Dadeville is down here. Northern part of Lake Martin, you are in the Polygon. And most likely, this will be staying a little south of Alexander City. But remember, respect the Polygon. If you're in it, you uh, have to uh, stay in a, in a good, safe place. Uh, and I, let me just say, I pop, we've had Valerie Bell standing by, I think, for three hours waiting to get on the air. Uh, she is up at one of the, we've got a lot of reporters in the damaged areas, but I, I, I'm so sorry. But, and they understand this. We have to stay with the dangerous weather that is life-threatening before we really report on all the damage. Uh, and we, we're showing videos and images occasionally, but we've got to stay focused on life-threatening weather, which is what we're doing here. So uh, if you're just joining us, we have a tornado that is down passing near or south of the Fish Pond community. That's in the far eastern part of Coosa County, and that'll be crossing out into Tallapoosa County, probably passing a little south of Alexander City, which is right here. And again, uh, most likely it's going to go in this general direction right in through here. Uh, so no travel on US 280 between Alexander City and Dadeville for the next 30 minutes. No travel on Alabama Highway 49, which is this road right here, for about the next 40 minutes. And let's see how this thing, uh, let's see how this whole thing behaves. Uh, Taylor, let me flip back over to you for a minute. We'll bring some new images in here in just a second. All right, sounds good. Uh, so we are, once again, tracking this tornado that has had a history of, it's a long track tornado at this point. It's been on the ground for a long time. It is a strong tornado. We've had visual confirmation of this tornado throughout its life cycle. And uh, at this point, it is now crossing over from Coosa County into Tallapoosa County. So this is making its cross from Coosa County. It's moving over Cedar Creek Road, over uh, Elkahatchee Road. It's gonna be moving towards Mount Zion, towards Shoreline Drive, Dean Road, if you recognize the name of these roads, if you live near one of these roads, you need to be hunkered down in that safe place. At this point, this is just beginning to cross over into Tallapoosa County. It's going to be staying just north of Bulgers, moving towards the general direction of Mount Zion here, Coven Abbott Highway, uh, Lake Hill Estates. You are in the uh, the track of this tornado. Start event. You're in the track of this tornado. I'll do a track to tell you how long we've got until it crosses over 280. How about that? We will do another one of those tracks here. This will be making it to 280 in about eight-ish minutes or so.
is when we have this tornado potentially crossing over 280. Uh, this tornado has already crossed over I-65. We got visual confirmation when that tornado uh, crossed over I-65. We were able to get some video in from some viewers that had pulled over and taken video of this. And there is no reason not to believe that this, that's still happening now with this tornado on the ground based on the tornado debris signature that has been consistent with this storm as it's crossed from Coosa County, now over into Tallapoosa County. I want to kind of give you an idea. Here's Alexander City. This is going to be crossing just south of Alexander City. This will likely be moving very close to Lake Hill Estates near Midway. This is going to be crossing 280 between Jackson's Gap and Alexander City. Now, Jackson's Gap and Alexander City, you still need to be in your safe place, but in terms of the core tornado threat, that's going to be moving through Lake Hill Estates, crossing over 280 there, and then eventually uh, moving towards potentially Everglade, Daviston. You're in the polygon. Daviston needs to be in the safe place now. Uh, you've got some time for this to make it to your location, but uh, the immediate threat is for this Mount Zion community here. And then thereafter, Russell Ferry Estates, Midway, Riverbend, Lake Hill Estates, start event. If you live in any of those communities, you need to be sheltered in place, and that's going to be the lowest level of your home with as many walls between you and the outside as you can. You don't want to be in a room with windows. You want a helmet on. Doesn't matter what kind of helmet it is, but just a helmet on. Uh, you want to have your shoes on, and you want to uh, head to a site-built structure if you are not in a site-built structure already. If you are in mobile home, manufactured home, a camper, that's not a safe place to be. You need to be uh, any type of site-built structure. That could be a gas station. That could be a convenience store. That could be anything. Um, is better than being in either a car, mobile home, or a camper. So uh, locations, once again, that are in the path of this include Russell Ferry Estates, Lake Hill Estates, Midway, uh, Valley View. This is going to be crossing 280 somewhere between Alexander City and Jackson's Gap. If you have family members that you know live in Tallapoosa County, give them a call. Let them know, hey, there's a tornado that's been on the ground for a while and it's headed your way so that they can have the appropriate lead time that they need in order to uh, get to their safe place if they're not watching TV or listening to us on the radar or watching us on social media channels or wherever you consume our coverage here. I know a lot of folks are busy and you might not be paying attention. So you could help us make sure that those folks can get to our coverage as well. Let's go to so Wexo 5 know. real quick, uh, Taylor. This is going to be more video coming in from Selma. And again, uh, we're going to have just a lot of video of tornadoes today. And again, the, the reason we stop and show you this from time to time is just to let you know uh, this is what's going on here. Uh, this is from uh, Highway 14, Alabama Highway 14 and County Road 306 uh, from Ronnie South. And they are safe and they are OK. But you can see those sheets of rain wrapping around what seems to be a large tornado. Uh, this is video coming in from uh, Marbury. Uh, and again, uh, there's your tornado right there. Uh, this is uh, near Marbury and Deetsville, and uh, again, that's what it looked like. Then this is in northern Atauga County. This is after it came through Selma. Uh, the tornado came through Selma, and it uh, moved through northern Atauga, then ultimately into the extreme northern part of Elmore. Now it's in Coosa, moving into Tallapoosa counties, and again, more video of what it's looked like uh, earlier today. So let's go back to the radar here. We're now at 139, and uh, we have the potential for a tornado, which is right here. All right, that's your debris signature here. And this is going to be coming across the northern part of Lake Martin, it looks like. And uh, the like Lake Hill Estates, Russell Ferry Estates, these are all communities on the lake. Uh, there's a good chance this is going to stay south of Alexander City. So if you're watching us in Alexander City, you are still technically in the polygon, but most likely you'll be taken out of the polygon fairly soon. Uh, but again, this is going to be crossing Highway 280. Uh, really not that far from where the lake, uh, where the bridge is, where uh, you, you come out of Alexander City and you come down, you cross Lake Martin. Uh, the tornado will be crossing 280 pretty close to that point, and then it's going to keep on moving to the north and east. So again, if you know of anybody that lives in these communities here around the lake, 
help us out and call them and let them know that you've got a problem here. You need to be sheltered. Uh, let's back this out a little bit, Taylor. I wanted to show Alexander City, which is up here, show you the, uh, how far south of this. And Alexander City has been taken out of the polygon. That's the right thing to do. And again, the polygons gradually change. And that, is that another one? I see back to the back. Okay, that's the old the one. one. Okay, yeah. that's the old one. So, Coosa County, you're clear. Coosa County, you're done with this. You have no problems. This tornado is exclusively into Tallapoosa. And the core of Alexander City, downtown Alexander City, has been taken out of the polygon. It's clearly going to pass south of Alex City. That's your tornado right here. And again, this is US 280 here. And the tornado is going to be crossing Highway 280 near the bridge that's over Lake Martin. And from there, this will keep on moving to the north and east and ultimately affecting some of the smaller communities out here in the northeastern part of Tallapoosa County, like uh, Daviston. So and again, this is the Montgomery TV market. And we understand that. And again, uh, around two o'clock, we're planning on going back to regular programming here. That's in 19 minutes as the storms are out of the Birmingham TV market and they're moving into the Columbus, Georgia. Montgomery market exclusively where people down here can't watch us on TV, but we totally understand people can watch us on the digital and social side. And uh, we thank everybody for doing that. It's amazing how many people do watch us from all over the state. Uh, so it's uh, currently at 141. And uh, let's take another. Well, there's the that's a good look right there. That's the velocity couplet right here. And again, that's in the process of it's passing about five or six miles south of downtown Alexander City. And it's going to be crossing pretty close to the bridge, uh, the Lake Martin Bridge, you know, about 4.7 miles south of downtown Alexander City. And that's about it. Not by far. That was a close call. Uh, and from there, it's going to keep on going out into the uh, northeastern part of the county. Still, no driving on 280 between Alexander City and Dadeville for about the next 10 minutes. We'll give you an all clear really shortly on that. But give us about 10 minutes on US 280 if you're uh, headed to, say, Auburn or Opelika from Sylacaga or Birmingham. Just stop up there in Alexander City and get something to eat. There's, there's some good barbecue there. And, and just stop and wait for this thing to pass on by. And it will be on by pretty soon. And the good news, once this line passes, that's it. We're not going to be here all night. In fact, uh, the storms are pretty much out of our TV market. In fact, uh, we'll go back to programming here at about uh, 2 o'clock or so, and we're done with it. Uh, the next story is going to turn cold tomorrow, and we're going to have snow flurries in the morning for a lot of folks in North Alabama, but we don't expect any uh, impact of that uh, from all uh, at, at all if we see a few snowflakes. Uh, the better chance of seeing a little snow on the ground would be over the uh, mountains of East Tennessee and Western North Carolina tomorrow. So our tornado is basically on US 280, uh, just southeast of Alexander City. And again, it's very close to the bridge over the lake. And from there, it'll be coming out across Highway 49. That's the next major north-south route in Tallapoosa County. It's Alabama Highway 49 north coming out of Dadeville. And nobody should be along Highway 49. And then from there, it's going to move over here into uh, Chambers County. This is Wadley and Randolph County right here. Uh, so again, this is Chambers and this is Randolph. Roanoke is here. And let me just say that, you know, if you're in Roanoke, Roanoke's a pretty good population center in the southern part of uh, Randolph County. Just keep a close eye on this. Again, you kind of follow this out. If that continues in that line, it might be close. So for those of you that are watching us in southern Randolph County, just be aware that uh, if this thing stays down, and by golly, it has been staying down, like Elmer's glue's got this thing on the ground. Uh, it might be close to you in an hour or so. It's moving at about 50, 55 miles an hour. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, this line will be ending soon. And again, we will be clear of severe weather for the rest of this afternoon and tonight. So we're almost out of this. But we're going to stay here for just a little longer and kind of watch this thing cross over Highway 280. But again, we have a possible tornado right on 280 at the bridge over Lake Martin, uh, about five, six miles southeast of Alexander City. And this potential tornado is going to keep on rolling to the northeast like that and moving through northern Tallapoosa County. And it might wind up in southern Randolph County around Roanoke. That's a possibility, just something to watch. But this thing has had some pretty uh, amazing staying power. Uh, so um, seeing so many videos coming in here. And again, I, we are thankful for every single video. I can't tell you how much they mean to us. We see them in real time. We can't show them all. But let's take this one. Uh, let's go to WEXO 5. This is going to be along Interstate 65. Uh, and uh, 
in uh, those pine trees are kind of getting in the way, but obviously that most likely is the uh, large tornado with some backlighting to make it look white uh, through those trees. And that's the one that crossed over I-65 in northern Atauga County. And uh, you can see the, uh, the, the inflow going into that. And uh, th this is why it's hard to see this stuff in Alabama uh, with all the trees. But that's uh, Marbury. I can tell where we are now. That's the uh, water tower there at Marbury. And again, uh, that's the uh, potential tornado there. So, and again, a lot of folks obviously were stopping along Interstate 65. You just don't want to be out there when this is happening. But that's right by uh, Marbury uh, High School up in Atauga County. So let's go back to the uh, radar uh, at 146. Uh, so now we can give an all clear to US 280. US 280, all clear. If you need to drive from Sylacauga to Auburn, Opelika, you're good. Uh, at least from this one particular tornado. So the tornadic circulation is now passing north of Jackson's Gap, and that's going to be coming out here toward Alabama Highway 49 near the community of Sessions and Eagle Creek. This is in the uh, rural eastern part of Tallapoosa County. But again, Dadeville, all clear. You, Dadeville was never in the polygon. Alexander City, all clear. US 280, all clear. And uh, that will keep on moving in this direction. Let me, let's expand this out a little bit. And again, we're going to kind of phase this back into regular programming here shortly because we're getting into a part of the state where they can't watch us on television. Uh, Randolph County is assigned to the uh, Atlanta television market up here. This is Randolph County. And again, those assignments, we don't have anything to do with that. That's based on the viewing habits of the people that live in the county. And it's frustrating to us. We'd love to have Randolph County and Cleburne County, but we don't. A majority of people there watch Atlanta television. So uh, we'll be handing off the coverage to our friends in Atlanta for our friends in uh, Randolph County. In Chambers County here, that's uh, down in the Columbus, Georgia television market. Uh, this is Chambers and this is Randolph. Uh, but again, we still got that tornado debris signature that is down. So any late damage reports, Taylor, from your end over there? Uh, we are seeing more uh, damage coming in from Elmore County. They, uh, when we were, we were watching that TDS, heavy damage at Coosa River Road. What else did I see in here? Um, we've actually got some trees down in Talladega County just from the strong winds, from the severe thunderstorm warnings uh, that we had. Some trees down from that. Um, heavy damage along Kelly Road in the Titus community. Uh, so we were talking about the Titus community not too long ago, and it does appear that there is some heavy damage from this tornado as it moved through. Uh, looks like, you know, it's still on the ground here. Just moved through Sturdivant, and it's moving towards uh, Eagle Creek area, riding along Ridge Road here in Tallapoosa County. And we will uh, see whether or not <clears throat> this is going to be extended in time to include parts of uh, Chambers County. So. We'll keep a close eye on it. Let's take a look at the uh, reflectivity and kind of tell you what's going on here. This is the leading edge of that line. And basically, once this moves out of Tallapoosa County, the uh, worst of the weather is going to start crossing south of I-85 and also into parts of Georgia. Much of central Alabama at this po point is, is dry. I'm going to check on that tornado watch. Because I assume there have been locations, yeah, a lot of locations dropped from the tornado watch. If you've dealt with that line, you are done with severe weather. And pretty soon, we're going to be able to cancel that watch likely for uh, uh, Chilton County, Talladega County, Calhoun County, Cherokee County. I wouldn't be surprised if you're dropped from that watch pretty soon. They're going to wait for that rain and that leading edge of the storms to uh, move through your county completely before they drop you from that watch. But uh, for most locations in central Alabama, you are done with the severe threat. And then by early tomorrow, we could actually see a few isolated flurries. No impact from that, though. Uh, but we are still on the air because we have been tracking this long-lived tornado warning that is now in parts of Alexander, or excuse me, in parts of Tallapoosa County, moved south of Alexander City not too long ago, uh, moved through the Sturdivant community, Lake Hill Estates, and now is headed in the general direction of Eagle Creek, moving through... Now, I'm going to pull up the correlation coefficient. You can see that there is still a uh, loft of debris evident with this. Um, it is 
moving east at 55 miles per hour. And we'll be crossing over into Chambers County here shortly. Um, it's just to the north west of Jackson's Gap, Griffin Shoals Road, Everglade Road, the community of Everglade. This is headed in your general direction. Um, County Road 88, State Route 49. This is about to cross over 49, Horseshoe Bend Road. Uh, so if you live along that road, this tornado is going to be crossing very close to you. Make sure you are staying in the uh, your safe place. And now we're going to continue this tornado warning, but this isn't necessarily considered a tornado emergency at this point. If you're in the polygon, you stay put, you stay in that safe place. Uh, but based on the latest radar presentation, there's a little bit of a positive sign that this could be weakening a bit, maybe broadening out a bit, maybe this tornado is lifting. And of course, we need to find evidence in that correlation coefficient uh, as well in order to confirm that this tornado has lifted. But the rotation within the velocity hasn't really, hasn't shown as, as tight of a couplet as it did just a couple scans ago. Um, this is the first time in a while that we've seen that this uh, this rotation start to weaken any bit. Let's go to WEX05. That's Selma. Wow. That's uh, not good. Uh, we had concern that this would be the case, and uh, this is what some of the tornado damage looks like in Selma. Uh, I don't know of any injuries or fatalities at this point. We just don't have a lot of information, but apparently a very sizable tornado came through the middle of Selma uh, uh, earlier, and that's the tornado that's coming through Tallapoosa County right now. Uh, we'll take a look at some more of the uh, video, and uh, we're getting a lot of uh, video from folks that were along uh, Interstate 65 uh, as this was uh, coming through. And again, you can see the uh, clear circulation there with that uh, tornado and that looks like uh, again a very sizable tornado about to cross over interstate 65 and again everybody thankfully is seems to be stopping and uh, that's right around Marbury up in northern Otauga County and uh, again uh, that's what is going through Tallapoosa County uh, right now and again uh, that was taken oh probably about maybe 45 minutes ago and again uh, uh, right on Interstate 65, and I will say uh, we did have, uh, here's some more video, by the way, from I-65. We, we did have a truck that was overturned on the interstate. Uh, apparently, the trucker was trapped for a while, but he was not injured, which is good news. Um, I'll show you the images of that here in just a second. But again, uh, uh, you know, this is the one thing we really try to do is get traffic to stop or get them off these interstates because it's very dangerous. In fact, I'll just go right to the... Uh, uh, images that that's one of the trucks that was overturned on interstate 65 that was hung up in the tornado you can see the tornado damage on the side of the interstate and again the driver w was trapped in the cab for a while but he was uh, he was uh, rescued and apparently he was not uh, injured uh, but uh, that was the tornado crossing I-65 and this is why we say you know don't drive between point A and point B here and that happened a little uh, earlier today and I tell you what uh, while we've got this up let me uh, I got so many uh, images here I could show. I want to go back and maybe show um, some of the video coming from Selma like this. Uh, this is video of that large tornado in Selma taken from the Walmart parking lot uh, in Selma. And that's a, a very large tornado in rain. Uh, tornadoes here don't look like the ones you typically see in the southern plain states. They're different. Our storms are HP, heavy precipitation. Those are LP storms they have out there. Uh, but that's what it looked like in uh, Selma earlier today. So again, we're going to go back to regular programming here at the top of the hour and that these uh, storms have moved out of our uh, television market. Folks down here cannot watch uh, local stations out of Birmingham. But again, for the next five minutes, we'll stay with you. Uh, this is a look at the uh, line of storms coming through Tallapoosa County. And let's go back to our velocity display and see if this thing is still hanging in there. And it uh, looks like it's weakened, Taylor. Uh, it has weakened. Yeah. We might, we know, we're kind of waiting for each radar scan to see uh, if, if we can get that correlation coefficient to debris signature to go away. But for the time being, could there be something 
on the ground possibly, but it looks like it's on its way out of here. The uh, circulation is definitely looking quite a bit weaker, significantly weaker than it did not too long ago when we were talking about that large violent tornado on the ground. Uh, we'll keep watching this, but for the time being, the signs are good that maybe this is starting to kind of weaken a bit. Part of the reason could be because uh, if, if we look here, we're starting to see some rain to the south of this. So that line is kind of catching up. And so that's helping to cut off some of that energy source from this tornado. Uh, before, you know, it was just pulling up that warm, humid air. There was nothing south of us to inhibit it from continuing in strength. And now we've kind of got this, this rain that's potentially going to cut off that energy source for this. So for the time being, the uh, signs are good. That being said, I mean, we still have to treat this as a tornado on the ground until we no longer see this tornado debris signature or we see more of a weakening trend within that uh, velocity imagery here. This is going to uh, be moving over the community of Hampton pretty soon and then crossing over into Chambers County thereafter. Um, so we are looking at the uh, circulation over County Road 32. This is staying south of the Everglade community. And uh, at this point, that is the only warning for our, well, I guess this is technically in the Montgomery television market, but no warnings right now in our television viewing market. We don't have any severe thunderstorm warnings for our part of the state. We don't have any tornado warnings. Weather conditions are going to be improving. It is going to be getting colder, though, as we move through the rest of today and overnight. By early tomorrow, we could see a few isolated uh, flurries with temperatures tomorrow only reaching into the 40s. It's going to be very chilly tomorrow. But the reason we're still on the air is because we've been tracking this long track tornado. This has stayed on the ground for a really long time. This circulation was first warned in Marengo County on the other side of the state and has been warned ever since and at times has dropped a significant tornado. So we will stay with this until it moves into Chambers County and there is a new tornado warning now for Chambers County as this is getting ready to cross over the uh, county line here in just a minute. Right, and again, Chambers County belongs to uh, what is it, the Columbus, Georgia television market. They just can't watch uh, Birmingham stations there. Uh, and again, we, uh, if we cut off your program, I'm sorry, we, uh, we came on here at 8 o'clock and we've been on for uh, a while. It's uh, coming up on 2 o'clock now. Um, and uh, we are going to go back to regular programming here at 2 o'clock in uh, less than two minutes. And again, the uh, tornado is moving out of Tallapoosa into Chambers County. So again, for Chambers County and Rand Randolph is in the Atlanta television market. Chambers, I want to say, belongs to Montgomery or Columbus, Georgia. And uh, for most of you uh, in our television market, we're done with it. Let's go back to a big picture, Taylor, before we go, um, showing the, the reflectivity. And there you go. So uh, the uh, tornadic activity is coming into northern Chambers in the extreme southeastern corner of Randolph. And coming into Montgomery uh, is a severe storm. The only tornado warnings are this right here. Uh, so again, uh, for almost all of you watching on television, you're done with it. We turn cold tonight, a few flurries tomorrow morning. The weekend will be sunny with cold mornings and cool uh, afternoons. And uh, again, I will get us out at the exact top of the hour here at 2 o'clock. Uh, and as I see my clock, I'm 159.12, so we got about 45 seconds. Uh, let's quickly look at this polygon. Wanted to show uh, if Roanoke is in or out for our friends that are watching in the southern part of uh, uh, Randolph County. So, Taylor, let's look at that uh, polygon real quick in Randolph. Uh, we've got about 30 seconds, and uh, Roanoke's kind of on the edge of this thing. Uh, again, you can see uh, downtown Roanoke and points south. So this is the far, far, far southern part of Randolph County, the northern part of Chambers County, North Lafayette. That's a tornado warning. And again, uh, watch the stations in Atlanta for Randolph, Montgomery or Columbus, Georgia for uh, Chambers. And we're done with it. So uh, uh, Taylor, thank you. Thanks to our folks in the field. And again, there's so many damage reports. We're going to uh, collect all the damage reports, have uh, everything, for, everything for you coming up on the news at four this afternoon. Thanks for watching.